have? No. Folks, tonight's the night. 104 came, only four remain. We've got one cast, four dogs, and 120 minutes until we determine who will be the 44th United Kennel Club Coon Hound World Champion. I'm J. Paul Jackson, your host here in Dyersburg, Tennessee tonight, and we're going to be bringing it all to you live right here on our live feed for the United Kennel Club. I'm going to be joined by my co-host here in just a few minutes. Uh, we're also going to have coming in here in just a moment, Russ Kelly from Yukonuba joining us. Of course, Yukonuba is the official dog food partner of the United Kennel Club and the World Coon Hound Champion, Championship. And we're welcoming Russ. Russ, come on in here and have a seat with me. Welcome, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to be here. Man, it's an exciting time, isn't it, right now? It is. Yeah. All these dogs here, we had a, a great start. We're on our third night here at the World Championship. Yeah, and uh, lucky to have you with us. Yeah, I just got in and I and, uh, got to see some really nice looking dogs today and looking forward to seeing how the, the hunt goes tonight. Yeah, well, the conditions, they, they've been changing a little bit today from what we've had uh, the previous two days. To, to give a little bit of a recap as well, um, this is our third night. Of course, we've had a cast go out on, on our first night, a Thursday night. We started out with 104 dogs. Last night we had our second cast call and, and the dogs go out and now we're here for round three. So, you know, these dogs, this is their third cast, third night in a row. Right. Um, obviously to make it this far, proper nutrition is really, really important for these animals. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, what their condition will be coming in tonight about recovery and about the importance that good nutrition plays in that role. Yeah, well, certainly they've been they've been spending some energy not only in the you know last couple of days, but building up into this in terms of, of qualifying and and uh, it's really important in terms of a, a good nutritional platform to to make sure that every night when these dogs you know finish hunting that they they get back, they get fed, and they get recovered in terms of their their body get the nutrient status restored and where they can go back out and, and do it again. And uh, certainly the conditions out there tonight are, it's pretty, pretty hot, pretty humid. Uh, so these dogs are gonna, you know, they're, they're gonna be challenged in terms of, of some heat build up as their work. Sure. And uh, that'll be an important, you know, hopefully, hopefully we're gonna, all the dogs are gonna, you know, come through it safely and, and uh, no one really overheat, but uh, it's certainly a possibility. Cool, I wanna talk about two things here. Uh, in regard to nutrition and heat, first of all, my first question would be, okay, so you're here at an event like this. You, you're hoping you make it through. You're anticipating that what? you're going to be here all the way through for the third and final night. What's your feeding plan going to be, Russ Kelly, if you're a handler and you have a dog? Yeah, so in terms of uh, when they get back in at night, I want to make sure that, that you know I get the dog cooled down, get it hydrated. And uh, once its body temp gets back down into normal, then I'm going to get some food in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next next morning, I'm going to, uh, you know, get a, a, another light meal in it, uh, and and then have the dog rest up most of the day. Um, you know, in terms of heat management, uh, there you know there are dogs that actually they will start becoming I'm going to say elevated body temp even before they get out of the truck. And and uh, you know, in terms of that, it's one of those where the handler really needs to evaluate. Does he have a dog that really gets excited, uh, you know, when he puts it in the truck, thinking it's it's going to go go out into the field? And a lot of times, those dogs they already have like a one or two degree elevation in body temp before they ever even uh, are released. And uh, you know, it's, it's important for if you have a dog like that, it's really important to try to condition that dog to where um, you know condition that dog where it doesn't anticipate that every time it gets in the truck it's getting out to going out in the field i mean you know put the dog in the in the truck go down and, and fuel up bring it back home where it just sort of stays calm and, and relaxed when it's in the truck and uh doesn't get cranked up every time that you know it it, it goes and we see that we, we certainly see this a lot with with other dogs not just not just coon hounds but uh but certainly they get excited to go out sure and i mean whether you're a coon hunter you're a retriever guy. It really doesn't matter what your sport is. If you're out there running dogs, hyperthermia at different times of year is definitely going to be something that, you know, you've got to be concerned about. Um, over the last two days, it's been nice and cool and very, very right. dry. Now we have a front moving in. 
you know, the last two nights, the lows have been in the 50s. Right. It's been in the mid-60s when the dogs have left. Tonight, we're around 80 degrees right. with much higher humidity. So hyperthermia is definitely yes, consideration. something that's a possibility right. and a consideration. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know? and, and I know a lot of guys, like I always going into the summer months, make sure that my dogs, I'm roading them a lot when it's cooler, getting them conditioned to that activity to build up. But I think that was a great point that you had. A lot of these dogs are very, very high strung. So basically what you were saying is, you know, take a look at your dog. Don't just think about being in condition from right. activity prior, but the excitement, the build up that can happen when well, they, you know, in terms of that, if, they, if, if, they're, if they're a dog like that, you know, in terms of they, they get excited, they're going to start burning, burning energy. And, you know, if we can keep those dogs calm, mm -hmm. right, that, that extra energy that they didn't burn, that may be the difference, right, in terms of, of being able to go hard for that last 30 or 40 minutes mm -hmm. uh, versus a, a dog starting to get tired. Sure. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's not one of those things where that we're, the dogs are going to heat up. Hunting in a, a night like tonight, every one of those dogs out there, they're going to heat up. And, and we're gonna see, you know, we're gonna see body temps in that, you know, 106 plus range. Sure. And, uh, and it's gonna happen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those where the dog needs to be hydrated, but at the same time, the, you know, the handlers need to recognize what are those signs of, of hypothermia and what can they do about it? You know, in terms of that, they 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 come up on a dog that's really heavily panning, and uh, or or even worse, you know, a lot of people don't realize that not panning at all. Right. Yeah. You know, extreme hyperthermia. The dog will go from really panning extremely to trying right. to take deep breaths, which is not a cooling mechanism for right. a dog, is it? No, no, it's not. In terms of, of how they cool is, is, is really through their respiration system. Uh, they don't sweat like we do. They do have a you know, small amount of, of, of sweat tight glands on their, their paws, uh, but that's it. In terms of that, they really are blowing off their heat through, the, through their lungs. And, uh, and when, they're, when that becomes inefficient, especially on a, you know, a tonight, a uh, night like tonight, they're breathing in 80, you know, he heavy, hot air. That that is not much heat dissipation going on, and so it can build up. And and uh, with that, it, it's it's one of those where you know hopefully they've got water with them, and they see a dog that's that's starting to heat up. They can give it a little water and and uh, and keep it hydrated, and that's gonna that's gonna do a lot in terms of keeping the dog cool and going. And uh, now, certainly we, we pay a lot of attention in terms, that's one of the areas that we really focus in on as a company is, is hyperthermia and how to manage that. We have the, you know, in terms of our uh, performance line, we have the thermal, uh, thermal edge uh, where basically we've, we've demonstrated that, you know, our formulas can help reduce down the maximum temp mm -hmm. that a dog's gonna get. It doesn't, it, it's not saying that the dog is not going to heat up. It does, it just doesn't heat up as, as to, uh, to a point that it could have. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, sometimes that half a degree or, or one degree can make a huge difference in how, how much endurance that dog has. Sure. Well, man, we've really enjoyed having yeah, you tonight. Been a I think the key takeaway from here is that, you know, nutrition plays a role all the way through. Having your dog on a premium food, uh, a food that, like Yukonuba, has characteristics to help that thermal management is a really, really right. big deal. And really applaud the folks at Yukonuba. We feed it in our kennels. Uh, all the science behind it is the reason right. why top competitors feed it. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure to be here and yes, look forward Always to seeing how the competition goes. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you, Russ. Yeah, thank you. Guys, we'll be right back in just a moment.
Check out the United Kennel Club online store for all of our magazine subscriptions and UKC merchandise. Go to shop.ukcdogs.com and you'll find all the best gear to support your UKC lifestyle. Snag a new hat, hoodie, or t-shirt and subscribe to our many publications, including our world-leading coonhound publication, Coonhound Bloodlines. We even have research pedigrees and rule books available to purchase. Why wait? Shop now. Welcome to the 2022 United Kennel Club Coonhound World Championship. This is the 44th installment of this event, and I'm really, really proud to be here. J. Paul Jackson, your host, bringing it to you live tonight, along with my co-host and our expert commentators here to my left, uh, Mr. Rick Stretch and Mr. Steve Burkholder. Rick, Steve, guys, great to be back tonight. Here we are again. It's great to be back. I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm excited for these guys tonight. Very, very exciting night, a lot of electricity in the air. Um, we made it back here, our final night. Of course, we started out on Thursday night with 104 competitors. Um, let's talk a little bit, Rick, if you will. This is the World Championship. How do guys go about qualifying to get here? How many dogs were trying to do it, and what brought us here to this final 104? Well, we've got some stats here this evening, and uh, at the start of this year, Regional qualifying events were held across the country starting in January and ending on the last Saturday of August. And uh, dogs, uh, owners, handlers entered their dogs in these events, try to win a cast at that event, place in the top 10, and then move on to the, enter the zone area and move on to there. So we had 3,100 plus dogs entered in regional qualifying events this year, and uh, 700 dogs come out of those events eligible to compete in the zones. And uh, 485 of those attended the zone championships last weekend. Wow, so last weekend, folks, we had almost 500 dogs going out right. in the cast mm -hmm. to qualify to get here. Now, out of those 500, we whittled the field down to 104 that showed up, which brings us to Thursday night, round one. Steve, you wanna tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so on round one on Thursday night, we just hunt one round, and uh, they started out with 104 dogs, and uh, that hunted down to a potential, we could potentially have uh, 26 cast winners off of them 104. Um, the way our format lays out, um, and you know some casts have to come in with plus points, uh, we had 23 of them, 26 casts come back with plus points. So that, you know, that got us from 104 down to 23, which would take us into Friday night's round. So coming from Thursday night to Friday night, that's how we hunt it down to, and dogs are cast in, in four dog casts. And, uh, you know, obviously that's where the 26 casts comes from. And then it hunts down to uh, 20, it was 23 that won their cast with plus points. Yeah, and if you guys were here with us for Midnight Mayhem Thursday night, we had quite a time. We, uh, 
interviewed all 23 cast winners from the 26 cast as they came back in. Now, if you were following the telecast Thursday night, you know our anticipation was that those 23 dogs were going to go back out in six cast early in the evening last night on Friday in round two. And we were going to have a round three where we would have six dogs from those six casts come back, be paired off in three casts head to head, and three dogs make it to the finals here tonight. But uh, as you heard me say in the opening, right now we've got one cast, four dogs about to go out to the field. Things don't always go exactly as planned. So Alan Gingrich is here with us, uh, the Director of Field Operations. And Alan, tell us a little bit about what transpired. Why don't we have four instead of three? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a coon hunt, you know, and things don't always go the way we'd like to see them go. So, yeah, numbers play a big part in how everything breaks down, you know, and ideally you mentioned the breakdown and how we'd like to see uh, three dogs in the final cast. Well, as, as it would have it, uh, we ended up with uh, six cast winners come back with plus points in round two on Friday night. Or five, we had sent out six casts, and we only came back with five plus point cast winners. Correction there. Uh, so it leaves us with five casts, or uh, five dogs to move on for the late round. Well, that doesn't work too well. It's only two casts would be a three dog cast and a two dog cast. So we are kind of sitting here contemplating, you know, the conditions as tough as they are. Uh, we stand to, if only one of those casts were to uh, come back with plus points or you had any one of those casts fail to have plus points, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight or we wouldn't be having much of a coon on the <laughs> So uh, we really thought this through last night and we felt like the better choice and a much better choice for us to do was consider some other options. Uh, so what we did with those five dogs, we gathered those five handlers that were involved with. We uh, discussed the situation with them and uh, it was gonna be uh, uh, unanimous if we made a change. And uh, they agreed unanimously uh, on the idea that we proposed to them. Uh, which was to uh, do a buy uh, where three of the dogs would move on and the other two uh, dogs would go out last night on Friday night and hunt heads up. So we only had one cast to hunt heads up. That cast winner would then move on to tonight if they had one. So that assured us 100% that we were going to have a hunt tonight. Now I know some folks uh, wonder how this all happened and, uh, and we get it, but we felt this was obviously our best choice for everybody involved, the United Kennel Club, the hunters, we can get them on this platform. If it would have ended last night, uh, we wouldn't be able to accomplish that at all. So we feel it was the, uh, the best choice for us. Yep. Okay, folks, it sounds like we're having a little bit of audio difficulties there with uh, Alan's mic. And <laughs> unfortunate, too, because he just gave us a great explanation. But Alan, our apologies. We're going to come back to you here in just a couple minutes and give you the opportunity to go through the, the, the recap. A again, let's get everything situated uh, with Alan. And whenever he's ready, we'll go back to him. You know, guys, while we're waiting for them to get his audio set, that we've discussed a whole lot over the last couple of days, everything that the United Kennel Club has been doing to try to give the dogs the benefit of the doubt and to improve the quality of this hunt. Of course, we have thermal imaging that while it's not been approved this year for the world, it's coming into play, uh, something to give the dog the benefit of the doubt. Also, uh, you know, we, we've seen other rules changes, making sure that we have positive points here in the world championship for a dog to move on. Uh, I think it was really great, the decision to go down to one cast tonight, to have four dogs, so we didn't have a world champion come out of a cast last night without it being a truly world champion hunt. What I do you think? I think the think? conditions uh, for this event, when I heard that the world hunt was coming to Dyersburg, it is a fantastic place to hold a coon hunt. There are, coon, there are a lot of raccoons around here to be treated, and uh, the, the terrain is all mostly flat, almost all flat. It's just a great place to hold a coon hunt. Unfortunately, they have went through, suffered through a drought here in the last few weeks here, and it is bone dry out there in a lot of places. And um, it's, it's been tough, it's been tough hunting this weekend. And uh, you know, the scorecards come across last night, and I'll let Steve touch on that a little bit, but the scorecard scores reflected that. Yeah. And uh, so 
So the decision was made, and, and like you say, I want to explain that in a little more detail here in a few minutes, but uh, uh, the right decision was made. And the reason being is, is just simply the conditions for the dogs and the handlers, and this hunt is about them. It's not so much about anybody else as it is about them. And they went above and beyond to make sure that they, the hunters out there tonight feel that way. Yeah, and you know, we've seen them adapt all the way through this too. Steve, I'll let you elaborate a little bit on this, but you know, we originally, if you took a look at you know, the, the lead in to this and some of the press statements and stuff that came out, you know, the original plan was 26 cast uh, come down to actually seven, which when we only had 23 dogs come out of the 26, an adjustment was made again to have six dogs going in three cast head to head, you know, with it obviously possible that you might have one dead cast, but the chances of having two dead cast out of three are very, very improbable. But now, then when it only became five dogs, the chances of one out of two being dead went way, way up. So Correct. I thought it was another really, really good adjustment to make sure we had a true championship round. Steve, what are your thoughts? Well. I want to give a huge shout out to to United Kennel Club and the reps and the hunters uh, because, you know, kind of what Rick said, you don't know the conditions. And uh, we knew early on on Thursday uh, that it was going to be that, you know, obviously nature played a role in this. And, you know, one thing I can tell you that all the hunters that was here, especially the ones that made the 104, their desire was here to win a world championship. And, and the last thing that anybody wants is not to have a world championship. Sure. You know, a world champion. And like last night, potentially, uh, the, one of the scenarios, and Alan will explain it to you here in a minute, is if both casts go back out and neither one of them uh, when it come back in with plus points, there's a potential that there wouldn't be no world champion. Sure, sure, for and, sure. And, you know, obviously the hunters, as a hunter myself, uh, coming to a world hunt like this, you, if, you don't win, if you don't win a world hunt, you want to crown a world championship, and they got it right. They, they give it the potential. Now we're going to be able to crown a world championship. Yes, sir. So. Well, I think that we've got Alan back up. So, Alan, I'm going to throw it back over to you. You know, the beauty of being on live television is we can bring you this as it happens. The downside is sometimes we have technical <laughs> problems, but, Alan, we got them fixed. Yeah. So tell us now how we have four dogs instead of three. Yeah, so we ended up on Friday in round one, we ended up with six casts of dogs. So ideally, those would all come back with uh, six plus point cast winners who we, we would then advance six dogs on Friday night to the late round. Well, that didn't happen. You guys talked about the, uh, about the conditions here are tough for everybody. And uh, we ended up with five dogs. Uh, so we had uh, the way we had it planned or the way the format set up, that would have gave us two casts, a three dog cast and one two dog cast. And then if we had plus points in both of those casts, we would advance those both of those dogs on to have a two dog final. But the, uh, the other potential thing that could come into play that is a, a big unknown is if one of those casts happened to come back without plus points, the hunt is over at that point on Friday night late. And we would not be here uh, talking uh, today about crowning a world champion. That would have already happened, and it would have happened, and nobody would have found out much about it. So we uh, really took a lot of time to think this through last night and thinking, you know what, here we have an opportunity that we need to seriously think about, that we think we can uh, uh, come up with a better way to assure us to have a hunt on Saturday night here tonight. And that's exactly what we did. We discussed it with the reps and uh, we decided we would pull those five hunters who came back and if they agreed unanimously, we would instead do a draw system where we would send on three of the five uh, in a draw system, a fair draw, uh, to advance them to tonight's hunt and the other two uh, would go out and hunt in an alone round and hopefully they would get a cast winner and we would advance that dog to tonight's hunt which would make four. So that's what we ended up doing. We pulled the hunters. They were in unanimous agreement with it and it was in fact the right decision. I feel like today we could have sat here if things wouldn't have worked out the way we would have wanted wanted to, we would have been disappointed. We wouldn't have taken the time uh, to think about this and make uh, provisions when we had the opportunity to do so. So that's why we're sitting at four dogs tonight. And uh, those four dogs are gonna go out and I think uh, we're looking forward to a good hunt tonight. So hopefully uh, that makes, uh, 
that uh, helps folks understand why we ended up with four dogs tonight and not three. And uh, so they're ready to go out hunting here in just a little bit, and we're going to uh, be working on crowning uh, a world champion tonight. So back to you guys. Thanks, Alan. That was an excellent explanation there. And, you know, we've discussed it here, guys. We're all in agreement. It definitely was the right decision to make. Kudos to the, Amer to the United Kennel Club for making the right decision. Of course, you know, we've got a staff here behind the scenes that is exemplary. Not only Alan, but the thing that's most impressive to me or when I go to these events, you know, this is my fourth UKC Major Coonhound event to have the privilege of hosting uh, the third one with you guys around. All the preparation that Alan, uh, Nicole, the entire Annie, the entire United Kennel Club team puts into this is amazing. The equipment that they bring here, you know, and, and in these live streams that we're doing for you guys, uh, we've really been able to up the game. You know, we've got Bailey back behind us throwing up, building the great graphics. So they've done everything that they possibly can over the last couple of years and will continue to do so to, to up the level of play here, if you will. And one of the biggest things that people have really asked for in a major way since I started doing this was get us a lot more action in the field. Right. So, you yeah. know, we're working on doing that. And as a matter of fact, this evening we're going to have Brandon, one of our camera guys, out in the field with the dogs. We hope to bring you quite a bit of live coverage. But before that, let's take a look at some footage we took this afternoon when we actually went out to the grounds with the cameras and, and took a look. And this is what they'll be looking at tonight. <laughs> that was, it's a true story. I mean, they're, they're going to be in the dark tonight, so, just like we are, and uh, and 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 uh, we'll, we'll get that up here shortly. But uh, that was kind of funny that you brought that. Up. <laughs> yeah, guys, I apologize. So we're working as we really were chatting there a few back. minutes ago, the cast did leave out. We seen them leave out, and uh, if I twenty minute drive, I think twenty twenty five minute, minute drive. drive yep. And uh, so they're hunting in a spot tonight that hasn't been touched all weekend hoping that uh, the, the coons will cooperate a little better. Uh, I, I did hear him mention uh, water, and, and uh, next to uh, Steve, what, what was the... Well, they, they have some rain moving through, I believe, at the time. Yeah. So yeah. they're hoping that, you know, uh, we're hoping that with the rain, the weather, you know, the weather kind of changing a little bit, the rain moving through here uh, will help that side of it out. And, uh, and I really think it will, you know. Yeah. I, I, uh, they're going to a great spot. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's the number one thing, um, you know, to Rick's point. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be hunting the whole, the whole time. The way we understand, they're going to be hunting the whole time at this spot. So it's a huge, uh, uh, you know, it's a huge, a huge track. It's a huge ground. area. Yeah. I know it very, yeah. very well. You know, one of the great things about having this event here in my hometown of Dyersburg this year is that I'm very familiar with a lot of the grounds. And as you started to allude to, uh, yes, there's water. And guys, you know, if you're not a big time coon hunter or familiar with competition where it's really, really important to make game and to get a positive score, water plays a huge role because raccoons, uh, even though they're land mammals, they spend quite a bit of their time either in the water or on the water's edge. You know, a lot of people don't know that uh, a raccoon actually goes and washes his paws after he eats. and that's a necessary thing for them. So one of the things that's been challenging in these conditions being so dry, we've been in a major drought. Uh, you know, I was watering my garden today, guys. We haven't seen any appreciable rain here in Dyersburg in I think 20 days now, uh, going to an area where you do have some water. So these guys are going about 10, actually as the crow flies, it's probably about 12 miles from here. They're gonna be hunting next to uh, and actually in a wildlife management area, thousands of acres, great woods, no major highways around. It's the perfect place. And as a matter of fact, let's take a look at it right now. So 
So they uh, went out there today. Is that what yep. I understood? They went out there and filmed this today. They filmed this today, and I believe this is the the, the release area, or really, really close to the release area for the for the final hunt location. Now, this is down um, off of the Great River Road, which is right by the Mississippi River. Um, we are very, very blessed to have a lot of really good hardwood bottomland here in Dyer County down along the Mississippi River. Of course, Dyer County lays, um, lies in the northwest corner of the state, about 80 miles north of Memphis. You see a big cypress tree there also in the background. Adjacent to the Mississippi River, we have multiple wildlife management areas here in Dyer County, including several thousand acres of both WMA, which is huntable ground, um, and waterfowl refuge adjacent to this is White's Lake, which is a waterfowl refuge. Now it's closed uh, right before and during duck season, but during this part of the year it is open to hunting. So uh, as you can see there, uh, they're got cut loose tonight in a power line there. There are hardwood woods both to the left and the right. It's probably from where they're cutting loose about two miles to Interstate 155, a long way from any major highway, and there's a, there's a substantial fence that lies between the fields there and a lot of open fields. How many thousand of acres did they want to uh, well, challenge I know, them something? Yeah, I know he ch uh, shared today that there's a huge um, there's a huge tract of okay. private ground that uh, adjoins to this, and they're actually going to be cutting loose on the private side of it yeah, they that hasn't been touched, to be they got permission yeah. to be there, that, that they can go either way. So it's it's a big, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tract of ground that, and you, as you can see, uh, man, it, I mean, it's a, it's a hunter's paradise. I mean, it's a, it really is a hunter's paradise, you know, open, open underneath like that. Uh, so it's gonna be, it's gonna make the conditions for walking uh, easier or whatever. And, uh, you know, talking to the guy's point, the guides did an unbelievable job. I mean, when you hear the hunters come back in, this is what they shared with us that this is what they hunted in, all the guides. So the guides done a phenomenal job uh, this week, not taking anything away from them. You know, they did an amazing job on it, you know. Well, we were 90-some degrees here on, on Wednesday. Is that correct? It was 97 on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, being, being living here and knowing that the event was coming, being really excited about it, I've been watching the weather really close. I can't tell you what a relief it was for all of us here. Uh, it couldn't have been more perfect. We had probably the last big push of hot weather for the summer, 97 on Wednesday, and then a dry front. Unfortunately, it was dry, but a dry front came through and the temperatures dropped, and I think the high on Thursday was 77, and the humidity vanished. Now, it's come back a little bit tonight, but it's not nearly as bad as it was, and we may actually get a little bit of, of rain here in the next little bit. Um, you know, the, the great thing about the area, for you guys that are looking at it here, even though there's a lot of woods, it's a lot of fairly open woods, you know. Uh, we've still got a lot of leaves on the trees and stuff. Vines can be a major, major issue, as you see right there on the edge of it. But the thing that I really like about this area, and yes, you are correct, they are cutting loose in private with the anticipation that they might or might not get into public. You know, the point is there's a whole lot of really nice woods. Uh, uh, I, so I, the chance to find thousands are really good. Yeah, and there, and, and I know there's some said corn. There's corn. There's some corn back here. Yeah. So absolutely. It looks like, I mean, it's a, it looks like a real spot. It really does. Well, I tell you this, I guarantee you, we are not going to see a dry cast tonight. We're not going to see overtime unless there's a tie that can't be broken in, by the scorecard in some way. I really believe they're going to make a lot of game. And, I mean, this is a strong, strong cast that we have going out here as well. You know, we've got uh, four dogs that made it here. Let's talk a little bit about this final cast, and let's start out with Jenna. You want to tell us a little yeah. bit about Jenna well, and her handler, Jeremy? Yeah, absolutely. So... Jenna was actually one of my. Uh, what was what, what? Oh, here we go again. No, I, here, I, we, I know, here we go. What again. was my <laughs> no. one of my picks? <laughs> well, I I felt like she could make a big run at this. I really did. I you know I I shared that with uh, people before we even come down. And, you know, kind of a neat story on Jenna. Uh, she almost didn't to get, get to hunt on the zone level because Jeremiah had to work or not Jeremiah. Um, Tyler. Th yeah, had to work. So he was going to have to get off work. So he had his, I believe it was his mom and dad or his Might have been Cheyenne mother-in-law or somebody, yeah. or father-in-law, ran the dog to the event, got it confirmed, 
figured out where they was going to hunt at, and he actually met his cast at the woods when they was getting ready to turn loose. And Jenna's, wow. Jenna's one of them females that, that she's, um, she pretty much just hunts for Tyler. And uh, he knew that, you know, putting another handler on her was probably going to, you know, you know, really, you know, be a lot less chance of getting in. Didn't do any good on Friday night. Got in on Saturday night on a one night score. Uh, come here. And, you know, on, on Thursday night, on Thursday night, she tr scored on a couple of coons. And on Friday night, she, uh, you know, last night she was able to uh, score on a, a single and, and advance. So I, I feel good. She's got a good shot at winning this. Well, I think he believes so, too, of course. You know, we see Jenna's pedigree there. Uh, she is out of a, a bench champion, Grand Knight champion, uh, and Purple Ribbon Bled. Uh, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. She is a bench champion, Grand Knight champion, and Purple Ribbon Breeding uh, registered dame. Get gone, Jenna. Um, of course, Tyler had planned on being the handler. We know that's not the case right now. Uh, yeah, he is doing the handling. He is doing that. Yeah, he is doing yeah. that. He, he made it get off yeah. work. Yeah, and do the handling. So he made yes. it back. Yeah. Yes. Good yep. deal. And I yep. think we got to talk to Tyler a little bit earlier today. Let's uh, hear what he had to say about Jenna and coming into the championship round. My name is Tyler Compton. I am from Miami, Oklahoma. This is my dog, Get Gone Jenna. Jenna is a four-year-old walker female. She turns five next week, actually. Jenna's a one-person type dog. Her and I are, have a pretty good bond doesn't necessarily like other people too well. she got a soft spot and likes all the loving a person can give her. She's been good to me. I've had her since she's about three months old and raised right there on my place and I've never sold her. She's never left my hands and I don't ever plan to. I qualified Jenna for the world championship and I entered her to go to the Palmyra zone, which is zone four. When it came down to the wire, I was not able to get off work and take her to the Palmyra zone for Friday and Saturday. I didn't think I was gonna be able to make it. I pulled some strings, so some good friends of mine, uh, Justin Reeves and my in-laws, Jennifer and Cheyenne Cummings, were able to take her for me. When they took her, I was able to meet her at the woods for Friday night of zones. We didn't do any good that night, but I was able to drive six hours and, and get there and get her hunted so I could hunt her Saturday as well. And we won our cast Saturday night at Palmyra with uh, 425 points, and that was enough to get us through to here. Since we've, we've gotten through here uh, at the World Championship, we won our cast um, Wednesday night, 300 plus. We treated a couple of raccoons and came out on top of, after a nail biter. Tonight, we treated a coon to ourselves, and also we got lucky enough to draw a three dog cast and came out as, on top as well. And now we couldn't be more excited to be in the finals. So we were supposed to hunt three heads up casts tonight to get in the finals. Because there was a dead cast, they were, UKC was gonna have a two dog and a three dog cast. They decided to take the option or give us an option that if we didn't want to do that, we could draw cards. And the three people that drew a card would get in the finals and the other two would hunt it off for the fourth spot. We anonymously decided to do that, and I was fortunate enough to get a break and get a lucky, lucky break and be one of the three to get in the finals. I also was able to draw it with two very good friends of mine and, and local guys. It worked out perfect. I couldn't be more excited. We're, we're, we're pumped up about tomorrow. It, it would be a feeling like no other. I'm obviously uh, extremely excited to be here. We've worked four years to get here, almost five. In my lifetime, I've, I've probably worked 10 years to get here. This is obviously a dream come true for me and for her. I would love any of the, of the four of us that will be in the finals to win this cast. To win it would mean everything. It, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and I couldn't be more excited. Tell you what, that's something the young man comes in here and has to actually meet the cast in the field to run the dog in round one and makes it all the way here to our final round with normally our fourth, our third and final round tonight. Um, Jenna's got a big shot. I know she's your pick. Uh, I think that Rick disagrees with you just a little bit too. I believe Hawk was your pick, we'll was see it how not? well that works out for him tonight. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the arrogance level with this yeah. guy. Hey, I'll tell you what, before, <laughs> before we uh, start talking about Hawk though, you, you mentioned uh, Jenna's breeding. I think we've got her pedigree and we can pull that up right quick. So uh, she's out of course, a, a grand night champion and purple ribbon bread bones backwater banjo. 
and another Grand Knight uh, champion and Purple Ribbon Bread Mafia's Redneck Baby. Um, what can you tell us about this pairing? Well, I can tell you, I mean, she comes from a, she comes from a long line of, of good hounds. Um, you know, the, 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 her mother, the, the Redneck Baby female, uh, is a full litter mate uh, brother or a full litter mate sister to Shack Attack, which was in the final four of the World Hunt, I believe it was in, two th and when it was uh, in Georgia. 17? 2017, 2018, somewhere around that time frame. So that whole litter, obviously, was, was, a, was a good litter. And her granddad, which is backwater bone collector, was an amazing reproducer and amazing hound himself. So, you know, she's bred up. I mean, you know, she's here for a reason. I mean, she's obviously a good hound. Uh, she's got a great, she's got a great guy behind her uh, in Tyler. You know, he's done a lot of work with her, and she comes from a great bloodline. So, you know, it's, it's no accident that she's here. She's yeah. actually earned two Grand Knight Champion degrees. Yes. So that, I mean, that just that goes for the consistency. And, and what's her and, age? Steve? Is she four? Um, she is. Uh, Jenna is actually uh, yeah, four. four. Year old and, and here's the other thing. She, uh, he, he shared with us today too. She's won well over twenty thousand dollars just just in, in other events as well. Yeah. So I mean, she's somewhere right around the twenty five thousand dollar mark, which is nice you know, on top of being a, yeah, <laughs> on top of being a you know, earn her Grand Knight title twice. So, uh, you know, I tell you, I just she's my pick. I mean, that's who I'm going to uh, stick with or whatever. Uh, you know, obviously I got a sentimental favorite, and we'll talk about that later on in the show. But I, I think Jenna, be, just because of the conditions, the way she's been looking this weekend, uh, the way she looked last weekend, uh, I think she's going to win this deal. All right. And you disagree. You think it's going to be Hawk. Tell us a little well, bit about Hawk. When he why. gets to pick first every time, what else is there to do? <laughs> um, it's the same story every time he's sitting here. So... Um, I guess we're going to mention talking about Hawk here, um, and it, do we have an interview on him? We do. Up, We've or? got some footage of Wyatt and Hawk. You want to see it first, or you want to talk first? Well, let's see if we can see it if it's ready. Tell us why it's your pick <laughs> first. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I've got a little bit of of uh, background with the bottom side of this of, of Hawk's pedigree here, and no, I didn't have anything to do with any of the dogs or or have anything to do with the breeding or anything like that. But, but he, his mother was night champion, grand champion, hard slam hound, Jojo. And the hard is short for Daryl Hargis. And Daryl Hargis, uh, we go back, my family goes back with Daryl and his family. Good Lord, when, we, when me and Daryl were young guys. And um, Daryl would come over and hunt with me and my dad several times throughout the summers. And uh, he really got into it. Daryl is a giant of a guy. Um, and he really got into the coon hunting. And here as of late, over the last few years, his pedigrees, his hounds, his females have been showing up in pedigrees, winning, uh, having winners come around at these big events like this. And Hawk's no different this weekend. Um, so, so it's kind of a it's kind of a neat thing for me to see Daryl's name there again. So what happened here on the bottom side is Daryl bred uh, his Lou female to the doctor, and the doctor was owned by Mike Gilbert, and I don't know for sure if he was partnered with Cliver or Chuck Cliver on that dog or not, but uh, Mike uh, and Chuck they live over on the western side of uh, Indiana, and Daryl's probably about a 60 minute drive to them guys, and he kind of focused in on that line of dogs to start his breeding program and um, it's, it's worked out really well for him so that's kind of my pick um, uh, Hawk's great grandpa let's see Hawk's grandpa was what's up doc two-time world champion cool cool well we're about to take a look at Wyatt and Hawk but before we do uh, Alan Gingrich has come back in the studio and I believe he's got uh, some updating news for us yeah, well, the cast is just now leaving the fairgrounds as we speak right now. They were saying, or sitting out here waiting. There's a little bit of a, a weather uh, coming in. It just uh, it started sprinkling a little bit. There's a, a, little, a little bit of lightning out there, and as you can see, they're just now leaving. Uh, so they've been talking about they're going to make a stop at one of the gas stations close by. They're looking at the radar, and it's supposed to cro or pass over at about 10 o'clock. So they're thinking their idea right now is to hold off just a little bit 
and be out at their hunting spot and they should be in good shape. It'll probably be closer to 10 o'clock by the time they turn, turn loose. So uh, that's what they've decided. But uh, let me just quickly, if you don't care, go over and we'll tell you the judges we have tonight. Uh, the lead judge is gonna be Brandon Scalf. He's been judging here for us all weekend. He's from Kentucky, a good solid judge. Uh, he can handle uh, a cast like this and, and is good at it. Uh, Troy Salyers from Indiana is another one that came up to help us. He is uh, his assistant. And he's also flanked by uh, Mr. Chad Smith from the local area here as the assistant judges. They have the scorekeeper, Corey Jeffries, who's uh, uh, also from the local club here. Then we have Trevor Wade, our Coonham programs manager, who's gonna do the play-by-play -play, and he's gonna report back to me and I will be reporting those uh, 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 goings on to our listeners this evening. Uh, the field reps, the officials we have out in the field this evening, we have a panel of three United Kennel Club field reps. Uh, Tim Gilchrist will, will chair that panel. Uh, he's from Iowa. And then we have Mr. Philip Foster from South Carolina. And then also Curtis Sparks from North Carolina. They will serve as the panel in case there's any questions out there. And in, generally these officials are sitting back here at the headquarters. But in this final cast, it is tradition that they do go along out to the field. So if there are any uh, questions that they have, they don't have very far to go for that. Um, so that said, the rest of them, we also have uh, Mr. John uh, Coleman, I do believe is his last name, uh, that will be guiding the cast. And then along with the players, Wyatt Monin with Hawk, Jeremiah Roller from Missouri with Sleepy, Tyler Compton out of Missouri with Jenna, and then obviously the colorful Kurt Ehring out of Missouri. So these guys are, as you can see, they are on their way, and I think we're going to be underway shortly here. Good deal. Thank you for the update, Alan. Uh, as you guys can see, it is raining there. Uh, Rick was just uh, pointing out we could hear the thunder outside. You know, uh, it's getting some moisture out there in the air, which is a really, really good thing. And hopefully it'll help these dogs get on track quicker. So we've got our, our four dogs going out there. We should start bringing the action. But let's finish going through all four of our dogs. Uh, so, you know, we talked about Hawk a little bit. We saw his pedigree. Now let's take a look at his interview earlier today with Wyatt and Hawk. I'm Wyatt Monin. I'm from Leicester, Iowa, and this is Hawk. Hawk's a uh, six-year-old walker male and everything. Um, I bought him from Mike Gilbert and Chuck Cliver. He's just pretty good about being alone, having coons. Just what he does, common, common coon treer is what I call him. <laughs> For me, I'm a, I'm a long ways from where they have a lot of these big hunts and everything. And uh, we actually got qualified um, at a couple different qualifiers, um, qualifying mini slams. So I hunted at a couple of those and Hudson, South Dakota was the first one that I got qualified at. And we opted to go to the Brooklyn, Wisconsin zone. Uh, we were double cast winners there. We had really good casts, good guides, good judges both nights. Um, no problems on the cast. We had a, had a good time. And then we got out here and uh, he looked pretty good on Thursday night. He won his cast with 350 plus. He was treed with another coon at the end there that I didn't, didn't need to tree him in on. Tonight he, uh, we scored two coons in the cast and Hawk treed both of them. Nothing else treed coons so we ended up getting a buy through drawing the cards. With there being dead cast and there only being five, we were fortunate enough to get through um, with just our drawing out and whatnot, so we didn't have to go out for a late round. Worked out for us. Well, happy to be here. See what we can see what we can get done tonight. Um, it meant a lot to me to win. I've uh, this is a hunt that everybody wants to win. Is UKC World? It's always on every coon hunter's bucket list. It's uh, it's huge to be here, even especially to to win. And I just I can't imagine. young man uh, these guys they're all pretty good friends as well I mean you know we just saw uh, that Tyler is another young guy and I think that they've hunted together quite a bit it's pretty cool to see you know young there's a lot of camaraderie going. right there between yeah. this whole group I, I I've never been to a world championship where we sat around here and visited with these guys as a group as a group you know 
and it was awesome. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, Tyler and, and uh, Wyatt actually roomed together for a while, and uh, Jeremiah Roller has, has pleasure hunted with them, and they've all hunted with the colorful Kurt. So, you know, they know each other real well. That's what we're going to call him tonight, <laughs> isn't it? Colorful <laughs> you know, so they've all, so they've all hunted with each other. Uh, they know each other real well. They know each other's tendencies. Most of them have hunted with each other's hounds. So uh, I look for them to, I, I know when they get out there and, and turn these dogs loose, it will be all business. Uh, that's just the way it is, but I, you know, I think you know we did hear from them, and I really truly believe this. Uh, you know, I think that if they're not the ones that win it, they don't have a favorite of the other three that of the, who would win it, and that's pretty awesome. You know, so uh, you know to see that camaraderie and sitting here for two hours here visiting, they was actually just sitting in here watching a part of this, uh, relaxed before they went out, and I think a lot of that has to do with them knowing each other. And uh, you know, feeling good yeah, about this. And, you know, and they're still hanging out together right now. I think we've got the guys. They've stopped at the gas station, and you know, all as a group. Even though they're about to go out head to head, I think we may have some footage. There we go. So you know, you were just talking about it. Uh, they, these guys, I watched him sit over there watching the uh, <laughs> midnight mayhem. Yeah. By the way, this is we one have of my, ate there a few times. Oh this yeah. Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sorry. not the gas station, but it's right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is that is being from Dyersburg. That is the exact opposite route that I would have taken to get <laughs> to where they're going tonight. I don't know how they. Well, picked. They may be killing time. I mean, as we're sitting here, you can still hear the thunder yeah, going on hear, them yeah. above, and uh, for sure we're going to get a little something out of this. Uh, and, and they're claiming that it's going to roll out as quick as, as quick as it rolls in. But we're going to get some sort of weather out of this deal right here. Well, if, you, if you're from the local area it, and you know it like I do, and I know there are a bunch of locals watching, we talked about going down off the Great River Road for the hunt. You know, we're out here at the Dyersburg Dyer County Fairgrounds. They probably added eight miles to their trip <laughs> by going the route that they're going. Well, so I'm saying, yeah. like you said, they're probably trying to kill some time, at, yeah, which is good. No and, doubt. And, and, you know, to the to a lot of the viewers, uh, it's a really smart move on their part because you don't want to cut loose. You know, obviously with a thunderstorm rolling through here like this, it's obviously louder thunder and that kind of thing. Number one, number two, you know, a lot of times the wind has picked up a little bit. And when you when you cut these loose, you want to try to cut loose in favorable conditions if you can. And, and for them, releasing the hounds a half hour later is going to ben benefit everyone. I know that as a viewer, you know, you're anticipating, let's get this show on the road. You know, we're all excited for this, but you know, it, it's a, it's a smart move on their part to, to wait and let that little bit roll through uh, because it will make it a lot more action packed for them. And, it, and as a judge, a lot easier to judge. You know? yeah, well, I hope you're right that that's the reason they're going that way because I can tell you guys the station where they went to, it is known as having the coldest beer in town. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, I think you're exactly right. They, you know, they're and and that is a good safe route to get to where they're going as well. So I know that you know, Jen is your favorite. Hawk is your favorite. I know nothing about him. I haven't hunted with him one time, but it's just a little bit of a little bit of sentimental value there with Daryl Hargis and uh, uh, kudos to him. I mean, we like I said before, we we see Daryl's name pop up in some of these pedigrees. And uh, to grow up around a guy with a guy like that, I'm, I'm really proud for him. Yep. Well, and then our third dog that we're about to take a look at is, I believe, the youngest dog in this field of forum. Am I right about that, Steve? Yeah, he's a three-year-old. Sleepy, yep. Yep. sleepy three-year-old treeing yep. walker, uh, handled by Jeremiah Roller there. Um, out owner's Adam Campbell. Uh, Jeremiah hails out of... Uh, Missouri as well lives pretty close, I believe, to Tyler, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Tyler and Jeremiah hunt together. They don't live very far apart. Of course, you can see that the owner, Adam Campbell's from Smart, Missouri, down there in that southwest corner of the state, not far from Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, by the way, it is Miami, not Miami. We've got a very good friend there that'll <laughs> correct you quick on that, Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, which one of you guys wants to talk about Sleepy and Jeremiah? Um, I, I'll, I'll share a little bit. I've actually got to hunt with Sleepy uh, some, and uh, he actually, uh, Jeremiah actually just got on onto Sleepy here. I think it was Autumn Oaks was the first hunt that he handled him in, so which was Labor Day weekend. So this is a fairly new combination. Um, 
But uh, I got to hunt with the dog a couple times. I actually drew him out in competition. I can tell you he's a nice hound. He moves around really good. The dog's hustle and hunt is, uh, is he just, he just, uh, he's, a, he's a good hound and he's got, a, he's got an excellent, you know, he's got, he's, he's got a mouth that carries that you can hear for a ways. And he, he's not, he's not scared uh, to go find what he needs to. And, you know, as, as it showed this weekend, you know, he, he was able to win them casts with, and I'm sure he'll uh, share it a little bit, he was able to win them casts by scoring on a coon, you know, scoring sure. on a raccoon, uh, which is what did it for him. And, you know, he obviously, uh, he comes out of a, a dog that, hey, this weekend made a huge, huge, you know, really impressed a lot of folks. Now, for those that know this dog on the Neosha uh, Cuz dog, amazing reproducer. I mean, this this <clears throat> dog is not alone, you know, he's he, he was the dog of one of many dogs that had multiple uh, pups here uh, that, you know, in this hunt. And he had three. He, he had three pups sired in the top 104, and all three of them got to the round of 23. They all they, won their they first all round. They won cast. their first round cast. Wow. The wow. only the only stud dog to do that here, and now he's got one in the final four. So you know there was multiple ones that had three here, and he and all three of his pups advanced. So you know obviously you can't take that away from him. And he's and he's taken, and he's got a lot of. Cuz has a lot of dogs that are that are winning a lot. You know. Uh, you know, I don't know what his pup earnings are, but I know they're way up there. And then obviously the dam to this comes from, uh, from Jerry Moles Kennels, uh, called Salt Creek Jenny. And, you know, Jerry has had, he's had a kennel full of females that most of us would just dream to oh. have over the years. Starting out with his old Molly Ann female and, and many females that won, but even they was great hounds, but they was above that they was great reproducers and you see them females pop up in a lot of people's pedigree and I can guarantee you uh, kind of what uh, Rick had shared earlier on on Hargis I guarantee you uh, Jerry is uh, is sitting back smiling today because you know this is a product product of many lines of generations of breeding that he put together uh, that Sleepy's off of so yeah and I can tell you you know it'll be a big big deal coming from a line of producers like that to win here at the world championship for Sleepy uh, the only dog I believe that is not a grand night champion that's made it here to the finals will be huge in terms of other possibilities for him, most notably breeding because he comes out of some tremendous producers. And, and Jeremiah is really, really proud of this dog. You know, the Neosho line is from right there, that Neosho, Kansas area, just above Mam, Oklahoma, not far uh, from the, the southwest corner there of Missouri. L let's hear a little bit from Jeremiah and Sleepy. And my name is Jeremiah Roller. I'm from Sparta, Missouri, and this is Sleepy. He's three years old and uh, pretty laid back most of the time, but when it gets dark, he gets wound up. I didn't get him qualified. Someone else got him qualified at the RQE, but I took him to the Zone 4 at Palmyra, Missouri. And uh, we won Friday night with 625 plus. We got beat Saturday night. And then we came down here um, Thursday night had 225 plus on a coon and then won our cast and then tonight we had uh, 175 on a coon and he was treated again at the end of the hunt but I didn't have to treat him so didn't need it. And what it means to be here it means a lot. I mean I've been hunting competition hunts for 20 years and never made it nowhere close to this far so it means a lot be like a dream come true, you know, I mean, it's really what it'd be like. Probably a feeling like I've never felt before. I, I don't know because I've never won one, but that's what I would say it'd be like. Yeah, it was rough. The, the hunting was a little tough. So there was there was a dead cast when there should have been three casts to go heads up. We had to make a decision of what, what to do and they, they proposed that we draw and then the two that draw to number two had to go back out and hunt. But you do what you got to do. I mean, that's just a decision that had to be made. And I think it was the right thing to do. Okay, so we got a good look there at Jeremiah and Sleepy. Um, you know, I know y'all's picks were Jenna and Hawk. What do you think Sleepy's chances are here? You've hunted with him, Steve. He's got as good of a chance as any of the three that are there. I really believe that. I mean, he, you know, he, he's, you know, his style should fit this area because he's got hustle. 
you know, and, he, and he's, a, he's a, you know, from what the, from the times I've hunted with him, he, you know, his ability to get in there and hustle after one is, he just, he's a big hunting dog from what I've seen. And, uh, you know, I think it's just a matter of, you know, uh, he catches the right break and, and, you know, all these dogs are capable of winning. You know, we're kind of forced to make a pick. I mean, we're not forced to, we wanted to make a pick. No, but, you're uh, the one. That, you're no, the one no, no. We all like. We all like. We all like. None of us were for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, we all, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, and, so <laughs> I picked Jenna, but it wouldn't shock me. You ask him what his chances are. He's got 25 percent chance of winning this game. <laughs> that's very, very politically. No, that's just the very politically he, correct. He has a 25 percent chance of winning this cast. Back to the right. pedigree a little bit there, and I assume that the original Jenny is back in there somewhere. And if I remember correctly, the world hunt in Iowa, she finished second. second. I think she made the final yes, four. Yes, she I know made it. the final four. She placed second the year that uh, uh, Jessup won it. Wow. With a, a scar. scar. That scar was actually man. in Indiana. It was actually held in Indiana in 2002. Iowa, yep, Indiana, what's club. the difference? Yep, no, it was, it was held at our You're host wrong club. about that. In, in, uh, <laughs> I got you. Really? It, it, Yes, it was held in the Grand Canyon in, in 2002. Nope, that, it, it was at our club. Hmm. Uh, Alan, uh, Alan will probably correct you here in a few minutes. Yeah, that. Alan can verify that. Uh, oh, here Indiana. Indiana. See, Indiana. I was right about that. Indiana, <laughs> Indiana was where the hunt was held. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, so, so, hold on, stop. So, Rick, who was correct? Yeah, Alan was. <laughs> Alan was. I, I tell you something else on on the, just real quick on on uh, Sleepy. His granddad's called me Stylish Legend, which I believe also had two pups in this hunt. I think Drek, I think Drek pup, and Alan can correct us on that, but I think he sired two, I, th I believe. But, you know, Coma Stylish Legend obviously goes back to Coma, which was a, you know, reproduced some amazing hounds as well, you know. So, again, he's bred right, and he's the right kind to, to, to be able to finish this thing off. I so. watched a play-by-play -play that he was on in a final round uh, earlier in the year. And towards the end of the hunt, they walked like 1.2 miles to him, you know, after he'd hunted one round and come back in and rested and then back out another round. So he's got the, he's got the stamina, he's got the oh, fire he, to make it to the he's, end. He's, he's definitely got the wills and, to do it, but, but he's still only got a 25% chance. He's only got a 25% hey, chance. Hey, hey, well, politically great correct. with numbers, Steve is. <laughs> I will tell you uh, real quick, the night that one of the nights that I hunted with him, uh, he got treed. He was over a mile from us, and he had actually treed a coon in a log, and we still could hear him. And obviously, as you know, so he's not barking up; he's barking in a log. And when we and we walked into him, you know, we walked to him a mile as the crow flies, you know, you could still hear him. And he was treed off of a dirt road, and, and this just comes to mind on me. He was treed off a dirt road, and it was wet out, and you could see where his tracks had run. And the actual, you could see the coon track in the mud. He was about 14 to 15 feet off that coon track, running right alongside of it, and it went to that log, and then right at the very end went to that log. And we commented on that walking into him. Wow. That he was actually, you know, he wasn't on tie. He was actually 15 feet to the one side of it and treated his coon along. And it was the only coon, a raccoon, I believe, that we had scored that night. And he ended up winning the cast and advancing on in that hunt. So, so now uh, you've got me second-guessing myself. Because that's, that's pretty impressive along the way. But I'm going to have to stick with my pick here and our fourth dog, even though you almost sold me to come back and change my mind to Sleepy. Uh, I got to tell you guys, you know, that first of all, just the fact that everybody refers to his handler as Colorful Kurt, that makes me love this dog. But also looking at his age, looking at his track record, uh, I can tell you, I'm, I'm going with Whitey. Uh, Whitey is a Grand Knight champion, uh, PR Purple Ribbon Bread Dog, Bozo Stylish Whitey uh, is his registered name. Of course, his handler is Kurt Ehring. He's owned by Buzz Lynch and Kurt Ehring. And they also come from over in Missouri, uh, Monroe City, Missouri. Now, I know you know all of these guys very, very well, but... Uh, you know, Kurt, I've got to talk to him just a little bit. I, you know, I said on Thursday night after we watched him come in and we saw your interview with him, I mean, those other three guys, are, are younger guys, uh, particularly Tyler and Wyatt, are really young. Uh, Jeremiah's much younger. Uh, Kurt just turned 60 years old. Was probably as excited to be here as anyone in the field. Oh, I guarantee you. I guarantee Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yep. 
and you know, the other thing that I loved about Kurt is he absolutely loves this dog. Uh, Whitey comes in the house. That's yeah. another big plus for me. That's another reason why I really like the dog's chances to win because I just feel like, you know, the dog that lives in the home like that with the handler, uh, I think Kurt said that he spends a lot of time with his granddaughter as well. Am I correct in that? Yeah, right. Yep. But they do a lot does. of pleasure hunting. Yeah, ton of pleasure hunting together. This dog, of course, uh, very well bred, grand night champion. Um, I got to tell you guys, you know, he's my favorite for a lot of reasons. My money is on Whitey tonight. And I think we got a little bit, uh, we're going to get to introduce you guys to Colorful Kurt and Whitey. I'm Kurt Ehring. I'm from Monroe City, Missouri. This is Whitey here. He's out of Rat Attack Seaman and Andy Fertel's line of dogs off a of female called Lil and got some old hiring in there, I tell everybody. Me and Buzz Lynch, and we raised a litter. And I always raise what I hunt and hunt what I raise. And we brought him up as a pup, raised him in the house. Everybody tell you I'm about half nuts, but if I like a dog, I like one. You won't see one sleep with her tongue out much like that, will you? <laughs> well, we, well, you have to go qualify, you know, so we qualified up there. And what was kind of neat this time, I'd track a couple ribs and told my granddaughter, I said, hey, how about helping old Paul handle this dog? You know, he don't lead the best sometimes. He's spoiled. But uh, she said, yeah, I'll do that. But I got some plans. She's 15, you know, so she said, but I'll help you. So she goes and we had a fantastic, I mean, a fantastic time. We had good sportsmanship the whole time, you know. Uh, everybody likes to win, but a man tonight told me after I got a little upset when I missed my draw and stuff. And he said, hey, Kirk, there's more to life than coon hunting. You better be satisfied with what you got. And I walked out of that door over there. I got thinking about that. He's right, you know, and I lost a good friend, me and Buzz, Kevin Turner was, lost him in a car accident. And I think he was looking down over us, you know what I mean? Whitey's, he, he feeds off of me, if that makes sense. I got a guy that I stayed with, Jeremy Michaelis. He said, Kurt, if that dog ain't barking, you're talking. No, he's got a beautiful personality. I, a lot of people say, hey, Kurt, he's, uh, I had a boy hunting, and he said, man, he's homesick. I said, oh, there ain't nobody homesick over me, you know what I mean? But I think they was right, you know, I had to go get him. But uh, see what he does when he gets relaxed, that tongue ain't that crazy. He's about like me. I've always had a blanket back, red-headed dog, anybody that knowed me. I walked, and my dad had one dog called High C that was all white with a black spot. And old Buzz got to making fun of me. He said, hey, Kurt, when we breed this dog and to attract man female, and you have five blanket backed red-headed dogs and one white one, which one are you gonna get? I said, don't be doing that to me, you know what I'm saying? But uh, there's only one Whitey, only one track man, you know? Only one Kurt, thank God, for what my dad always said. So how can you not love that guy and love that dog? <laughs> Folks, that right there is exactly why uh, Kurt and Whitey, they're my picks tonight. And there's a lot of talent there, too. It's not just all about, about you know, colorful Kurt and his personality. And Whitey has a personality of his own. But this dog, also, it's another very, very well-bred dog. I believe we've got a graphic of his pedigree we'll be able to bring up here in a minute. I mean, you know, we kid around and laughing hard about Kurt d during the interview it was great but let's take a look at the pedigree here talk to us a little bit about that well it's the cream of the crop you know it, it uh you know let's start way back there on top there at Rock River Sackett Jr. and and what a tremendous uh sire he was to to some outstanding dogs and I I suppose he's leading in every uh, uh whatever, every bloodline competition, every stud dog competition there is. Um, and, he, and he sired a dog called Rat Attack that Buzz Lynch and Kevin Turner had. And like Kurt said, we lost Kevin to a, an auto accident probably, I don't know, in the last 10 years or so. And what a tremendous loss to the, to the Coonhound world that was. But uh, you jump down there to the bottom side, and there's Ball, Stylish, Hickory, and Harry. And uh, I have always said that that there's three people 
uh, in the history of coon hounds that, that have got us where we are today. And uh, I always said that Timothy Ball was one of them. You got Jarvis Umpers that was another pioneer, Fred Miller, and tonight I'm going to add Frank Jennings. Um, we just see those four names, no matter where you're at at a night hunt, you're there because of one of those four names probably. And um, I, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of a history buff when it comes to this sort of thing. And uh, we need to really appreciate all four of those guys for what they've done to the sport. And they've got us sitting right here. Yeah, and you know, to your point, Rick, uh, I had Alan actually pull this earlier today. You're looking at this pedigree. This is something that's just amazing. This dog in his seven generation pedigree, uh, between his sire rat attack and his grandsire Sackett Jr. and his grandsire Hickory Nut Harry, them three dogs personally have sired. This is pups directly off of them, right at 8,000 pups. That's registered with United that's Kennel Club. That's registered with United Kennel Club. That was direct sons he and daughters. <clears throat> that's direct sons and daughters of them. So, and, and you know, Rat Attack, uh, his sire, has produced dogs that have won well over a million dollars in lifetime earnings. You know, wow. so, so, you know, he is, you know, he is obviously uh, bred right in, you know, to something that you had mentioned earlier, uh, knowing Kurt. Uh, I tell you, I, I don't know if there's anybody that takes care of their hounds or has a m more special bond. When Kurt shared that about that dog, you know, about the whole, you know, that bond type of thing, uh, they literally are with him and they interact. I mean, they're in his house. There's, there's, I don't know if anybody takes care of their hounds or cares or is more passionate about what they do and what they have than Kurt Aring. Amen. You mentioned that earlier today, or yesterday, I think it was, that you thought that Kurt was probably one of the best guys to, to take care of a hound. No doubt about it. And, you know, that's, again, I said it earlier. I think when you've got that kind of bond, it, it really makes a difference. And the dogs feel it. They know, I guarantee you, Whitey, he's feeding off of Kurt right now. Kurt's excited. He wants to perform. I think that dog has an excellent excellent chance you yeah. know and and he's won over 40,000 with him already oh yeah with Whitey you know so I mean and he should have won 140,000 and, and, and he'll tell you that <laughs> oh amen he'll tell you about that in a minute but you know, all, all four of these dogs though are, are great dogs we have been very fortunate to you know have the group that we have I think it's the perfect for for our world championship tonight and these guys, they tell me that they're almost to the field. We're fixing to turn them loose in just a moment, and we're going to crown a 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion. But before we do that, let's take a look back in history at the prior 43.
Did you know that your monthly subscription to Coonhound Bloodlines comes packed with upcoming UKC event information, official UKC event results, and articles of interest about coon hunting? It sure does. Read about the top competition hunters and hounds, as well as stories about pleasure hunting and bench show hounds. Subscribe today or renew online at shop.ukcdogs.com. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. Guess what? We have a podcast. The all-new United Kennel Club podcast will not only feature great guests living the sporting dog life, but also rules and sport updates. Tune into the Hunting Ops podcast with Alan Gingrich and Trevor Wade to hear the latest coonhound rules and updates, beagle rules and updates, and all breaking news about UKC Hunting Ops programs. Hear it right here first. Subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss out. Welcome back to the 2022 United Kennel Club Coonhound World Championship. Of course, I'm your host, J. Paul Jackson, here along with the real experts, my co-host, Rick Stretch and Steve Burkholder. And, uh, while we were at break, we took a look at the weather, guys. It's got a little bit of rain, but we're about to have the break. The guys are about to the field now. Hopefully, we'll be cutting loose here shortly uh, to start this final cast for 120 minutes for the 44th championship. While we were at break, I was also taking a look at a bunch of the comments out there. We really appreciate all you guys who are watching us tonight on our YouTube, United Kennel Club YouTube channel. And by the way, Jason Smith, I will try to not talk quite so much. Out there fishing. You can't That's what they it. pay me to do, though. I'm a fisherman. What he's become. Oh, know? really? Yeah. yeah. Not as much coon on there anymore. Not as much coon hunting. Yeah. Games <laughs> passed him up. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, we've been talking, you know, in, in our live broadcast uh, about the Coonhound World Championship, but that's not the only competition that we've had here this weekend. As a matter of fact, today the United Kennel Club had the uh, Coonhound Breed event, our confirmation or bench show, where a world champion was also crowned, I believe. Right. Either one of you guys get to make it out for a little bit of that? I did. I actually, I actually watched, and uh, I set up with Alan, and uh, he wanted to, he wanted to kick me off set because I was picking all the winners, you know. Oh. And uh, no, I didn't. I so didn't. now he's a bench <laughs> show judge too. Right now? <laughs> what is no, up with actually, you, man? Actually, I didn't. I, I did not pick the. I did not. I did not pick the uh, the male. The <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan is off to the side right now. <laughs> that I'm a liar. I did pick a few winners, but I will tell you what I did see today. Uh, I haven't sit in on a bench show uh, in a few years. And uh, what really amazed me today on it is the competition was really, really tough. I mean, there was a lot of really, really, really nice hounds. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that there's a, I think it was an all black and tan final. Uh, that, Imagine uh, that, that, Rick. Uh, that I didn't, uh, <laughs> that I didn't pick either one of them yeah. to, to get to there. But it, it was, it was fun. I tell you today, it was actually fun uh, just sitting back and watching that whole thing unfold. And, you know, the emotion of winning that, you know, of winning that, that world show, uh, it was awesome to be a part of it, you know, even though I was just a spectator, you know, just sitting in the back watching the whole thing unfold. Yeah, yeah. So not picking awesome. all the winners, obviously. Oh, I did pick a few. I want to go over there and get it, but we, we have a, a whiteboard over to the side where every now and then they uh, fill us in a little bit on what's going on or direct us. And during this... Uh, during this, Alan just walked over and in big bold letters wrote liar over there on it. But it was a great time and everybody did enjoy your commentary. And I believe we've actually got a little bit of a video. So let's take a look here at the uh, confirmation championship today.
first of all, these are really nice dogs. Uh, this dog I'm going to pick has a real nice head, good, good ear rolled to his head and stuff. Uh, got a good neck flow on the shoulders, top line. Uh, good angulation. Got good feet, and I think the dog that meets the breeze down the closest is the black and tan. These are some really nice dogs here. We're kind of cutting hairs here. But look at the dog's head and the ears, look at their feet, their legs, their top line, their angulation, the way they moved on the ground. But today I'm gonna go with the black female. These are two really, really nice black and tans, and they meet the black and tans uh, standards to the very, very T. I like both these dogs. I like how they move on the ground. I like one dog that really, on his travel, he reaches out real good, moves. These two dogs are really, really nice. I love the dog's head. But the dog I'm going to pick today, uh, this dog, has a good head, has a good head, a good top line, good angulation, moves on the ground good, but I'm gonna go with the black male dog.
<laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the bench show. And right here is proof positive that. Do you think that we can just focus the camera on this side of the table from here on out? Or... <laughs> I think we pretty well set him up for the rest of the night. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alan. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad you guys had a little fun off of that. <laughs> yes, and listen, we've had some comments, too. Uh, you know, I know you guys are ready for us to go to the field. Trust me, we're ready to get some footage going to the field. I was just informed that they have arrived at the hunt location. Um, obviously, there's some technology involved in that, and so it's going to take a few minutes for the guys to get everything set up to verify that the live feed is still good. And you know, We're going to do everything we can to provide you the best play-by-play -play and the most at live action that we possibly can from the field. Uh, we've had... You may have heard the weather, the thunder in the background. So, you know, it's taken a few minutes, but I think we're pretty close to kicking it off uh, right now. You know, so guys, we've had really dry conditions. These dogs have been out on two casts, night before last, last night. Now they're going into some very different conditions. What kind of influence, if any, will that have on the dogs, Rick? Well, they've, they've hunted in the same conditions the last two nights, and they're going to hunt in the same they're all going to hunt in the same condition tonight. Right, right. It's going to be the same has, for all of them. The playing right, field's going to be level. The condition has changed, but they're all going to hunt in the same. All right, folks. Well, this is what you've asked for. Here we go. They're getting ready to cut them loose. Looks like, looks like uh, Kurt's it, closest to us. Yeah, now. it looks like Kurt's closest to us. Right now, the part of the reason that we, we've had a little bit of a delay here and get him trying to get the video stabilized, it's a little bit jumpy right now down there in the woods. Can't tell for the drizzle there or what. what yeah, I'm not sure on. either. Um, it looked like we did see Kurt indeed uh, release Whitey. If that's the case, then pretty much the timer starts up right now. It's just after 10 o'clock tonight. You know, our hope is that these guys, uh, you see them looking down at their GPSs. Yeah, the dogs have been released. Alan will give us an official kickoff time here in a minute. Unofficially, I have it as 10.01 which means if everything goes smoothly tonight, just after midnight, we will have our 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion. Um, of course, you know, we've seen there lots of things that can happen out there. Yep, looks like they're on the move. We've got our, our feed stabilized right now. Just as I say that, it gets a little bit shaky there. What's going through these guys' minds? I mean, Rick, you've won a world championship. Ten before. years ago tonight, I was standing right where they're standing, only in the state of Louisiana. Well, then you weren't standing right where they were standing. Right? Well, yeah. yeah. Give me, ten years ago, the no, ten years sure ago tonight, bring the wire board back. <laughs> um, and I'm telling you, after the first dog opens, the nerves come down. And um, so, you know, I'm not sure if we've got a strike yet or not, but... Uh, uh, your nerves come down, and then it's just another hunt out there. Sure. I'm not sure if we're going to have some audio of this or what, what we got going on. Actually, here. I believe they've got audio. I just don't think we've got it here in the studio for feedback okay. that we can actually hear. Okay. Well, one of the things that makes this final cast here a little bit unique is the fact that guys know each other, all know each other. Yeah. And, and that in itself will help calm your nerves a little bit, you know, uh, versus knowing each other a little bit on that side of it. But, you know, this part of it is kind of nerve-wracking until the dogs get struck and something gets treated and that kind of thing. And then then the next part of it will come when it starts winding down to the end of the hunt and you are still legitimately in it or maybe leading. And then, then, the, then, you know, then the process starts going through your mind on all the do's and the don'ts, you know. But ultimately, in the end, uh, strike them when they open, tree them when they tree. And, and and the chips fall where they fall. All right, guys, I believe we've got a strike. We see that the party's starting to move. Yeah. yeah. If we don't have a strike yet, at least we know that we've got dogs that are out there putting on a hunt now. You know, and that, that last night, I believe, for one of our groups, I was talking to one of our guides, was a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, dogs that caught sit close and didn't really want to move out. And uh, oh. we see these guys are on the move right now, though. The, Sounds like a strike has been confirmed there. We'll probably get some feedback on that here in just a moment. And I believe it sounded like white. From Alan Gingrich, as a matter of fact. Yep, here he comes coming in with our update. We do indeed 
Have news, Alan. Yeah, so we have our first report in. You know, it's still 75 degrees out there. The uh, temp or the temperature, uh, seven mile per hour winds. Uh, they're still having uh, hearing some thunder around there, but the rain has stopped. Their official start time was 10:02. Uh, and it was right after the minute after they released, uh, the first dog struck in was Jenna for 100. Uh, she was 150 yards north of the cast at that time when she struck in. And then right shortly after that, Whitey struck in for 75, and he was 266 yards north of the cast at that time. So that's my first report here, and the world hunt is underway. Good deal. Thank you for that, Alan. And... I've confirmed that we've probably got the best audio that we've had yet in one of these world hunts. So guys, when we come back to the action in a minute, we hear you loud and clear. We're going we're gonna to tone our banner down here just a little bit when we go back to live so you can hear more of what's going on in the field. Um, until we get our live feed reestablished, though. So we've got Jenna struck in here, 400. Uh, that happened pretty quick. Are you surprised? or No. No, I mean, they're on the search for one and, and, and uh, looked like they jumped out. They busted out through there and, and we should be in a great area. We should be, the conditions being 75, I think Alan said 75 degrees. Uh, that, that's not so much fortunate for them, but uh, it is what it is and they're all going to be competing under those conditions. Yeah, and I think we've got our live feed uh, going pretty doggone good here. We should be showing you guys some more action from the field right about now. So guys, we're just going to sit back and watch the action and, and let you guys hear what's going on. I'll let you know, though. I guess it's working. The last bit is working. Yeah, they are. They watched the send off and everything. I have another report for more strike, but no score yet. No score. Let's throw it over to Alan. I think you've got an update for us, Alan. We do. Hawk has struck in for 50, and he was 700 yards to the north of the cast when he struck in, uh, followed shortly by Sleepy for a 25 struck in, and he was 850 yards away from them. Uh, but right after th that, Jenna was treed for 125, and as you can see, the cast is headed towards her already. And Whitey struck right behind her, treed right behind uh, Jenna for 75. And Trevor says they can't tell at the moment whether Whitey and Jenna are together or not, but uh, they've got them on the scorecard for right now for 125 for Jenna and Whitey for 25 or for 75. And that's where they're headed towards Jenna's tree right now. Back to you guys. Hi guys. So, uh, what do you make of that? It sounds to me like we probably going to see Jenna and Whitey together on the same tree, but it also sounds like uh, Sleepy and Hawk have both struck and one 700 yards away, one 850. We may have three different coons going right now. What do you think? It's going to be another walking cast, no <laughs> doubt. And look at the terrain. I mean, it's, it's uh, wide open country right there. That is, that's wonderful, wonderful hunting area right there. Yeah. You can hear the dogs barking too. Yeah, sounds like they're close to getting on them. Uh, let's let you guys listen in on the action and see if you can hear what's going on. Yeah. 
Sir, dead. Jordan says, I never want to shine. Uh, ask to use red only. And that's the other cast member. If you guys see it, make sure you holler. It looks like they're shining. I believe he said Yeah, plus I believe so too. When we see them shine the bright light up there and on the base of the tree up there, they Did you plus them back in? Yeah. Yep, we've got one there. All right, looks like... <laughs> We lost our feed for just a second there, but uh, just before we faded out there on the feed, looks like we do have a successful tree and we've got positive points on the board. Could not tell whether it was Jenna and Whitey both on the same tree there. Did you yeah. guys get a good glimpse? Yeah, yeah, it was both of them. It, it, yeah, it was, yeah, that, that's what we see. The score stands as they called him. He would have got, uh, Whitey would have got a second tree on that. And I can tell you, for, for like for like Tyler, you know that's a now now that's a huge relief off his shoulders because as it stands now, the other dogs are struck, and so they're going to release him. So all that's available on strike is twenty five, mm -hmm. and so you know so really and truly you know for him, uh, that's kind of a you know that that's a one out of the way, and obviously you know uh, Whitey is sitting right there at one hundred and fifty. Uh, we would assume we'll get obviously an update on that, and uh, you know, so it's uh, it's a huge relief getting that first one out of the way. Yeah, and I think Alan's over here right now working to confirm. We don't want to give any information that's not quick. By the way, we are going back to our live feed. There was, they're moving on to uh, toward our second set of dogs as well. I don't think that we have anyone else treed yet, so we'll bring you that when we do. Yeah. Again, feed's coming in and out. You see, we're picking it back up. But we're going to have, in just a moment, some confirmation. But it does appear that we had Jenna make the first strike, first tree. If that's the case, she'll be a plus 225. Whitey, second strike, strike, second to the tree. That'll bring him in at 150 plus. And we've still got 50 pending on the board for Hawk, uh, third strike, and 25 for Sleepy, fourth strike. So... You know, yeah, I agree. You've got to feel like Tyler's got to feel pretty doggone good. The way the score is right now, I mean, you know, you, you, as these handlers are out here, they're keeping track of that score in their mind right now. And we're looking at Sleepy struck for 25 and Hawk treat for, or struck for 50. And Jenna's sitting there with 225 plus. If, if she doesn't make a mistake the rest of the night, we know that Sleepy and Hawk will have to score on two coons to overcome her 225 plus point score. Now, um, Kurt's dog, Whitey, can score on one more and be and go ahead of her as long as she don't make any errors. So that stuff's running through people's minds right now. And like Steve said, Tyler's sitting there, he he's gotta he's gotta feel great about where he's sitting right now early in the cast. Yeah. And I believe Alan has the scores for us, so let's take us over to Alan. Alan, can you give us an update? Yes, Wyatt moaned and found that coon in short order, and, and they'd only used eight minutes in the hunt at that time, so plus up both Jenna and Whitey, so that gives Jenna 225 plus uh, confirmed on the board, and Whitey with 150 plus. So back to you guys. So there, so no other trees have been made? No, no, no calls? No other trees have been made at this point, no. Okay. <clears throat> Good deal. And whenever we have another strike from Jenna or Whitey or hawk or sleepy tree we will take it back to our live action i promise you i know you guys want to see the play-by-play -play, and believe me we won't see the dogs working in the field uh just as bad as you do so we're going to try to keep the talking at a minimum whenever we can go to the live feed right now though as, as they move over as you said it, hawk and sleepy are behind the eight ball they're a little bit they're a little bit behind the eight ball at this point they're um, and, and, and Jenna's got a sizable lead, but it's early. Eight, we're eight or nine minutes into the hunt. Yeah, now. exactly. You know what stood out to me there? Wyatt, 
Yeah. Found the man's coon. Yeah. Found Tyler's coon. Yeah. And I can rest assured, and you can rest assured, that Tyler will do that same thing when he gets to any of the other trees. It's it's just that it's that it's that 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 early on, eight minutes into the hunt, uh, that sportsmanship was already displayed, yep. knowing that he is struck. Hawk is struck for fifty. He knows the score. He very well knows that if there's a if there's a raccoon here and it's found, that this is going to make him. You know, he's going to be two scores down as per to say. Right. But you know, they found it. He found it right away. Showed it, and they're you know obviously going. So that's that's uh, you know that's very commendable, on on the sportsmanship being displayed early on in this hunt. Sure. And I tell you what, I'm looking at the comments here. Uh, we also know that Ashton. Uh, Tyler's wife, she's out there watching it live right now. Uh, I guarantee you, she is just as excited as anybody else out there. Probably yes. more nervous than what he is. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, I, I know, you know that's got to be a great feeling for her, Ash, and we appreciate that you're watching, too. And uh, she, She's got to love you, too, since Jenna was your pick. Well, you know, sometimes you just get lucky. It's, it's far from it's over. Not over. It's, it's not, not over. over. That's no, for sure. That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, Talking to uh, Ferris, you know, if I had a sentimental pick in this uh, in this deal or whatever, I obviously I told Kurt I would give a shout out to him. I would obviously pick Kurt. You know, he's he's been at this game a long time, uh, chasing a world title, and uh, you know, uh, if if I had a sentimental favorite, I, you know, I would I would be tickled pink. I would be tickled if any of them won it. But if I had a sentimental favorite, I'd go with Whitey and Kurt as well. And also, I want to give a big shout out uh, to our girl Bailey creating all these graphics for us here. You see there in the bottom right hand of your screen there, we're gonna try to keep that graphic up as often as we can. Also, when we do throw up the graphic with the scores, it's gonna be the, the scores that have been official. So, you know, right now we know that there's 50 up on the board for Hulk for third strike and 25 for Sleepy. Uh, you're not seeing that because we're throwing up there the scores that have been confirmed on the judge's scorecard, whether they're a positive circle or negative. And here we go. We're back out to the field. So, uh, sound like I heard a dog bark. Let's listen in. I just want to see the issue and walk faster than mine. I completely understand. But you gotta understand where I'm coming from. I've gotta keep it exactly as square as it can with the rules. Um, and the rules state that you're gonna understand where I'm coming from. I've gotta keep it exactly as square as it can with the rules. Um, and the rules state that you're gonna understand where I'm coming from. I've gotta keep it exactly as square as it can with the rules. Yeah. 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 It'll be as far as them reaching. All right, we're having a hard time keeping our feet there. I think we may have even got it stuck, stuck in a little bit of a loop trying to follow the action with you guys at home, too. Uh, so we'll bring it back. But definitely heard some activity out there, heard a bark. Uh, Something's going on out there. Hopefully, Alan will bring us some information here as he gets it in from the judges. Yep. Oh, it sounds like Alan, right on time, has an important update for us. So, Alan, let us know what's going on. What were we watching then? Yeah, I do have just a short update. Uh, they have the eight minutes running on Sleepy right now, or on uh, Sleepy and uh, the other hound, both of them, I guess. But they show Sleepy to be over a mile away right now. And that's what you see the guys waiting or standing there waiting right now. So back to you again, Jay Paul. Thank you for that update, Alan. Okay, so we've got Sleepy, eight minutes running right now on that. What do you guys make of that? Well, we know we can hear him over a mile. Yeah, we've heard him. And it doesn't surprise it doesn't surprise me with with hunting in his style. It doesn't surprise me on that. You know, uh, on Thank that you, side of it. You know, it's running on Hawk as well. You know, uh, yeah, not the ready. Issue, so it's running on Sleepy and Hawk. Got your dog. All right, here we go. So we don't know at this point in time. We'll just listen in. Yep. That sounds like a lot less than a mile away to me, guys. 
Yeah, I'd say we've got some extra action there that we haven't been reported yet. Yeah, I have a feeling that we've got another strike. Well, they, I, it looks to me like they just released the dogs, the ones that was on the leash. I got you. They were barking on lead, it sounds like, right there then. All right, so they're cutting Jenna and Whitey back loose. Yeah. Either the strike has been broke or the eight got them. We don't know. I'm sure we'll get an update on that. Well, while we're waiting on that update, so explain what that meant that, that for those who might not know that the eight minutes was running on them. Okay, so what happens is, is when you come off of a scoring situation like that, you walk a certain distance to where the handlers are comfortable to turn back loose. Then at that point in time, one of them dogs has to bark in the eight minutes in order for you to release. Okay, that would break. That would break the. Basically, well, we just heard Jenna strike. Yeah, go ahead. That would basically break the strike. It would, oh, it would break the, the the eight minutes running on them, and then you. They can release. cut loose again. So they can cut loose, which uh, they've obviously done. So let's take it back to them. It sounds like Jenna struck. We'll let you guys listen in. Whitey struck him. Whitey struck 75. Oh, we just heard so, it. Whitey struck back in right and, behind Jenna and, for 75. And he said Whitey struck for 75. So the eight must have got the other two. So I would say Jenna probably got struck back in for, well, we don't know. We'll get an update. But he definitely said Whitey struck 75. That. Yeah. That means Jenna had to strike for 125. Well, either that or one of the other dogs could have been. Yeah. But yeah, he definitely. I'm 100. I apologize. 100. And I can tell you this. Uh, Tyler was wanting to keep that thing at a quarter. Right. So unofficially, uh, what we're seeing on the board is uh, Jenna would have been restruck back in for 100, and Whitey is restruck back in for 75. And the and eight minutes, the eight minutes caught uh, Hawk and Sleepy. Yeah. So they, we have a whiteboard behind us, and they're updating that board. So that's what it appears uh, to us that what has happened. Yeah, and you that's know, you know that's really a, you know that's just an unfortunate break, and it happens. It happens in these hunts. That's just an unfortunate break, you know. Uh, when them dogs got treated, you know, we don't know, I mean, they shared on the directions on which way they went, but, you know, assuming that they wasn't all in the same direction, you know, they could have been to the right when they walked down there to score uh, Jenna and Whitey, maybe walking a little bit away from them dogs, going back to where they heard him. And uh, like they said, if he struck at 800 and then he was a mile away, it's just, you know, depending which way they go. But that doesn't put them out of it. They, they can walk back into hearing or dog get back into hearing as well. Yeah, and you know, we, we made the comment a while ago that uh, you know they they could hear him almost a mile away, but they kept they could still be on that raccoon. As a handler, Steve, where would you want to have Jenna struck in at at this point? I can guarantee you that as a handler, I'll be praying that I hear one of them other dogs open to get a release back and keep the strikes at a quarter. Yeah. Because now, now it really it kind of opens back up, you know, depending on how it gets struck. She obviously got struck back in for 100, but for me, I don't want to be struck for 100 at this point. Right. right. You know. Uh, yeah, because that's 100 that could become a can, negative. It can, right. it can sure. become a negative. And so, Liability. you know, so now it kind of changes the, the scope of things a little bit. But, you know, and, and understand this, if the eight got them dogs, you know what I mean? You know, we know the conditions down here. I know they scored a coon right out of the truck, but now he's going to be sweating bullets on that the time doesn't get put on them. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully we'll have our live feed back up here where we can take you back to the field in just a second, guys. So last night you made the comment as the, uh, or Thursday night when, when we got finished of how many circle trees you saw come across the desk on the scorecards. Um, what a relief it was to score on a coon right out of the truck tonight and see Oh, it. that was um, huge. That was a huge relief. I guarantee you, uh, for them guys, it was it, even for the guys that maybe aren't hearing their dogs now when they get back into hearing, because it obviously is showing them that, hey, the game is moving, you know. And, uh, you know, so for, for that aspect of it, you know, that, that's huge. And, you know, one thing that's pretty awesome, uh, and we'll touch on it just real briefly, they put the eight minutes on them now in, you know, January, the first set changes. And which yeah. is gonna, that's another rule change that come in to where they can pull the dogs off and flip them. Recast. So, yep. yeah, recast. Well, so. we've got Alan back over here beside us. Alan, can you give us an update? I think we've got footage just about to come back in, too. So quickly, Alan, what's going on? Yeah, well, the, the 
fun thing that we have tonight is live some live feed from the field and it can be a little bit confusing we're doing a little bit of assuming uh, we're hearing a dog bark but the eight is on the dogs but i can tell you just to, to confirm that dog you heard was uh, was whitey was on the lead strap while they uh, had the eight running on sleepy who was over a mile away at the time but unfortunately the eight minutes caught both sleepy and hawk so you're going to minus uh, hawk 50 and sleepy 25 on their strike then after that, they recast Jenna and Whitey. Let me back up one, uh, just a second here. There was 18 minutes gone in the hunt at that point when they cut uh, Jenna and Whitey again. And I have another uh, uh, update after that. Shortly after they were cut, you can strike Jenna back in for 100. Strike positions opened up, and Whitey struck right behind her for 75. So that's where we are right now uh, uh, with that score update. So back to you guys. Great. Thank you, Alan. As you can see, uh, we've updated the score on our graphic there. I think that we're fixing to go back to the field, so whenever that comes up, we will shut up and let you guys watch a little bit. They're working hard to restore it very quickly. It's going to be hard for him, you know. It's going to be hard. <laughs> um, but I want to touch a little bit more on the circle points. What percentage of the trees uh, on the scorecards come across Thursday night? Just to give the viewers at home how important the rule change for the new thermal imaging going to be uh, happening after the first of the year. Uh, think about all the circle trees that come across here. In your opinion, Steve, what, if, if those trees had coons in them, what would the thermal imaging do for that? The thermal imaging is going to be huge. I can tell you because, you know, we've obviously, I've obviously had experience with it. And, you know, f for the viewers, the thing about the thermal imaging is, is, you can't score the raccoon off the thermal imaging, but at least it points you in the direction where to search to be able to find it. Right. And uh, I, um, Jeff Rickless, who handled the hobo dog, was sharing that they was treed on a smaller tree, and uh, they had searched a tree for about three or four minutes. They'd searched a tree for three or four minutes, and he just he thought to himself, "This thing is going to be is empty." And uh, you know, all of a sudden, one of the handlers found it. In a spot, wasn't a very big one, you know, because obviously, as you know, we have young, you know, young uh, raccoons. And he had his mind made up that he just thought that, you know, this thing's probably going to get minus. And uh, the, the, the thermal imaging does two things. It helps you locate where it's at. You still have to see it. But it also, uh, I'm going to say from my recollection, uh, well, well over 60% of the trees was circled. This weekend. And that's being a very that, that's being very conservative <clears throat> on that, you know. So so you know uh, on, on that percentage. So that's going to change. That's going to change on on when, when on the thermal imaging to put us in the right sure. situation. There's Guys, I think we've got video restored here now. So let's let everybody listen in. I don't hear a dog creak. Right there. There's a bar. Another one. Are you walking there? That one right there, Bowen. 
All right, so guys, we're watching it go down there in the field, uh, get a little bit shaky, but luckily Alan has joined us back. Alan, give us, let us know what's going on here. You hear the dog? Yeah, well, they're running the eight minutes again on the dogs right now. Uh, all the dogs have shut up at the moment. Uh, but they've uh, they've got a couple dogs out stretched out a little bit. Sleepy right now is 0 0.96. Uh, Jenna is at 572 yards. Whitey's a little over 500 yards away. Hawk he's out 1.13 miles out from the cast right now. So that's all I have at the moment. Back to you guys on the panel. All right, guys. So we've got a judge and a couple of assistants. It looks like they're all together there in one group. Is there a circumstance under which they'd split up? Only when somebody calls tree and we would have split trees would it, would anybody be splitting up. So they're going to stay together as a group. Here we go. Let's listen in. Looks like they're moving fast. Right there. You see this straight through. It's not mine. It's the, not mine. It's the bark. Mine ain't been treated there since he ate, got it. Oh, yeah. chop. I hear it right there. You struck and tree hawk. Struck and tree hawk. Hold up the gather. We got a time for it. Uh, Pre time's working. Uh, so you get in there, well, he's, he's in a broad open field. There's, there's nothing but six trees where he's at. Actually, yeah, and, and no, move down that way. But it's going to get rough on that. Sounds like Hawk has struck and tree. We'll get. Some official word from Alan here in a minute, but that would be 50 for the strike, assuming the eight minutes not ran out yet on Jenna and Whitey, and 125 for the trip. And assuming just after uh, Alan's update, you know, him being 1.13 seconds of a mile, he's got to have a good mouth. He's got to, you know, got to sound good. So they're, they're closing in on him. Um, <laughs> Now, you know, the, you know, as that, that cast gets spread out, you know, like that, that, that could in, in tune, we don't know the directions he's in, but you would, so one would have to think for the handler of Sleepy uh, that this is going to, this could be the break that he needed to get into where he could hear him, uh, assuming that, you know, he, he may be treated or whatever in that, whatever, general, direction. In that direction. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you, this is a situation, too, where, you know, as you were saying, yeah, if you were... In Tyler's place, you wouldn't necessarily want Jenna to strike in so fast because if that clock runs out on Jenna and Sleepy, I mean, I apologize, the struck the clock runs out on Jenna and Hawk has indeed struck and treed, that would be 175 to the positive, bringing uh, still with negative 50 on there, 125 to the positive overall. Jenna loses 100 now. Not necessarily, not at this point. Um, right now, as long as Hawk stays barking, he's the only one in the cast right now that has to be barking to keep the strike points alive. So um, the, the eight, as long as we're hearing Hawk bark, the eight will never be applied to any of the adults. Right, Yeah. but it still could be applied. Yeah. If the eight minutes ever catches uh, Jenna, then yeah, we, we've got a tight ball in us. Kind of what Steve was referring to. We, the last thing that uh, Tyler would want to do would be strike for a hundred. Yeah, he would want to get struck for a quarter because it's a lot less you have to protect. Even seventy-five. Yeah, you know, even seventy-five. But you're right. Yeah, and Alan Gingrich has thrown it up onto the board. Uh, so we're going to send it over to him as we see the uh, official score pop up there. That indeed Hawk has struck fifty. It's just hanging there right now, along with one twenty-five for Tree. And Alan is stepping in. Alan, uh, tell us what's going on out there. What report are you getting? 
Yeah, so they did eventually hear Hawk at 1.36 miles to the northeast of the cast, and he was actually uh, struck and treed at that point. So the eight was broke, and now they're uh, advancing towards Hawk. Good deal. Thank you, Alan. So, Jay Paul, in that terrain right there, how, how long will it take them to walk one point? So, there, so it's a mile and a quarter, yeah. or almost a mile almost, and a half. Yeah. yeah, it's a mile and a quarter for sure. So, you know, the great thing about where they're at is flat. We're not climbing hills. We're not dropping off the side of a mountain. And for the most part, a lot of this is duck hunting country down there. A lot of these hardwoods guys that hunt them down there, they flood it during the winter. They keep the, the underbrush cut back in a lot of these areas. You can see these guys, they're not struggling through vines or thick cover at all. <laughs> now, here's the other thing. A dog's a mile and a quarter away. I don't know of a piece of private ground that has woods this big down there, and I know every single one of them, I promise you. I don't know one of them that... So they're going to step out into the field here at some point, you're thinking. Yeah, well, no, that, that's over 1.3 miles. Let's lay out here and listen to what's going on as they walk. Now, a lot of these, the boundary line can be a ditch or a creek. So they could come into some obstruction. Let's listen in and see if we can figure out where they're at and what's going on. This is Levy for the... Yeah, so Levy ain't gonna mess up the sound or anything, is it? No, sir. We good. need to walk around. We walk straight. When we get ready to walk, we walk straight. Yes, sir. Uh, Just walk, walk right around here. Walk it. I, I would think uh, too that uh, uh, judging by the time they turn loose, it should be about a quarter of the hunt being gone. Who you know? Uh, uh, somewhere around the 35 minutes of hunt time used. Could you tell if they can still hear a dog? Well, they're advancing and. Uh, I would think if they didn't, they wouldn't. They'd they would stay not. There. Yeah, they shouldn't. By the way, for the official timer, we're 35 minutes in, so we've still got an hour and 25. It's still wide open. Uh -huh. They're like a slide, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> Boy, that is train right there. See, the I mean, I that, that keep up with, yeah. We could keep up with those guys for a few more minutes. It looks like just beautiful walking, beautiful hunting. Hey, guys, is this good right here? Just like the good place. Just take it like Take it like I'm Got me? I'm not treeing. I'm just saying you can hear me. I hear a dog right through there. Yeah, okay, as long as you hear me. That's me behind, ain't it? Yep. I hear Waddy back behind. I expect it. Who's working on Hawk Street? Let me know if you hear me. Okay. Santa tree. Wow. Yeah, wow. Let me know if you hear me. Okay. Santa tree. Santa tree. Santa tree. That's you there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, Say again. You got, you got me back over here. Hold on just a second. So we got Where are you Jenna at? tree for 125 through here. Is this yes, brick? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, two's running on him. So where you at? I hear Whitey back behind us. Is it Whitey? Yes, sir. Can you listen for my clue, though, please? You got him now. The only dog I hear treating is Jenna. Yeah, 
turn the ball. Right? Well, look, I'm saying my best, but. Hey, Jack, you got any more questions for That's, That's me. That's his That's thing. Can, I, can I strike my dog now? Yes. Yeah, strike sleepy. Sleepy struck. Yeah. Oh, minus moving to Jenna. Yes. Got a good quality video going here, folks, but we're trying to bump it up just a little bit better. So we're going to lose it for just a second here. We should be back really quick. There you go. Definitely a little better picture there. in the comments, you see a lot of these guys wearing chaps. There aren't rattlers down there. Okay, there's plenty of comments. You good on everything, boy? Oh, sorry. And mosquitoes. By, by looking on the board that they just put up here, um, if the video is not clear, uh, it appears that Hawk, that the two minutes to Hawk, and Listen, he was minus 125, so we would assume that they're walking toward Jenna right now. And by Hawks, 25. That's what they're in. I got you. Let me listen just one more, just one more time, and I won't stop you again. Tree sleepy. Sleepy tree. Yeah. All right, so we know that we've got Sleepy Treed and Yeah, they're headed to Jenna right now. All right, so we've got Sleepy Tree to Hawks 125 to come down. Let's go to Alan. Alan, tell us what's going on. Yeah, obviously with the live feed again, they're just a little bit ahead of what uh, is being reported back in, but I can confirm, and you guys were pretty much spot on there. Uh, Jenna was treed at uh, 0.89 to the south uh, east of the cast for 125. Uh, meanwhile, the two was put on Hawk there uh, at the 38 uh, minute mark in the hunt. And then uh, Sleepy was uh, Sleepy was struck for 25, and he was now 330 yards from the cast off to the west. Uh, but unfortunately, the two did catch Hawk, so he is minus, and you guys are right. They are, in fact, walking to Jenna right now. And that's uh, all I have at the very moment. Back to you guys. All right, so Sleepy right now is, it would appear, treed for 125, because obviously he's on a different 
tree than Jenna, but uh, they're headed toward Jenna right now. As long as we've got good video, well, we've lost it right there. As long as we have good video, guys, we're gonna let y'all listen in and we're gonna stay quiet. Uh, we've lost our feed. We've lost our feed for just a second there. Hopefully, we'll bring it back. So, as it stands now, to give you a recap, uh, we, uh, Hawk just lost the 125. He fell to the two. Sleepy is treed, uh, 25 on the strike, 125 on the tree. Jenna, 100 on the strike, hanging on the board, 125 on the tree, and they're headed toward Jenna, and Whitey still has struck in for 75 that's sitting there on the board with about an hour and 15 minutes left in the hunt. So if you're wondering, we've got about an hour and 15 minutes. We're about 45 minutes in. Let's take it back to the field. All right, guys, we know you want to hear the action, but we've got another update. So, Alan, tell us what's going on. I can just kind of confirm what you guys were talking about. Sleepy, as you heard, uh, he was declared tree to the north of the cast, about 375 yards for 125. Uh, on a separate tree, uh, but they can still hear Whitey uh, opening to the south of the cast as they are headed uh, towards Jenna still. So that's all I have at the moment. So at some point, though, uh, one of your assistant judges will probably break off with uh, with uh, Jeremiah and head towards Sleepy at this point? I would assume so. Yeah. I would assume you're, you're correct on that. Chris. And, he, and yeah. he, he come back into the cast quite a ways yeah, to get it, back in within here. And it sounds like uh, Whitey is still hot on the trail of something they have heard Whitey, so he continues to vocalize. And well, you know, to your point, Rick, too, you know, he had treed Hawk way through there, and so it naturally the cast had drifted that way. So that, that probably could have played a factor into them as well, mm -hmm. because obviously Hawk was farther than what, than what uh, Sleepy was, and then, you know, probably got lucky, and, you know, got that. But, you know, uh, with 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 uh, Tyler Tree and Jenna leading the cast, he, he's you know obviously he has a lot of confidence in his dog, and I, I did ask him today, uh, you know, g g give us one word, uh, give me one word on uh, what would describe why you think you have an advantage to win this world hunt tonight. And I asked all these guys this, but when I asked Tyler this, he said accuracy. He goes, uh, she's been really good uh, about accurate. I don't have to second guess myself to put her on the card, and he just showed that just now, you yeah. know. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of a couple of his, you know, Jeremiah and uh, um, Wyatt kind of confirmed that a little bit, you know, on saying that, you know, that's what was, was one of her strong points. And looking by her card this weekend, she didn't make a lot of trees that didn't have that, you know, that didn't, uh, that was a bad tree. Sure, looks like we've got action back. Pretty good feed there, too. What kind of field is that, Jay Paul? What would you say they're walking across there? Is there something planted there or not? Yeah, or not? I would say that's a food plot right now in that area. Predominantly, you're going to see uh, soybeans and some corn, corn and beans, but predominantly beans. That's ankle high stuff right there. That's got to be a food plot because it, it's green, so it's not you know, the only thing that would have been harvested at this point down there uh, would be. The corn or soybeans still haven't defoliated yet. I mean, it 
I have a pretty good idea where they're at right now, too. It's going to be really, really hard. Yep, we just lost just lost our feed. So where they're at down there, um, they're in an area that's heavily hunted. It, agriculture fields all around, particularly to the uh, north of their position, but to the east, west, and south, you're talking about timber, and most of it is set up for hunting. A lot of it for duck hunting, some of it for deer hunting, a lot of food plots down there. I mean, they're going to be in an area where they should have really good walk and they should be able to get to these dogs. You know, my only fear is that some of those areas, the boundaries, the property lines are, are ditches or creeks that they might encounter. But even then, as dry as it's been this time of the year, they're not going to have any trouble negotiating it. Although we do come back to the chaps that they're all wearing. Let me tell you, there are cotton mouths down there bigger around than your own. But... Are they out this time of the year? They are out this time of the year, definitely. But, you know, they're through mating for the year, so they're not nearly as aggressive. And here we go. We got them back again. Let's see if we can hear what they're saying. There's also a lot of logging roads throughout a lot of those woods. Just walk to him or back up. I would walk right there. That'd be too fast. What was Kurt saying? I didn't quite make that out. I'm assuming he heard his dog back that way towards the way he faced, but I didn't quite. Either that or the one of the judges maybe going with a backup hand and the backup judge maybe going with a Jeremiah. Jeremiah to go handle sleepy. Obviously I think they had what had to walk like twenty eight nine or something. Yeah, I think that's what Alan says, so they're walking almost nine tenths of a mile. And it does appear that they're walking out across the open field. The terrain is perfect for trying to move around quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've picked an excellent area down there. Uh, we've lost our feed for a second, guys. So, sounds like as you suggested that uh, there are, are splitting up one of the assistant judges. Maybe. Yeah, they should. I mean, uh, you know, we're not standing out there, assuming Sleepy's still treed. That, like Steve yeah. said, that uh, backup judge and, and uh, Jeremiah are probably making their way towards him. Mm -hmm. Rick, let me ask you something while we got a minute here. You're in Tyler's shoes. You know, b being in these hunts like this. You know, she's treed through there or whatever, knowing that, you know, this, there's actually a lot weighing on here because for the other three, they're thinking of themselves, if, we, if this is a squirrelable tree and we, in fact, do find the evidence, uh, now it's a really tough. But, but on the other hand, in Tyler's shoes, you know, as a handler, you know, kind of give him a little bit of insight on maybe what his thinking was on, you know, going ahead and taking this. Well... He, he, with Hawk taking a tree minus at, in this time frame of when Jenna gets treed, um, he may have been, he, you know, he might have got the five minute stationary rule put on him. I, I don't believe that he did, but it might have been running through his mind. Well, I'm going to have to tree anyways. Um, let's just tree and, and, and get it over with. But, you know, sitting out there today, like you said, the confidence level that he has in his dog uh it is is very high they would just very, oozed out I mean, yeah it just... it's it's very high and and uh the only thing running through my mind if i would be walking in there to my dog as he is is that you're praying it's not a blank you're yeah. praying it's not a slick tree where where no coon can be found and you can obviously see that no, no coon is there 
and you walk out of there with zero points coming coming off of this tree. If he can if he can put a coon in this tree when they get in there and, and, and see the coon, um, boy, it, it's it's going to be a battle for for second, third, and fourth looking at the scoreboard. Yeah. Yep. Um, if, if he comes out of there with 450 plus coming off that tree, it it's a sizable lead for him. If he comes off there circle points, uh, he can he can breathe a sigh of relief. But if he walks out of there with with minus points. Um, he's actually going to be sitting behind Whitey now, and uh, you know, and 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 then we're headed to Sleepy, who can, if he's got a coon, he would. Then he's Jenna, right it. Jenna yeah. would drop down to third, but yeah. it's all speculation. But but you asked me what's going through his mind. Yeah. Um, I would think too uh, to that point, you know, with Whitey sitting at 150, and now as we know now because of the live feed, these dogs are split up in totally opposite directions. Right. And if Whitey gets treed and him sitting over there treed and Whitey does get treed, now that puts him out of sequence because they go over and score Whitey and he has a scoreable tree that has a coon. Now he takes the lead and now you got to hope that you can hear Jenna. So I, I understand that, that part of it, you know. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot of variables coming into play with them split up like this. And by the way, for you guys that are watching this, we have completely lost our feed. We're not sitting here making you listen to us talk uh, when you could be looking at the dog. So our feed is completely down. We're working as hard as we can to restore it where you can see what's going on. In the meantime, when we do get updates, Alan will bring them to us right now. Uh, he doesn't know any more than we do, so we really don't have any updates to bring you from Alan or a feed. So, you know, we're going to sit up here and break it down a little bit while we have this opportunity. And, and I've got an observation here on this, too. You know, if if I'm headed over to Jenna right now, obviously my best case scenario is as soon as they shine to see eyes. But the, the, the I think I would be almost as happy to see a tree that is just absolutely wrapped up in foliage and vines or has a big hollow in it too. Because a circle's not going to hurt you nearly as bad as a slick. Right. What would you guys say about that? Well, that's exactly what's, what's going through his mind, you know. Um, and uh, So we got eight minutes to shine, you know, when we get in there. And if it's a big tree with a lot of foliage in it, we're going to shine the full eight, no doubt. We're, we're kind of back on live feed here. All right, so we're coming up on, on a tree, I'm told, as well, not just on the live feed. Let's see what's happening. Amazed at the terrain of how how they can get through where they're at there. And judging by the time they turn loose, we're roughly getting halfway through the tunnel. Yep. They're flying by. Yep. Yeah, but if you if you're out there uh, white with hawk right now, you're thinking. You slow this down. <laughs> yeah. No, it's only halfway over, and I still got the second half to go. Yeah. I told you guys at the beginning, I promised we would not see a dead cast. Yeah. So are the bugs not bad out there? Mosquitoes uh, uh, have to be absolutely well, red. I see right these now. guys in t-shirts, you'd think they'd be carrying them off. They're kind of like the flies are in here a little bit. They, oh, we heard a dog. Yeah, we heard a dog. No, that's the kind of place when you watch, see naked and afraid in there. All huddled up by the fire trying to keep the smoke away. <laughs> The mosquitoes are that bad. Huh? They're pretty darn bad. bad. Nobody's down the tree now. Don't down the tree. 
All right, unfortunately, we've, we've lost it there. Yeah. So they're at the tree right now. We know that at Jenna's tree, uh, getting ready to start the eight-minute shine time. She sounds like a sweetheart in their tree, yeah. don't she? Uh, I, you, <laughs> know, and, and, you know, for, for Tyler, the fact that he's got his hands on her, I guarantee you, that's the first relief. Yep. You know, sure. uh, he's got her handled now, and, you know, not, now you, you know, go into the scoring mode of it. So, uh, you know, hopefully they can get the live feedback up, and we can watch some of that as it unfolds. Sure, and but, if uh, not, the, we'll have Alan. I'm sure yeah. with an update pretty quickly. Yeah, but so but it's a hu I guarantee on Tyler, it's a huge relief that you know, got her handled and, and and ready to go score this tree. So everybody's shining the tree again, right? You think the sportsmanship is still there? No doubt. I don't think I don't think it'll leave. I, I not not by was sitting with these guys this afternoon, and and uh, I think that uh, you know I, I think that you're going to see maximum effort uh, to uh, and and understand this. Uh, there's a lot online. Jenna's the only female in this cast, so she's automatically going to win the the highest scoring opposite sex you know, or world champion or world champion. Right. And so the three male dogs that are in here are obviously all tree and walkers. So there's a lot at stake here because you know for the highest scoring opposite sex. Right. You know, and obviously highest scoring tree and walker male. So uh, there's they're, they're thinking about that in the back of their mind. If we don't, you know, if I don't win it. You know, at least to, to wrap that side of it up. So Sure. And it sounds like even though we don't have a feed, we do have an update from Alan. Alan, tell us what's going on, buddy. Yeah, so you guys mentioned uh, one of the uh, judges going with uh, Jeremiah to Sleepy, and that is correct. Mr. Troy Salyers, one of the assistant judges, went with him. And they broke off, branched off at 46 minutes gone in the hunt. And then I do have the latest update here at 59 minutes gone in the hunt is when they reach Jenna's tree, and that's where they are right now, as you can see. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Alan. All right, so guys, where does that put us? Well, it puts us wanting to know what the heck's up in this tree right now. If, if, we're gonna, but, if, know, she, if, if she's going to close the door on them here or close it some, yeah. Um, if she's going to be the she's going to be a big big lead here if she's got a coon here that they see. Yeah. I'd venture to say if they don't find it and it's a circle tree, I would venture to say that the whole entire eight minutes will be used shining sure. this tree. If not, yeah. it should be. And a lot be. of squalling yeah. will go it, in yeah. at the end. Well, and it and it we we are it's a timed event. Yeah. You true. know, and and, and and you know in that situation, you know they got there with a, roughly an hour left to go in the hunt, mm -hmm. and uh, assuming that you know that you know just is just throwing a, scenarios out there, uh, you know that's eight more minutes that's going by on the hunt. You know, yep. so. And, it, it, it's eight more minutes gone by that she's in the lead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. I mean, the person that, that has the most to lose after Jenna, obviously, if, it, if she gets negatives, but assuming that, that they do find the coon in that tree, the person that really has the most to lose and the dog that has the most to lose here to me is Hawk. Well, he's got an uphill battle if we see a coon here. He, he's, got, well, he's got to beat everybody. You know, at this point, he's he's he's. I mean, got he's six twenty-five behind. behind the lead. If we yeah. got a coon here, yeah, yeah, is that fairly yeah, insurmountable? Oh, hold on though, we've got a score update. All right, Alan, tell us about it. Yeah, I can just confirm that they found Jenna's coon right away, so she's sitting at four fifty plus. Wow. I think it was Frank Johnson that said this on the movie Chisholm, Summer's Over. <laughs> well, I tell you, um, you know, we were just talking. And, so. and Burkholder's in the lead on the pick'em. Yeah. <laughs> Burkholder's well, looking really, good. I mean, I mean, but why do you still got some towards Dangle? Like, no. <laughs> but um, so there's our scenario there. And as soon as Alan come over with, we know he's that got quick. an update that quick. We know that game has been seen yep. and, uh, and, and the right kind. So... Now you're looking at it over 450. Now, Steve, um, now we've got that rule, uh, the the uh, handler option rule. We've got Sleepy Tree back behind us. Yeah. What's Tyler going to do? What do you suspect I, Tyler will do at this point? Well, you know, I think Tyler's going to go on ahead and cut her loose. I do. But I can tell you for me, at this point in the game, I'm keeping mine on the lead. Yeah. I'm keeping mine on the lead because at this point in time, one of them, even even Whitey, who's sitting at 150 and struck back in for 75, you know, he could get potentially get 200, so that puts him at 350. 
Right. You know what I mean? And and just knowing the dogs in this cast, and, and understand this, these handlers know each other's tendency of their dogs. And I would probably keep mine on the lead until we scored a tree for Whitey. I agree no, with that. Knowing the dogs, yeah. knowing the dogs, because obviously uh, in the beginning when they cut them loose, uh, Jenna and Whitey treated Coon together. And assuming that if it went to that, there's a very good chance if there was a third coon that Whitey would score uh, when you release them together, that very good chance that they could tree another one together. Sure. Right. So, you know, but, you know, knowing Tyler a little bit that I do or whatever, uh, you know, I don't know if that scenario is going through his mind, but I can tell you with a 300 point lead and everything going to be getting struck back in for a quarter, another dog treed, I would probably play my options on, because at this point in time, you, a person would have to think, unless I pull a minus, make a mistake or she makes a mistake, it's going to be extremely tough. Judging by how the whole weekend went, you know, it's going to be extremely tough for something to come past me. So with mine on the lead, I know I'm not going to get penalized. Right. Sure. You know, so it'll be interesting to uh, it'll be interesting. This is where this is where as a handler, you have to start thinking, you know, we all want to feel like we're really confident in what we turn loose, but there, that, that's why there's rules out there. It's a team and event. It's, it's a team. And Jenna has has really done a well, great performance as oh. far as a team member. Sure. And Tyler's called her exactly for what she's done. But at this point right now, Tyler has to be, you know, you, you've got to, it's got to run through your mind. What can I do as part of this team to secure what I've got? Yeah, and um, I'm thinking that uh, he's. I'm thinking he should be considering holding her on the leash, whether he does or not. Um, you know, it's entirely up to him, and we won't know here for a few minutes. But uh, anyway, so the entire cast is probably headed back towards Sleepy, and uh, we'll get a score on him here shortly. Yeah, and, and I tell you, I agree with you completely, Steve. If I'm, you know, out there with Jenna, I'm in his shoes. I'm going to hold. I'm going to wait and see what happens with Whitey. Worst case scenario, you know, for Jenna, I mean, you, anybody putting positive points on the board is a threat. Worst case scenario, though, positive points come on the board for Whitey, but you cut loose together. You know these dogs will hunt together. They, str they struck, boom, boom. They treed together before. Nothing bad, to me, can come out of Jenna and Whitey being together if I'm Jenna's handler. Well, that's kind of where me and Steve are sitting right now. You know, that's that's what that's what would be running through our mind at this point out there. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you, right now, if he wasn't nervous before, he may. You know, even though you have a four fifty, you know, you're sitting where you're sitting at. I guarantee you, the nerves are ramping up because, in the back of your mind, that's almost becoming a reality, and it's not. But it's there. You know, that's in the back of your mind. Sure. All right. So we've got an update, folks. Alan, what you got? Well, as you guys know about our rules here, uh, Mr. Compton had the he had the option to uh, to recast or hang on to Jenna, but obviously he must have a lot of confidence in her, and he Lord. chose to <laughs> chose to cut her loose. But they are walking to Sleepy, and Jenna is back in action again. Yeah, and they have a nine tenths of a mile walk over to uh, to get to Sleepy. Yeah, and wow! If you're one of Thank the you, other Alan. three handlers out there, you are tickled to death that Tyler recasted her. Yeah. Cause now and he did he, exactly what all three of us said we wouldn't well, do. So, hey, he knows yeah, something we um, don't. I'm going to trust the handler. He, he, the confidence level, and like we said, the confidence yeah. level is just through the roof on, her, on him and her. Yeah. And, you know, hey, you know, obviously we're not out there, you know. Um, it's, it's one of the beauties of what we do here is uh, it's awesome being a backup quarterback. <laughs> That's what I say. You know what I'm saying? It really is because you know we've been in them situations and in, in, in hunting in a lot of these hunts. The next day you dissect in your mind. You know you always you know you may second guess yourself at the time, but the day after one of these hunts is over, uh, you always sit there and, and, and dissect what went through your mind. And you know uh, he may have cut her loose, and tomorrow he may say, you know I should have maybe kept her only. But I you know you can't second guess. Uh, 
him. You sure. Know. And, you know, there is another way to look at this, too. We've been seeing in the comments here, you know, that I've been looking at throughout the evening. Uh, you know, we're looking at it in that we want to be as conservative as we possibly can be. And we would sit back and we would protect our lead in this situation. But, you know, the other school of thought is. Hey, let, let's be aggressive. Let's not play conservative. Let's be aggressive. Let's cut her loose. Let's put another nail in the coffin. Let's, you know, I've got faith that my dog's going to go out there, make game, get to the tree. Let's slam the door shut on the rest of these guys, you know. You know, it, put and, out the and, fire calling the dogs, if you will. You know, and the other thing is, is if she, hypothetically, if she gets struck back in for a quarter, that's just another dog that will keep that strike at a quarter. At a quarter. You know what I mean? Right. So it doesn't open it back up to go back up to 100. So. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Here we go. We've got another update. Guys, sorry to interrupt you, Steve, but uh, let's take it over to Alan since we don't have a live feed right now. Yeah, Trevor is reporting that they fear Hawk has pretty much checked out. I'm, I'm trying to communicate, or communicate to him, asking him how far out he is. But he's been in and out of service a little bit. He's that far out, so they fear uh, they fear he's he's checked out at the moment. But uh, it seems like Jenna is out looking for coons tonight. She is struck back in for a quarter, and she's looking for it right now. Wow, wow! You know, guys, you are the experts here. But to me, to be struck. If we back were the in, experts, Jay Paul. We would be out there. Oh, come on! You are the you are you are the John Madden now. I am the only one of three up here that has won the world hunt. But, but <laughs> that's oh, true. And, and we we get reminded we get yeah. reminded about it every every time when that we're together. When they ran through that forty three pictures of the, I looked I, for you all over I that. Didn't, and I never, didn't even see it. Well, I missed it. I missed yeah, it. Yeah, you walked away right when they got to mine. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. Now, in the comments, you have been referred to, in case you didn't know, as the Madden of the coon hunting world. Yeah. The new commentator. Mad Adam. Is my, yeah. Mad so, Adam, more like it. Yeah. So here's what I was saying, and I want you to put on I would say being struck back in for 25 is a really good place to be, too. That's the only place you can be at right. this point. B but, you know, being there... Negative 25 when you're 450 the positive isn't going to hurt you nearly That's as a bad as a negative. Right. Right. Yeah, she, yeah. She's open. You know, I I would think that he waited until the third bark before he struck her, but knowing Tyler, he might have struck her on the first bark. Uh, may have. But, um, yeah, he's, he's sitting there with that 25, and Steve made a good point. Um, you know, now he she's going to be keeping that strike at 25, at 25. for quite a while now yeah. because – you know, we may be hearing Whitey barking somewhere. Looks like Alan's back again. Sure. Well, let's let's hear it from Alan. <laughs> well, Trevor did report back to me on the Hawk, and unfortunately, he uh, service came back in at over two miles for Hawk. So that's a long ways out. So he has stretched it out. So I understand their concerns with him. Back to you guys. All right. Now that's something that I 100% want to address right now two miles out from the rest of the cast, you're in that position. Are you going after your dog? Are you calling a night? Are you withdrawing? I mean, what's going through your mind right now? I've had enough. I don't, need, I don't need to practice. And, uh, you know, he's that far out. You probably, I don't, I don't know how this, how this scenario would play out if, uh, if the judges, I think it would be up to the judges. I can check with Alan on that, but would the judges have to give him permission, Alan, to leave the cast to go handle his dog, or would he have that option on his own? To withdraw and go. Withdraw and I, go I think him? he could withdraw um, and go get his dog. I know for me in that spot, uh, judging on the circumstances, there's roughly 45 minutes left to go in the hunt. I'm going to go get my dog as quick as I can because at this point in time, uh, you know, the, the, the chance of me, you know, us hearing him and, and even at two miles, you're going to walk the hunt out going to him. I'm going to try to get to him as quick as I can. Get my hands on him and, and, and live to breathe another day, as per to say. That, that for me, yeah. uh, that's what I'm going to do. That's where I'm you know. sitting with that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Because Two miles away, 625 down, 45 minutes to go. Two miles away, walking in that terrain. That's a 30-minute walk to get there. I mean, you're, you've got 15 minutes left. There's no way you're going to overcome in 15 minutes 625-point deficit. I agree with you guys. I think it's – Yeah, I, you know, and uh, – I would I would be looking right now at this point in time. I would be looking to to. How old was uh, um, Wyatt? He did he say twenty three? Twenty three years old. And the and the level of 
the accomplishments that he's got up to this yeah. point. I was amazed. Just I I, yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe what all he's won, and he's done all the work himself. Yeah. He uh, <clears throat> he, he shared that he, he as a as a youth uh, in his younger days he did a lot of trapping. Yeah. Uh, he enjoyed that side of it, and uh, you know shared on kind of how he had uh, when he got into hunting. You know uh, the connections that I mean, he used to hunt English dogs. Right. And uh, kind of got walk, uh, introduced to the Walker dogs, but he's he's primarily done everything that he's hunted. He's primarily made himself, and that's commendable for somebody that's twenty three years old. Yeah, yeah, so, no doubt. About absolutely it. commendable for somebody that's twenty three years old. And you know, I know he's not getting the outcome probably that he really wanted, but at twenty three years old, this is something he'll never forget. Uh, this is a lifetime of memory. Anybody right believing that he won't be back in this position? They're just not paying attention to what he's been doing <laughs> right. in the past. Yeah, exactly. he, he's going to be back. Yeah. Um, he's going to be. He's going to. He's going to have hounds that are going to be able to compete on the national level for a lot of years. Because you know, just sitting there visiting with him uh, and and listen to all them guys uh, talk. One thing that these guys are, all these guys, is they're hunters. Yeah. They're hunters. You know, uh, they hunt uh, almost every night. And uh, Wyatt, com Wyatt comes from a family of hunters. You know, his dad hunted. Uh, that's how he got started, and it's because his dad hunted. Sure. And uh, so he, uh, I'm sure that right now he's not, uh, you know, it's obviously not something that he wanted, but I can guarantee it's an experience he'll never forget. And, yeah, and guys, let's don't forget. I mean, you know, we're talking a lot about Jenna here and a little bit about Whitey, but, you know, Sleepy, uh, Still has 125 on there's the board. A, there's a lot riding on there because oh, yeah, I mean the highest opposite highest uh, you know highest opposite sex is up for grabs. If he can get in there and get this scored, and get caught back loose, there's still a lot of time left to go. Well, let's take it over to Alan and find out what's going on. Yeah, well, not a whole lot other than Jenna's treat again. Holy uh, cow! For 125, <laughs> the cast is still walking to Sleepy. <laughs> And Jenna is treed at seven tenth of a mile to the east of the cast, with seventy-four minutes gone in the hunt, and been called, and has been called treed. Yes, good lord. <laughs> All right. So, will they? Will it? Here's a question that's going to be asked, Alan. Will the judges split up, or are they going to? Oh, I would assume. I would assume so. I'm just assuming that, but I would assume they probably the will. The distance do that. and the timing. Because we've got and Sleepy treed and Jenna treed. Correct. Correct. That is correct. And Whitey. Whitey, they say that last I heard, they could still hear Whitey periodically. So Whitey's still on trail, sounds like. Thank so, you, Alan. So there's 74 minutes going by in the hunt is, is, what I, is kind of what I understood. So, that, so that's roughly 45 minutes. So, you know, hey, I, again, Tyler's thinking is this right here. They're going to walk all the way down here, score this, and then they're going to walk eight-tenths of a mile back to him. I would assume that by the time they get back to him, there ain't going to be a whole lot of time left. Right. And, right. But the fact of him being struck back in for a quarter – Instead of for a hundred, you know. Yeah, there's not a lot of damage can be done there. Hundred um, uh, percent. You know, there's not a not a lot of damage can be done if Whitey was to pop up treed. Uh, that, like you said earlier, you, you know, that's going to give him two hundred on that on that line there. Um, if there is any damage done there, at Jenna's, then then we got a new ball game. Exactly. And yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, she she with a twenty five strike, she's sitting right in the driver's seat. Yeah. yeah, and hey, again, it doesn't shock me uh, oh. that he, it doesn't shock me that he's got her on the car. It doesn't shock me at all. It really doesn't because, well, you know, them guys all agreed. You know, they're sitting there that you know the the confidence that he had on, in the accuracy. What was the you know, uh, what's the partnership between Jenna and Tyler? How long is the, how long have they been together? Well, I, I believe here. I believe that what he uh, when he shared with us, I, I believe he's had her since a young dog. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I believe. I mean, from from what I recall, uh, I I do believe that he had her uh, as a young dog. Okay. Because um, uh, cause I, I know he has because he just he had shared with at the super stakes. He he placed in the, he got in the top six of the super stakes uh, one year. And um, placed again, and, or made semifinals. Yeah, made semifinals so, or something. So then, and, and he put 20, and, and he's you know got over twenty two thousand one on her. So uh, it looks like, too, uh, about the report that we're getting, that uh, the assistant judge Chad Smith is going with Tyler to handle Jenna. So obviously her five is up already. I know we've lost the live feed. We hope to get back to that. Yeah, and, uh, guys, we are diligently trying to restore the live feed. You know? We want to see it as bad as yeah, you guys, trust, trust me. Trust me. 
Um, but he has obviously went there to go handle Jenna, so she, her tree obviously has been, uh, she's been treed for over five minutes. Um, so, uh, you know, the next report I'm sure that we'll hear, unless we go back to live feed, is uh, how they score Sleepy's tree. Yeah. And uh, that really, that's going to come down to, that's going to come down to a tight race because if Sleepy has plus points here, now that puts, you know, that puts him in the ball game for uh, a runner for opposite sex anyways. So. And I'll tell you absolutely. guys, I don't know how long ago Sleepy was declared treed, but it seems like it has been. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a while. while. Yeah, it's been quite, quite a while. while. Well. And, uh, you know, they, at one time when he was declared treed, he was 300 and some yards from him. So that tells you how far they walked away and then had to walk back to him. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So in that instance, here, here's a question. I know it's going to be asked. Sleepy was treated 300 yards away. They've had plenty of time to walk 300 yards and back over and over. Why would they have not sent somebody then? What, uh, you're wondering why they didn't get in there. Yeah, Sleepy, because Sleepy walked, treated a long a, time ago. As a group, yards. we all walked to Jenna. We walked towards Jenna. So at some point... They broke off, but they walked a long ways away from him. At, when, at some point, we were 375 or something away from him. Right? But they was at that point in time, they was walking to Jenna's tree. But see, uh, Jenna was treed first. And, and again, uh, I'm sure that was Tyler's thinking. If she's treed way through there, we're going to walk to her. And that, you know, so they had to go score Jenna first. And then they had to come all the way back. The main judge has to come all the way back to score right. Sleepy. So we're 1.5 you know, miles. Yeah, of so they, so to they get to sleepy. Yeah. yeah, from the and, time they treat him. Yeah, so because the main judge has to be there to score, the that sister is only, judge cannot that, score. No, only the main judge. Only can the score. main judge can actually score the tree. Right. Gotcha, Bob. Yep. So, I would I would think that uh, they're going to score Sleepy's tree, and then at that point in time, obviously head to Jenna. And now Kurt with Whitey has got to be thinking in his mind. He's going to have to get, you know. Well, he's setting it second, and he'll still be setting it second if Sleepy's got a coon here. Yeah. So, so let but me he ask. he needs so, to get treed. So let me ask you something, uh, Rick. And, again, this is just a scenario. Whitey gets treed, okay? Do you let him treed and make Sleepy get treed again to beat you? I think Kurt will scream at the top. <laughs> I think we'll hear him right here. He we'll, we will hear him right here in the top that. of his lungs <laughs> yeah. when Whitey looks up. Sure, you better and he's believe. He's going to put him on the board. <laughs> so, I figured that's whether he's uh, whether you whether <laughs> you know whether or not the dog can hear him when he does it. Um, but he's when he thinks that dog's tree, that Kurt is going to tree, and <laughs> so, everybody in that bottom down there is going to know. That Whitey's treat. Amen. Um, but that's what I think. I, I think Kurt would do that. I think, I think Kurt needs to do that in order to, uh, if, if we go in here and get a minus tree with Jenna, Kurt needs to have that dog treat. Yep. Yep. Well, what we do know right now is that they are split up. They are headed uh, back toward Sleepy on the tree. And we've still got a little over half an hour left to go in the game. We're a little over 30 minutes from having this year's champion. We're trying hard to restore our live feed guys. So while we do that and they head towards Sleepy, we're going to take a break and we're going to look back at last year's 2021, the 43rd United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion. Joe, I started him as a puppy. I raised him, trained him, made him own cross. Uh, I took him from nothing to Grand Night in UKC and never lost a cast. Um, I had turned around and ended up selling the dog. I bought him back. Um, my buddy and me did. My buddy ended up selling him again. Well, I tracked the dog back down, and me and a couple other of my good friends went halves on him and bought him back this time to keep him. Joe's more or less my buddy. Joe's high points is he's an honest strike dog. He likes to be by himself and have a coon. Usually when Joe trees, he's got a coon hanging. He don't make a whole lot of mistakes. Uh, he moves around good and they'll have a lot of downtime. Joe's great grandma was Brian's Broken Pine Katie. I took her and I bred her to Graber's B. And he, that cross right there reproduced uh, my Brian's Broken Pine Lumber. Lumber would be his uh, dad. And I, uh, this was the only pup I kept out of that cross. I really like Joe. I sold the rest of the pups at about a year old, and I put a lot of time in Joe. Uh, Joe's kind of the 
probably the last one, lone pine dog I have in my kennel, or broken pine kennels, is Joe right here. I had two pups out of him. I had one I called uh, Little Joe. Dan Hutchison owns him now. He's a really nice pup. Uh, Joe seems to be reproducing good. Two crosses out of him. All the pups are doing good. Oh, he's a big baby. Joe is probably the most common dog around the house. He just lays around all day. He's not real hyper. Uh, he's good with people. Uh, he's just he's just your friend. I mean, it's hard not to like him. Last night in the late round, it was a real bad storm. I was struck for 100. Joe got in the country. We had a hard time hearing him. Finally, the judge could hear him. He was treated up by a house, just ambushed a coon. Um, when we got to him there, that was two and a quarter plus. That was a game changer in the cast. I recut him and he dropped in 600 again and treated a coon to win the cast there. Didn't have much downtime at all. I mean, that was pretty much it right there. I mean, that's what advanced me to the finals with the second coon. I mean, I sealed the deal there. And that was. That's when he needed it the most. I mean, he did what he needed to do right there, and that was a big step for us. I feel pretty good. Uh, I trained the other two dogs in the finals. They came from me. I sold them to the owners they have now. That's um, going to be a coon training contest. Uh, there's no, there's no easy cast here. I mean, many and outlaw both. You're going to have to be them. They're both coon dogs. Uh, this should be a real interesting cast. And hopefully, the best dog wins. Hey guys, it's Trevor back live from the woods. I came to the new spot, Colors. Been 12 minutes and we got some action. Uh, Joe's treat in here. Uh, he took 75 strike, 125 tree. Uh, we're here, he's handled, they're shining that tree. On the way to this tree, Outlaws been the third split tree about 200 yards away. Uh, 100 strike, 125 tree. They have found Joe's coon. Someone found Joe's coon here and Luke Stark is making his way over to the tree. Joe's been plus. We'll handle him, get him recast, and head to Outlaw's Tree. Stay tuned. They had his ups and his had his downs tonight. The dogs did not perform like I thought they should. Uh, I figured we'd treat a lot more coon than that. We had some downtime that I didn't think would happen. Um, I don't know. I'm just happy I won it because it's been a dream of mine for so long. I've been to the top 100, I think, seven times. I placed 14th one time, and finally I closed my chapter there. It's something I wanted to do for a long time, and I finally did it. He's going to be happy. Hopefully he gets a lot of girlfriends, and that's what he's looking for. So that was our goal coming into here. I don't want to hunt him for a while. I want to either get him collected or get some females bred before I push him anymore. I'm not going to say the dog won't be campaigned anymore or rain up and down the road, but for a little while I want to take a break with him. The dog's been hunting pretty hard here lately and hopefully I can get some pups on the ground. He deserves it and I feel this dog can really help the walker breed out, so I want to give him a chance of breeding to some females, quality females, and go from there. Check out the United Kennel Club online store for all of our magazine subscriptions and UKC merchandise. Go to shop.ukcdogs.com and you'll find all the best gear to support your UKC lifestyle. Snag a new hat, hoodie, or t-shirt and subscribe to our many publications, including our world-leading coonhound publication, Coonhound Bloodlines. We even have research pedigrees and rule books available to purchase. Why wait? Shop now.
Welcome back to the 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Championship. I'm J. Paul Jackson here uh, with our co-host Steve Burkholder, Rick Stretch. And guys, we're coming down to the home stretch right now. We're Look at my watch. Wire. We're coming down to the wire and many miles have been walked and going to be continued to be walked. Many, many miles. Before the hunt's over. And um, it's, it's exciting. I mean, uh, if you're sitting where Tyler's sitting right now, standing right now, you got to be just so excited. Uh, and, and how old is Tyler? Did, we, did you get an age on him? He's, everybody's young compared to us. But. Yeah, I, I don't believe, yeah, I didn't get an age on him. He did say how old he was, and I, I'm thinking it was somewhere in the high 20s, but I don't want to, I don't want to yep. verify that. Um, hey guys, I, I hate to interrupt you. I know everybody's been waiting for this. It looks like we've got our live feedback. It's sketchy, but uh, we're going to give it a shot right now. So bear with us. I know you guys want to see this. All right. It's a little blurry, but Rick it looks like they're on the edge of a soybean. Field right now. Yeah. I'm gonna say that sleepy street. Yeah. Is that a squalor I was hearing? Hit it with white light, guys. Big light? Yes, yep. sir. Yeah. Well, he's got a real mouth on him. Yes, he does. He's got a good All right, we've got Alan for an update, guys. Alan? Yeah, just a bit of news from Trevor out there in the field. He says uh, Sleepy's Tree in a mess of everything, and obviously that's what they're doing right now at Sleepy's Tree there. But uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, Whitey has also been declared tree to the south, and he's about uh, five-tenths of a mile to the south, four-tenths of a mile to the south right now. Uh, 86 minutes gone in the hunt. All right, guys, we're just What's going to listen in here. In here somewhere, I'm sure. Let you guys hear the action as best we can. Man, I apologize for the poor feed that we have here. All right, guys, we've lost most of our audio. We're going to try to get get it restored as quickly as we can. A um, couple of things before we go back into the hunt. We're going to answer a couple of real uh, quick questions here. First of all, uh, we were discussing Tyler and his age. Uh, his wife tells us that he's 26 years old. and that well, He's Jenna, really going to shoot me for saying yeah. high 20s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, 26 years old is <laughs> dog Jenna will be foot. five years old <laughs> next week. And uh, Jenna... I mean, sleeping may come on the board here. It sounds like they're treating a mess, so we might be looking at our first circle of the night as well. Right. But uh, even if, if they come on, Jenna is still looking really, really good. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're honest here. Uh, we got some sound back. Let's see what we got. Getting some live I've had to restart like three or four times. When we got down there near Jenna, no service at all. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that No, my, I couldn't even get it. Oh, wow. Uh, That's like one. Yeah. It's a good, good piece of wood. <laughs> She's back the other direction. Probably now we just jump. Well, she, I, I don't know. She's, well, we're going to walk right down there. Have we established whether they're shining this tree or not? They are shining it. Yeah. They are shining. <laughs> All right, guys, we've lost it again. I apologize. So they're at the tree with Sleepy, and uh, the next the next stop will be back to Jenna. 
Yep. And uh, and then to Whitey. So um, probably going to recast Sleepy off here, no matter what what kind of school we're gonna, we're probably going to have either Circle or Plus here. But yeah, they was leaning towards Circle there because they've been there for a little while. And yep. anytime you hear them um, throw say throw the bright light up there, we've you know on average we've probably shined two or three minutes with dim lights because a coon would rather look at a at a dim light than it would a, a bright light. And um, so we got to be winding up on shining time there, but he's probably going to get recasted and um, and then we're headed to Jenna. So what do you think we'll see when we get to Jenna's tree, Steve? Well, judging by her track record all weekend, uh, you know, but guys, you know, we've all been in these hunts and uh, <clears throat> crazy things can happen. You know, we had an incident happen on... Um, we had an incident happen on a, on a Thursday night cast where, and this happens where you get into a tree, a coon is treed in a smaller tree and bales. You know what I mean? Anything can happen at this point. And I can tell you, uh, it, why do, you know, it, this is still an open race now with the way they're being treed, uh, with the way the scores are. Uh, if, if Jenna would, if something, a bad break like that would happen with her and Whitey produces a coon, guess what? New leader. New yeah. leader. Let me, and, let me tell you, the Gravity Challenge lady, she's not singing yet. I no, promise no. you. No. You know, and I can guarantee you, uh, the hunt's probably, assuming how far they're treed apart from each other, I would assume that by the time they walk to Jenna, score that, walk to Hawaii, the hunt's going to be over. The hunt time will be over. Oh, we got time. another tree made somewhere. We may have to score it afterwards, but... Yeah, yeah, the hunt time should should be elapsed by the time they get. Yeah, the because you know you're looking at roughly 20 minutes, 22 minutes left to go in the hunt. Actually, right at 25 minutes left. Right, right at 25 right. minutes, you know, roughly like left, left to go in the hunt, and that's really the scenario that it boils down to. Uh, if she has a circle tree, she's going to be your world champion. Yep. You, you know. Yeah. You know, so you know that's just uh, and and for you know for Whitey. Uh, you know what he's looking at. You know if if, soon, if this tree gets circled, uh, you know, and not plus them. I mean, you know, obviously they've been shining a while. Uh, you know, at that point in time, uh, Rick called it right the nail on the head. I can guarantee you, when Kurt heard uh, Whitey come treed, uh, he was going to put him on the paper. He well, and one like, thing we can't forget, Sleepy, forty-five minutes ago treed for one twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long you know, time. And they are, they're still there shining Sleepy's tree right now. So it's not done yet with Sleepy. We've got to get the score there before they can go and move to Whitey. Um, you know, Al, Alan's here with an update. Tell us what's going on, Alan. Yeah, so circle uh, Sleepy's tree. You got circled. They did not find the raccoon there. And the cast is now... Uh, Actually, Troy Salyers is headed with Kurt Herring to go to Whitey's Tree. Uh, the, the head judge and the rest of the cast, they're headed to Jenna, uh, where Chad and Tyler are waiting on them. And at the moment, she's a mile away from them. Trevor says it's another long walk coming up. <laughs> uh, they recasted Sleepy then? Or? They have. They have. Great. All right, so one judge, uh, assistant judge is headed to Whitey. The main judge and the main party is headed to Jenna. When they reach Whitey... <laughs> Will they have to wait for the main party before They'll they shine? They'll wait for the main judge again. And Steve, tell us what uh, you think. Uh, you think the uh, backup judge is getting any information from Kurt while they're headed well, to Whitey? Well, earlier this afternoon, <laughs> earlier this afternoon, I had a I had a chance to uh, visit with Troy, and he was actually on a previous cast uh, that Kurt was on, and uh, he had made the comment that it was a very eventful uh, trek walking to Whitey and getting them handled and then sitting there waiting uh, for the cast to get there. And he said what was just minutes was like an hour to Kurt. So I can guarantee <laughs> you uh, this is going to be like two hours because, I mean, if they're walking in a mile to Jenna and Whitey's tree the other direction, it could be well after the hunt's over uh, to get to uh, Whitey's tree to score it. And, and one would have to think, you know, at that point in time, they would score the tree course with Sleepy getting circled even if Whitey was on a, no, it would make a difference. Or would it make a difference? Sleepy has 25 minus. It, it, uh, see, Whitey is. Leave him at 125 plus if he comes up with a coon. If that's where you're going. No, I was just, I, what, what I was thinking is, is if, uh, if Whitey, uh, is on a bad tree, 
you know, that would drop him down to 50 minus, and that would put, so one would have to think that they're going to go score that tree because yeah. it could make a difference on the opposite second, sex. Third. Yeah, yeah it, it and it could make a difference. It could make, I believe, if I'm not wrong, uh, is there a check for all four places? There is a check for all yeah. four. And, uh, so placement's going to be right. come right. into play. So, you know, you would think if, if, if Jenna gets plussed here, it's over. Jenna is our 44th world champion. She, if she if even the gets hunt circled. time is, yeah. Or even, yeah, even, if, even, even if, if she gets circled. Even if she gets circled. But 100% if she gets plus, even if she gets circled. But, but uh, even though Whitey could not win it then, you can't just say we're done. You got to go score Whitey. It, it kind of it kind of hinges now on what Sleepy does here in the last uh, last uh, twenty some minutes. You were saying um, if he come if he pops up treed again and is declared treed, um, we could have a we could have a different outcome there, second and third place. Yeah, I mean right now, but Whitey would have to pull a minus. Right. But you know, just thinking here, uh, you know, because we're obviously. That's what we enjoy doing. <laughs> if, if he if he doesn't if Tyler doesn't tree Jenna, and she's over a mile away, chances he don't hear her. And now Whitey's treed, and they walk down and score Whitey, and they get him back off the lead. You know what I mean? So you know, thinking thinking of that scenario, you know that would give him three fifty, and him sitting at four fifty, he didn't and doesn't hear her. Boy, I'd hate to be in that spot with fifteen minutes left to go, and him back at large to tree and you know the bang bang, and yeah, it could be a different it, game. Hey. And usually, you know, there's where there's one, there's usually where another there's one. There's one, there's another. There's one. another one. Yeah. And uh, sure I say, we've seen it happen many times. Yeah. You know. All right, guys, we have a score update. Let's get it. Alan. Well, it's not really a score update, other than Wyatt Monin has withdrawn Hank from the competition, uh, with 22 minutes to go. Uh, that means uh, Hawk will place fourth here, and as far as the money purse part of it, he will be the $1,500 recipient. And uh, I'll just mention third, what's up for grabs here for third is 2,500. Second is gonna be 3,500, but the big purse there is for 10,000, you know, so Jenna's got that well under grasp right now and it's hers to lose, I guess. So that's the latest report, 22 minutes to go. 22 minutes left officially in the hunt time, guys. So still out there, it, it definitely is not done, but you know, looking at the updated scores, to me, uh, it, it's all going to come down to what happens with Jenna and, and, and Whitey here. I don't see Jenna doing any worse than second place, but I, I think the two-time Oklahoma State champion is probably going to be our 44th world champion. And, hey, uh, if, if that score holds up, uh, very deserving. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. She, she put on a show. I mean, I mean yeah. with the conditions we've had this week and stuff like that, uh, you know, you got to give credit where credit is due. And, uh, you know, to date, she's treated only two coons that, you know, we've looked at, you know, yeah. and co possibly could make it a third. And so it would be a very well-deserving, you know. She, she did, you know, she did what she needed to. Yep. All right, so let's go back to Alan for yet another update. Yes, I have an update on Sleepy. He struck back in for a quarter, and right soon after that, he was declared treed. So he struck for uh, 25 and treed for 125. Wow. As far as how many miles away from the cast is he at this point? Yeah, <laughs> they didn't tell me how many miles. It's hard to tell, but uh, they have stretched. They have stretched this property out. I do believe. Oh my goodness! Well, they had a lot of room to run. It looks like they ran all over every bit of it, guys. So now we're looking over here at, at our unofficial board. Obviously, we've got the official scores uh, up there on on the screen down the bottom right for you guys. But now. Uh, Man, you got to score white, or you've got to go to, 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 to Whitey's tree, and you've got to go to Sleepy's. I mean, there's a lot at stake here now in the placements, and uh, oh, for that matter, the opposite sex as well. Right, right, yep, yep. So you know, and, and, and guys, here here's a point that I you know. It it these trees ain't necessarily circle. We as we've seen this week, there was a lot of trees here because we have persimmons here. You know the persimmons are falling that kind of thing, and there was a lot of trees that got minus because it, it's it's you know a dog tree on a persimmon tree that doesn't have a coon in it is not an uncommon right. thing. It can happen. It can I happen. You mentioned pawpaw trees uh, as well this week. Uh, uh, yeah. Chad had mentioned pawpaw trees were yeah uh, 
and and we, and we seen that we seen that happen. Uh, uh, we seen that happen. Uh, you know, a lot this week. So you know, it could it could definitely. Guys, I know that area, and I can tell you there are a lot of persimmon in there. Uh, you know, when when golf woods. There were no more wooden golf clubs that saved a lot of persimmon trees' lives down here in the Mississippi River bottoms, and now there are a lot of them in that area. Yeah. The thing that I really do like about that area that they picked, though, I know that you know, we had a circle tree on Sleepy, and they said that it was an absolute mess. Uh, I think one of the reasons that the guide you know, took them into that area, as you can see, there's not a lot of vines. A lot of those woods are clearer than some of the other areas around here this time of year when we have all the foliage still out there. And that's been evident in the positive scores that we've been seeing as well. One would have to think, um, and I, I believe we just got an update. So when Sleepy got treed, at that point in time, all dogs was declared treed. So uh, I'm sure that they sent a backup judge and went and handled Sleepy immediately because they didn't have to wait to five because all dogs are declared treat. And he, so he couldn't have been all that far. No, from, you know, absolutely couldn't have been that yeah, far. Yeah, because they yeah. just cut Sleepy back loose from the group, right. so now boom. Yeah. Right. But so that brings me to a question here because the main judge has to score. Well, they have to go to Jenna's tree, then Wadi's tree, and then maybe however long it takes, come back to Sleepy Street before they can shine it. Yeah, and they could, uh, if the hunting time expires before they get to Whitey, they could, if they're near if, sleeping. If, if, the, if, if, the hunt, if the hunt time uh, is expired, uh, one would think that the, you would score, because all dogs are handled at this point right. in time. You can't right. turn back loose that they would score. And, uh, you know, judging by them cutting Sleepy loose, uh, I'm assuming that they probably was right by him. Uh, when these Probably walked him. right past yeah. him. Uh, you know, you'd have so, to think that if, if yeah. Sleepy's been handled, which we understand right. that he has, then and, the and cast actually we just got an update that they did walk right by Sleepy where he was declared uh, struck and treed. So we know he's not back on the same tree. Not that you know, yeah. not that we thought he would be, but so he is definitely handled now. And uh, so now it's just a matter of of time going by and and so i'm going to make a suggestion to tyler at this point don't turn her <laughs> loose yeah. at this point uh when you come off that tree tyler if you can hear what i'm saying uh let's don't cut her loose this time and uh, uh I, i'm sure he's not gonna, I, he, he didn't take any advice from us all night so no, i don't know why he would stop guys there's it, a we, reason you're sitting up here and i'm out here when, amen. when we get him back in we're going to have to straighten him up um, anyway, I'm not going to straighten him up. He's going to say, "How many world championships you got underneath your belt?" And you know that. <laughs> no doubt about. It. Well, you know, here's the thing, though. Looking at looking at the track record, if Jenna does get a plus, it would not shock me at all if he didn't cut her loose. And really, what does he have to lose at that point? If he, you know, throws I, up I another, would think, I would think the hunt's going to be pretty much over the time uh, they get right. there. You know, they're walking a mile, and, and he doesn't have the option, right? When they're all trained and handled. No, he has the option to keep her on the lead, okay. but, but he has the option to turn back loose as well. Yeah, I would so, think he's going to keep her on the lead this time. The one thing that I want to point out before Steve starts, you know, blowing smoke up our, <laughs> up our skirts here is that... Uh, You're wearing a he, skirt. Any, that, any folks, that's why we only show him from the waist up because he brought Rick's it wearing a skirt. To me while we were on break there a while ago that he said, your chances of winning the pick em again this weekend is a slim to none, and uh, and I'm looking up there at withdrawed hawk, and my chances are none again. So I want to publicly congratulate Steve. Hey, don't do uh, at that. Least finish, thing at least finishing ahead of me <laughs> on the pick'em. I right. um, I don't know how you do it. I don't know. I, I'm well, going to put in. A, I'm going to put in an expense report tomorrow for a cowboy hat. That's got to be part of it. Um, you know, my phone's going crazy that once again I've allowed you to to beat me in this pick 'em thing but well, uh it's it's just life goes on it, it does it does and it's just a difference in dog men you know <laughs> <laughs> so, some people just know dogs you know can we roll the can we roll the past world champions <laughs> game? Do we have, do we have to that, uh, back there in the back no. we just roll it to I, like I tell you I tell you what we have a we have a lot of fun with it talking about pickems uh, there's actually one individual that had shared with us earlier. There's one individual that picked three out of the final four dogs in his pick'em, 
was three of these. The only dog he didn't pick uh, was Sleepy. So really the only way that he could be beat is if Sleepy won the hunt. So he had three out of the final four dogs. So, you know, and none of the top six uh, most picked, you know, uh, obviously, you know, was here. So, you know, that's pretty, that's really a pretty impressive, you know. So when we yes. did the top six on uh, Thursday night, what did we have, like three or four of the six won the first round? That it, four of yes. the six, four yeah. of the six yep. advanced, four of the six. four of the six advanced, but none of them made here. Guys, all right, so I know y'all are having a really, really good time roasting each other right now, but I want to cut in and point out something, you know, it ain't over. No. Because so no. let's look at the, let's look at the unofficial scores. Let's look at the board over here. So we've got Jenna up uh, for four fifty. So they're going to Jenna. Let's say that she negatives. So she drops at that point one hundred and fifty down to three hundred. Then you've got Whitey who's on the board with plus one fifty and another possible plus two hundred dangling. He's a world. If champion. she drops and he hits, yeah. It's a huge turn of events, right. and, and he's trust the world me, champion. We've been in these hunts long enough, Rick, haven't we? Where we've seen that. Oh my! Yeah. So my yeah. pick over still is hanging over in and there. Over. You know, yeah. exactly. You're, it's, you're asking for the. Now I don't know. You, I heard you mention that the temperatures dropped outside. I haven't been out there, but the conditions have have cooled down out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, they, they've cooled down a lot. And guys, uh, I don't know that this is really official, but I have been told that the person with the three picked is Tyler. That he was in the pick'em and he picked the three. <laughs> I, I sure? believe that comes. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm, sure, uh, they, uh, I'm well, dead Alan serious. Maybe look that up for us. I hope Alan will look that up. We uh, need to make that official. But I have it from a very, very good. Uh, and this year they're giving away a new car. Is that yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have sure it from a very good, reliable source here that Tyler was the guy Which that picked the three out of the four. You know, the, the, he his picked friends. his friends. He picked his friends. You he know, picked so, his friends. Uh, how awesome would that be? <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy, man. Who would have thought that? So, it, it, hey, you know the big thing about that? What that means, guys? That means Tyler can't lose. He can't lose that. He can't lose that. Yeah, he can't lose that no matter <laughs> he can't what happens. Lose that. Tyler's going to be a winner one way or another, guys. But oh, yeah. I'm sure he would look, like to be a double winner right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You so, know, that, that pick em is a lot of fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun, and uh, it was a lot of bragging rights. And uh, it's always pretty neat to see them guys. You know, it's kind of like picking, it's kind of like the NCAA, you know, trying to uh, pick that coming down. You know, you have your favorites, and. Uh, you know, hey, we've seen, you know, what, 15 seeds knock off two seeds. And, and this hunt is a lot the same way. Uh, anything can happen. Sure. So while we're waiting to get that live feedback, I think we've got an update coming from Alan Gingrich. Alan, what you got for us? Well, Trevor just reported there's exactly 10 minutes left in the hunt right now, but there's still 900 yards from Jenna. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am proud I'm sitting right here. <laughs> Can you, hey, kudos to the camera guy out there, the, the footage. What that is we his name got. again, Alan? What, what's Brandon. Brandon Fine. Brandon Fine. Yes. Uh, yeah, I Brandon. want to Brandon shout Fine. out to him because Man. what he's carrying around, uh, you know, he is in shape, obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, uh, you know, it's, and, and hey, to, kudos to them to try to get the live coverage. Sometimes the best spots to hunt don't have the best coverage. But, oh, have no. we ever had it where the best spot to hunt had decent coverage? It hadn't happened yet, guys. I promise we are trying our best. You know, everybody asks me when they see me at one of these, man, why can't y'all get us a good live feed? Like, we're really trying to. Years you know, ago, they would have yeah. found out tomorrow who the winner is. Exactly. You know? and, and most of them would have found out when the magazine come out a month later. Right? Yeah. Right. You know, we're, yeah, uh, just, the locals would have read it in the paper, yeah. you know, and, and everybody else would have found it out a month later when the magazine came yeah. out. So this this is you know an improvement on that, and we're trying to improve it more. Absolutely. Of course, the other thing is, with 900 yards to go, even if we did have the live feed, all we would be seeing was the backside of a bunch of ugly guys going through the woods <laughs> because the only really fit, best-looking guy there is the one with the camera on his shoulder. So <laughs> there you go. No offense uh, to any of you guys walking through the woods yeah, or the ladies. If your uh, husband is in that group, in set when they get in. Yeah. <laughs> you need to scoot down a little bit. I'm glad I'm a bit of go boy. I'll tell you. So 900 yards away, the hunt's going to run out by the time yeah. they score the tree. Um, you know, so if we walk away from this tree without any minus, we can we can call it. Yeah. Um, and and uh, and that's what Tyler's. That's what everybody's thinking hey, out know, there. Something else, I, yeah, something else I want to throw out about Tyler. 
Uh, this is really pretty cool. So as we know, there's a lot of sponsors that help out with this hunt. And uh, Tyler actually owns Tier 1 Game Calls. And he's, a, you know, he's one of the sponsors here as well. You know, he, you know his, his Game Calls, they sponsor this event, uh, this world hunt. And uh, I want to give a you know, shout out to him because he's, he, obviously he's passionate about what he does as a hunter. But he's also passionate about you know, sponsoring some of these events and helping that, you know, helping that side of it. And, uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, uh, you know, just a shout out to him and, and, and tier one game calls for, uh, for also helping out at this event what you know, else? and all the other sponsors. Did you too. find out what he does? I don't, you know, I don't, uh, he, oh, yeah. I don't, I, I know he had to work that Friday and yeah, he right. could not miss that work. He has a, he has a day job. Yeah. yeah. He has a day job. Speaking of to you, you were asking about what is the pick em win? You know, um, Tyler's wife is suggesting that in addition to the $10,000 check, if Jenna wins, uh, he ought to, she ought to get a new car for him winning the pick em as well. So Alan, what do you think, think about that? that? I think, that, I think I was wrong in that part of it. That might be coming up next year. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, if I can back up on that statement without getting any getting in any trouble, we need to back yeah, up on yeah. that. Yeah, well, hey, maybe we can we, maybe we can give her uh, the first edition uh, World Coon Hunting Championship. Rick stretches Coon Hunting Championship game, hey, you know, like Madden Sports. Hey, we we know that if if you got to win a pick'em to win a car. Uh, chances be kind of slim on that end, wouldn't you think, Rick? Yes, it wouldn't be. Very, it wouldn't be very slim. <laughs> Judging by the track record. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I know a guy who would be driving a new car the from the tournament of champions, now. but yeah. Um, oh, I finished shoot. second place again in the pick'em thing. Well, I've still got a chance. I may not win it again, but I've got a chance. Yeah, you should, go you wide and go. Hey, uh, talking to Tyler, I actually just got a text, and I want to give a shout out. Thank you, Zach McBee, for uh, sharing this. But he's actually a loan officer at a bank for an ag for ag loans, and I know that Zach does. Uh, you know, he does. Uh, I know he's in the ag business uh, of where he's out uh, out there. Of course, he lives in northern Missouri, so uh, that's what. Uh, that's what uh, Tyler's job is, is a, is a loan officer. So after this weekend, he may be on the opposite side of that. He may be the one loaning money. Yeah, no doubt. Wow. How much has she won already this year? Well, he, he made her a platinum champion earlier in the year, or made her a platinum champion, which is over $20,000. I think he had shared that uh, she'd won $22,000 up wow. to this point. And, you know, he actually was on the cast in 2018 or 19 or whatever, uh, when uh, this dog's mom, Shaq, or this dog's mom's brother, Shaq, was in the final cast. And he got to walk along on, on that. He had actually went out there to that world hunt. So he's no stranger to, he's no stranger to this. Stage is not too big for these guys. Yeah. No, no. None of these guys. I mean, you know, 26 years old, um, of, of course, uh, White Hawks uh, owner, um, handler. Three. Yeah. He was 23. 23 years old. And, and they showed such poise. Confidence just. Yeah oozing yeah, out of him yeah, you know yes absolutely and you know and i know that wyatt's mom has been following along on our live feed um as well and uh great seeing her support her boy you know she says he's going to be back again even though hark had to withdraw and i guarantee you this young man 23 years old she's right we have not he seen the it. last of him he yeah. loves ate it. up with it yeah. for sure yeah he loves it but you know the poise that all these young guys have it's just really something to think, you know, of our dogs here. We've got a 23-year-old and a 26-year-old at the Worlds. How old were you when you won it, and how old were you when you made the finals? Rick first. Uh, it was in 2012. I'm 57, so do the math. You're 57? Yeah. Yeah, I look great for 57. Man, don't you, don't, you don't I'm look it, you, but I, I bet 10 years ago you did. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a 47. Go, and you? I, I was 26 when I made the Final Four. Wow. And, and I'll be honest with you. So that was, what, like 1960? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually 2000. Okay, you can do that. But here's what I will share with you. Uh, I just want to share with the folks, getting to the Final Four of the UKC world is not an easy feat. Amen. And I was a young man then. And I was hunting a good dog, and I thought in my mind I had it all figured out. The, the way you get to the Final Four is you just get a good dog and go. You're going to be back. You know, I mean, this, you know, I, I didn't breeze through it, but, man, I was hunting a good dog, and I was like, I'll be back in a year or two. And that was 22 years ago, and I have, I have hunted at almost every world hunt, and I never got back to the Final Four. 
Wow. And, and been in the top 100 several years, uh, been to the top 20 several years, you know, placing fifth a couple years ago. And in my mind at that age, I just knew that I would be back to the Final Four, and this time around I would wrap it up. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys. Uh, I remember hunting with a guy the night that I made the Final Four. His name is Bobby Allen. A lot of us know him. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Uh, he was hunting a dog called Hammer and Earl and uh, made the top 20 in 1999. And then in 2000, and I think in 2002, made the Final Four two different times. Right. But I remember walking to our dogs after that hunt was over. And he said, young man, he said, enjoy I know we got beat, but enjoy this Final Four. He said, I've hunted all my life, and this is the first Final Four I've been able to experience. Wow. And Bobby at that time was 55, you know, probably in his mid-50s anyways. And that really struck me. You know, I, I've never forgot that advice that he gave me. He, he, I know he goes, you're disappointed in getting beat, but he goes, enjoy this because I hunted for all these years, and this is the first one that I've been able to enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of guys, you know, this hunt is a uh, it's hey, it's a it's it's why it's why the it's why the United Kennel Club's World Championship is the most prestigious event, in my opinion, to win of any hunts out there sure. still today. And, you know, you may look at the prize money. There's other hunts that you can maybe win a little bit more prize money. But I can tell you it this title is the most sought off after title of any titles out there. Yeah, I believe you it's definitely that They want to win one hunt. Yep. They, they want to notch in their belt before they end their competition career. 90 out of 100 are going to tell you, I want to win that United Kennel Club World Hunt. Yep. Guys, I believe that time has just expired. We will get some official word from that, um, a word on that from Alan Gingrich here in just a moment. But looking at my watch, unofficially, this is totally going by when I set the timer and, and where we're at now. I do believe time has expired. We've got no updates. So to bring everybody up to speed right quick with where we're at, we're working to restore our live feed. Hopefully by the time they get uh, to where Jenna is treed, we will have our live feed restored. But right now, time has unofficially ran out. I think I'm about to get confirmation of that. Uh, Alan actually has an update, so I'm going to get some confirmation quick. Alan? Yeah, Trevor has just reported that the hunt time has expired and they are about a hundred yards from Jenna now. So they're getting very close, but remember they still have three dogs to score. Yep, well, thank you, Alan, for that update. So time has officially expired now. So to update you guys with where we're at, and by the way, we're going to stick with you here all the way through until we know who the world champion is. And then we may take a break while we're waiting on those guys to come back. But once we've established that, don't leave us. Uh, even if we go to break for a little while, we will be coming back with the cast as they return here to the Hunt headquarters. We will have the official presentation of the World Champion check and trophy, which is right over here behind me somewhere. And uh, so do stick with us after we declare who the champion is, because even though we're going to break, we will come back for that. But right now, here's the way that it stands. Uh, we currently have Hawk, who has been withdrawn some time ago. Sleepy, Jenna, and Whitey are all still in there. All three have been declared treed, and they are all three declared treed on different trees. Jenna treed first, then Whitey, then Sleepy in that order. So the main judge will go to the three dogs in that order. As a matter of fact, unfortunately for Sleepy, um, the cast actually... Sleepy came in and treed last, and they just turned to go to Jenna, and they had to actually walk right past Sleepy to go to Jenna. Right now, they're approaching Jenna's tree. We're working to restore the live feed any second now, hopefully, so we can see the action as they go to shine that tree. But Hawk is gone. Jenna, Whitey, and Sleepy are all treed in that order, and we are about to, to score Jenna's tree. And what do you guys think is going through Tyler's mind? Well... We got an unofficial update that we believe, you know, maybe it's not official. So no, we, we don't have anything yeah. yet. Up there telling uh, me that. Yeah, they, we, yeah, we thought we had a report, but we're going to actually wait until until we get it in on uh, on on the potent. Yeah. So we we went through the we went through the scenarios. Uh, we went through the scenarios on the trees. You know, uh, to what to what to your point is, uh, you know, Jenna. 
here's pretty much what it here's pretty much what it boils down to. If Jenna's the only way she loses this hunt is if she's minus and Whitey and Whitey is plus. If she gets circled or has a coon, it's over for the championship. Right. Now, what the scenario that breaks down with the two with, with between Sleepy and Whitey, uh, the only way that Sleepy is going to move up into second place is if he obviously gets plus and Whitey gets minus. Right. Even so if they we, both we've get still circled. got a number so, oh, of yes. scenarios a that, that, can, that can pan out Absolutely. here. It's anybody's game it's right It's anybody's now. game. So here's what we know. I've been told that we cannot get the live feed rest- restored right now. We're trying really hard. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break right now. They, they are approaching Jenna's tree. When we come back from this break, uh, we are going to have some official scores and maybe even some results for you. So bear with us. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we're here at the World Championship, UKC 44th Coonhound World Championship. We also have our next major event coming next April. Once again, we will be going back to Greencastle, Indiana for the Tournament of Champions. And while we're waiting to crown a new world champion, let's take a look back a few months ago to this year's 2022 TOC. My name is J.R. Gray, I'm from London, Kentucky, and this is uh, Willie's Connor McGregor. They started out on the early round, uh, me and Nick Emmel, you know, we're buddies there, we ended up drawing each other. We go out there and we cut the dogs loose, he strikes for 100, I strike for 75. Um, his dog loads up tree for just a second, he trees her, she moves on, she takes 125 pump. Well, they start going toward the road, so we, we run down to the blacktop, all of us stand there watching them while his crosses the road. Mine goes back in the woods, probably about 400 yards, and uh, ends up getting treed. We put the stationary on him, I end up having to tree him in. We go to him, he's got a coon. We walk and I recut, and uh, I would say Gabby was at least a mile and a half from us when he treed her in. I hate getting wet more than anybody, that's for sure. And then I seen Jeremy Cox take off, and I said, well, if they're gonna go through it, I'm gonna hit her out behind them. They was already up belly deep, so. That was something else. I was kind of hoping they'd be like, hey boys, we're going to call time out or we're going to we'll get him here in a little bit. I don't even know if I had 32 inch boots there. My legs ain't that long already, so it don't take much for me to get wet. Uh, when we get back, you know, it's 90 minute cast. We get back, there's about 20 minutes left. And uh, Connor's tree, we go to him, he's got another coon. And pretty much, that was, you know, that was the end of the hunt. I mean, Friday night, early round, he's, you know, we scored, he scored on four coons, tree five. The late round, he uh, scored on three coons and had another coon, but I didn't have to tree him in uh, before the hunt was up. Then this this round right here, or tonight, the early round, he trees two singles early and then trees two singles late and makes a den tree. We scored on 12 trees and he had 11 coons in two nights. You know, it's one of them deals that when it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and it, they really ain't nothing, you know. But it, it's an awesome feeling. I mean, it, it, for anybody, I mean, it, just being on the final cast is an awesome feeling, so. Regardless, if you on the fifty thousand dollars just icing on the cake, there ain't no other feeling like it. Did you know that your monthly subscription to Coonhound Bloodlines comes packed with upcoming UKC event information, official UKC event results, and articles of interest about coon hunting? It sure does. Read about the top competition hunters and hounds, as well as stories about pleasure hunting and bench show hounds. Subscribe today or renew online at shop.ukcdogs.com. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity. Support digestive health and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. Guess what? We have a podcast. The all-new United Kennel Club podcast will not only feature great guests, living the sporting dog life, but also rules and sport updates. 
Tune in to the Hunting Ops Podcast with Alan Gingrich and Trevor Wade to hear the latest coonhound rules and updates, beagle rules and updates, and all breaking news about UKC Hunting Ops programs. Hear it right here first. Subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss out. Okay, guys, welcome back to the 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Championship. As you know, when we went to break, uh, we time had expired officially in the hunt. We had one dog that had been withdrawn, Hawk. We had Jenna, Whitey, and Sleepy all treed in that order, and they have been to Jenna's tree. It has been scored. Let's go to Alan Gingrich. Alan, tell us what's transpired. Well, not a whole lot has changed for Jenna tonight. You can plus her final tree as well. That gives her a total score of 600. She's going to be the big cast winner tonight, One of the probably one of the biggest casts she's ever been in. She's going to be our world champion. The hunt is over, but they still need to go score Whitey and Sleepy as well. But uh, that's where they're headed right now to Whitey, but uh, I'm sure there's a happy Tyler Compton uh, with Jenna on the lead strap. She went out and earned this one. Amen, guys. And that was M. Static. Jenna obviously just did exactly what obviously Tyler wanted her to do, turning her loose so quickly. She slammed the door on all of the competition. So now the two-time Oklahoma State champion is officially the 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion. Guys, y'all thoughts on that final? There's, there's no better feeling. There's no better feeling. That that kid out there right now is his feet ain't touching the ground. No. And I guarantee you his his phone is blowing up. And uh, you know, um to catch that emotion, to be out there when something like that happens, being a part of, you know, judging a few of these hunts and stuff, uh, it's there's just so many thoughts that run through your mind, you know, of a of something that even though he's a, a young twenty six He's obviously hunted a lot of years already. And, uh, you know, Tyler, uh, when you go back and watch this, enjoy this moment because, you know, the stage doesn't get any better than this. And, uh, you know, you, you'll never forget that. It's kind of like when you, you know, this is obviously his first world, you know, he had shared with us uh, that his biggest thing that he'd won up to date was the Oklahoma State twice. Yeah, that's what he was and, most you know, proud of. And that was, what it, that was a big, that was a big, and then the fact that he had made her a platinum champion, and right. he obviously got her in the quarterfinals, uh, but that was the biggest thing that he had won, period, and it was with her. And uh, he's obviously done a lot of work with her. And, you know, that, that, that also is uh, when you take one like that as a young dog and you watch them progress and you do it as a team, you know, uh, it's kind of like when you get your first dog that really kind of puts you on the map, I guess you could say. You learn as much from the dog as a dog learns from you. And that first one is always seems to be the most special one. You just, they just, they, they get up, they become a part of your heart and your life and your memories that can never be replaced. Well, and, you know, uh, and we learned earlier from his wife that they actually weaned Jenna. So you're talking about a dog that they raised so they, so they got absolutely so, a, a puppy. puppy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is. I mean, you know the bond that's got to be there. And I'm telling you guys, I mean, we're talking about a dog that turns five next week. She's got as good a chance as anybody of coming back and defending next year. I mean, this dog's oh. got hitting on. And I can, and I, and by just judging on how he hunted her tonight, uh, I don't believe this is going to be a world champion that's going to sit on the chain or in a, or in a kennel. I, I can't imagine that he's not going to continue uh, to keep hunting her, you know. What do you bet that there's a litter of pups in her future? Oh, no doubt. If, if, uh, you know, and, and he never mentioned that over the weekend that I recall if she's been bred before or not. Um, I don't. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't <clears> say, uh, uh, d did not mention on that if she had, uh, I'm sure uh, Alan could uh, uh, look that up or whatever. She had a registered litter of puppies off her, but he didn't mention that he had, that he had raised any uh, pups off of her. But, uh, you know, put it this way, if, if thinking in the way he thinks, if he wanted to have another one, uh, you know, something close to her, his best shot is going to be getting something out of her, a, a person would have to think. The emotions that he has right now, I can, I can remember the night that that we won, and uh, I remember I remember when they called the hunt off, you know, over, and I dropped to my knees. I was crying. Um, it, it was just fantastic, and and the first 
handshake I had out there in the woods was to Alan. And he was out there with us. And, uh, you know, we struggled to get a winner that, that weekend. And uh, But when the emotion, I, 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 I think about it right now, it was just, it was just overwhelming. And uh, you live for this. If, if you compete in these hunts, you live to win a world title. And, and like you said, and uh, this is the one. This is, you know, there may be some others out there that, that uh, maybe the prize money might be a little higher, like you said, but this is the one. This is the one that makes you famous, I, I'm going to say. And, uh, and you know, you trying to repeat it. I've tried to repeat it for 10 years, and uh, it, it's, it's super hard. Super hard. There's been, what, two guys, I think, win the world hunt twice. Well, but, but as far as, like, uh, as far as the, uh, and, and again, I didn't watch the, and I should have. And you should have because, should've, yeah, yeah, I know. You I would have seen, seen your you face there. up there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, I, if you here's, here's, again, you here's the problem I have, Rick. Uh, you got I, lots I've of problems, been, Steve, gonna, according to Rick. I sure have a knack of picking the world champions, don't I? I thought we were done with that. <laughs> I thought we were done yeah. with that conversation. I, here's the thing. I don't think a, I don't think a dog I don't think a dog has uh I don't think there's been a two time winner of the UKC World Champion. I it's thought the same uh, dog. No, not the same dog. But same handlers, owners. Right. You know, you're but, looking at Duke Peru and uh yeah. Alan help us so out. So there's right? never been a repeat champion. Not not the same dog. No. Wow. No. Now I do think that there's uh, you know, we know that the Jane female recently uh, uh, won the world hunt and then come back the following year. Alan touched on it and placed second, so second. she got close. But there's never been a there's never been a repeat champion. So that tells you uh, that tells you how hard uh, this hunt is. You know, and we've had. I mean, you know, I know that uh, uh, Gerald Keegan that won it with Lila. I know he competed with her again. Right. Um, I know the Joe dog was entered this year. You know, uh, too. But uh, you know that just tells you how hard. Uh, it is to get back with that particular dog to this event, you know. So, yeah. All right. So, guys, I've got an interesting fact for you. I've just heard from uh, Tyler's wife that Jenna has been bred once to Hunter, and that those puppies were a year old this week. Okay. So. Yeah. He, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I tell you. I've hunted. They were born I, a year ago there we go. yesterday. Is that where we're? Day before yesterday. Yeah. Day before yesterday. And I tell you what, I. I was born and, and that yesterday. was a good choice by Tyler because I've hunted with Wipeout Hunter and uh, a lot. I pleasure hunted with him. I've drew him out in a hunt. He's owned by Zach McBee um, and uh, a good hound. And, uh, and he's reproducing some nice dogs. So, hey, you never know in another year or two, we may be seeing some, uh, some Jenna 2 puppies. If your you know. phone's fully charged, let's try to locate one of them pups out of her right quick <laughs> before the world finds out who really won this hunt. <laughs> Hey, that's too late. hey, a few years ago we could we could do that, but that's too late now. I guarantee yeah. you that there's there's several of them on it. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. It's uh, uh, yeah, but but that emotion is there's nothing like it. No, I uh, I I got back to the truck and and Brian was waiting on me there at the truck and and we hugged and and uh, and then uh, my first phone call was to my dad. Yeah, and uh, and then the nerves kind of calmed down after that, you know, and. Uh, so, guys, I, I got to interrupt you here, but I want to point something out. You know, I'm sitting here looking through a lot of the comments. And, guys, we've really enjoyed hearing from you guys tonight, too, uh, as we've gone through this. Trust me, man, we mine these comments on the live feed because we're trying to give you the best show that we probably can, possibly can, and we're trying to improve it every way we can. But one that just really, really caught my eye was Wyatt's mother, was one of the first people to chime in and congratulate Tyler and Jenna. We've talked about the sportsmanship among <laughs> all the guys in this cast, but I think that says a lot for the class of the entire cast. And obviously they learned it at home, guys. So uh, I thought that was very, very nice. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Bonin. And, uh, you know, Wyatt, your boy, I'm sure he's going to be back a whole bunch as we talked about 23 years old. But I thought that was something noteworthy, guys, as we've talked about this group and the fact that they are all pulling for one another out there. And also, you know, Tyler, uh, you know, uh, picked Hawk to be in there also. So, yeah. You know, they they and, were all. And to your point, Jay Paul. Uh, hanging out with these guys today, didn't know them that well before I come. Knew Tyler a little bit, but didn't know Wyatt. And uh, 
you know, seen Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah Roller's name a lot, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. competed and stuff, but never really got to know them guys until we sat here and had a couple hour conversation. And uh, to your point, it doesn't shock me at all. Uh, you know, uh, I will tell you this, uh, Wyatt, the apple don't fall far from the tree because, you know, just watching them guys uh, today and the class act, they, they, you know, to all the hunters this weekend, I, I want to give a shout out. We got a little bit of time they're walking to this tree. Uh, there was a lot of amazing sportsmanship displayed this weekend. Um, you know, guys coming back in, and even last night, you know, one thing that really stood out to me uh, this weekend is, number one, we had a huge crowd here on Thursday night, probably the biggest crowd I've ever I, seen. I agree with that. It yeah, was but, the biggest one I've but, seen. But I want to give a shout-out to the guys last night. Uh, obviously, there was only five winners out of 23. But all but a one, one or two, even though they got beat, come back in last night. This this room was packed. Yeah. And a lot of them guys, you know, even even through defeat, come back. And and we sat with these guys and hung out with them and we visited and we laughed and you know that sure there was some disappointment, but but that class of twenty three, the the sportsmanship that they displayed and the class act that they was coming back in here, even in defeat, and you know it I tell you, it really made me think this. I wish, uh, for me, uh, I wasn't always that guy. And if I could redo anything in my life, uh, I wish when I got beat at some of these world hunts that I would have come back. If I could redo it, that I would have come back and did what they did. We sat around yeah. there. It was kind of like a round table. It was like, kind of like a round table. And I, and, we and, laughed. And, 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 you know, and, uh, uh, that, that was just, that, that is what this sport is going to and, uh, you know, it just, it was just, it was fun. And it, it sent chills down my spine. And, you know, some of these guys had their wives and they had their kids here, even through defeat, you know. And, uh, you know, I can tell you by being involved in some of these hunts, a lot of the top 20 pictures get taken the next day because people, you know, you, you get beat. And, and the first thing you want to do is, is sulk up and go back home. And, and that, was, that did not happen last night. So for you 23 guys and hounds and families and hunters that come, back kudos to you guys you guys set a bar this weekend uh that you know hopefully in the future uh that we see a lot more of it because guys you can win, we can you can win everything in the world uh but that last night means more than winning everything in the world well you know and also uh, i've got to give a shout out to my boys uh chad smith and Corey jeffries you know they had a dog that made it to that 23 uh Came out, hunted hard last night. I think uh, he finished 15th overall. And I talked to Corey earlier today and, you know, uh, tell him I'm sorry he didn't make it to the final three or four, obviously was hopeful. But those guys were back out. I asked him, I said, so, you know, you're out. What are you going to do? You're going to relax tonight? And he's like, shoot, no, man, I'm not going to go relax tonight. There are other guys going out there. Uh, you know, this is my hometown, our hunt. I'm going to go out and support those guys. And true to his word, we know that, you know, Chad and Corey are both out there tonight chasing this final cast. And I guarantee you that those guys, they have worked tremendously hard in organizing this, the local people, they're part of the local club, putting this event event together and then having a dog qualified, having to go out and hunt themselves. But uh, you know, they're still tired, dog tired as they've got to be. They're out there chipping in, too. And that just goes to show you the kind of folks that we have in this. And right now, we've had a lot of people asking. Uh, so we're going to go to Alan for an update on the other dogs, particularly Hawk. Yeah, I just spoke with Trevor out there. And they are nearing um, uh, Whitey, or not Whitey, but Sleepy, actually. So Whitey was treed first, but the hunt's over. Both dogs have been handled. And actually, uh, uh, going to Whitey, uh, they passed Sleepy. So they're actually going to score him first at this point. It doesn't matter. Scoring him out of order. Whitey is already handled, uh, but they're scoring Sleepy. Uh, they'll be scoring him just shortly. They're almost to him right now. What about Hawk? We've heard that they're driving to pick up Hawk, that he's safe, and they're headed to get him. Yeah, I have not heard anything on Hawk, but I will try to find out and, and see if he's got him or not. I'll try to get that information here in just a minute. Good deal. Yeah, you know, you brought up that round table we had out there last night, and I'm thinking we had probably four or five losers in that in that area that we were at last night and talking and 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 uh, having a great time. And uh, while we were having a great time, 
and laughing and joking and carrying on. Hey, do you know Alan you know and his team, team Trevor, what they know? were back behind the scenes trying to figure out how can we make the very best Final Four that they can make. And they were running through some of the scenarios that Alan talked about earlier this evening. And, 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 and we missed a lot of that. You, you don't recognize how hard him and his group work to make sure that they do their very best to put on the best hunt that they can. And uh, we saw it firsthand this weekend. Well, they got it right. They got it right. Oh, they no, got without it right. a doubt. They and, got it right. And, and, and I think that every hunter here will tell you that they got it right. The greatest thing about it was they included the hunters. Yeah. You know, they, they, didn't, they didn't make a final decision. They let the hunters weigh in on the final decision. And uh, I'll tell you, I was, I was really proud to be a part of that, that scenario there. And, and I didn't even know it was going on. Yeah. But to be a part of this thing and to see the hard efforts that they put out there to, to make this thing work right is great. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, we got another update. Alan Gingrich, what you got for us? So I did get another update on Hawk. Uh, after he withdrew, Wyatt went after him. He went back to his vehicle to drive around to go uh, get him leashed up. And at this point, Trevor has, does not have any information whether he's got him or not. So that's all I got from Trevor at this point. Well, thank you, Alan. I'm sure there are a lot of folks really concerned. We hope that he is able to find Hawk and pick him up safely, and we definitely will uh, keep you informed. I promise you they're not going to leave the field and come back here until we know every dog is safe and accounted for. Um, still have Sleepy and Whitey to be treed. We're gonna, our own tree to be scored. We're going to try to stick with you guys for the next little bit and see if we can't give you an update on both Sleepy and Whitey as they go to score him. Alan told us that even though it's out of order, really doesn't matter a whole lot. Sleepy is going to be scored first. I'm sure that that is something that Kurt uh, definitely agreed to for them to go over and do that. So we'll try to get you a score on Sleepy and on Whitey. After we do that, though, don't leave us. Uh, we're going to take a break here in just a few minutes after we get the final dog scored, if possible. And then we're going to come back. It may be a little bit of a lengthy break, but we definitely want to let Tyler and Jenna have their moment in the spotlight here in the studio. So after we get the dog scored, when we go to break, uh, we're going to give them time to come get back to the headquarters. And then we will wrap up the night presenting the trophy and the $10,000 check for first place to Jenna, the 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion. Right now, though, we're going to stick around, guys, and hopefully we'll have something pretty quick. I mean, they should yeah, be they, getting they, close they, to they sleepy right now. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, in talking to, you know, one thing I want to share, too, is is I know Chad uh, Smith. I believe that's his name. I'm Chad Smith. Uh, I've never come to it, and, and not, you know, our club, our hometown club, actually was a part of helping putting on the world finals uh, three different years. So I know the work that the local club does. You know, as a hunter, you show up and you just think everything falls into place, and that's far from the case. Uh, there's, you know, there's months and months and sometimes a year or two of planning, you know, uh, that was shared this weekend that this was, uh, it started in the plans of coming to this location already three years ago. But, you know, I was really impressed when we got here on Thursday. Uh, they had a big whiteboard here and they had, they had probably 28 or 30 guides that was wrote down on there what cast they was already going to guide uh, and it was going to be a random draw. And, uh, you know, going through the scenarios, if this guy couldn't come up, you know, this guy would guide. And what was really neat is beside them guides, it was wrote the area that they was going to guide. So they yeah. wouldn't be on top of I each other. I noticed that too. And guys, I've been a part of a lot of these world finals and, and that takes work. And they did their homework. They rolled out the red carpet. Uh, and I really believe, I want to give a huge shout out to the local club and the guides, the guide network that, that, that went above and beyond under extreme conditions that we don't normally face and the job that they did to every one of them because you know a lot of these guys lose sleep uh you know and sometimes it's a thankless job because you think you go out and you did your very best to guide a cast and you score on one coon or you even worst case scenario end up with a dead cast and being a guide over the years myself i know how deflating that can be you know when you thought that you did your homework but uh, again uh, they did the very best that they could, and a huge shout-out to that whole group putting that together. 
Uh, I thought they did a phenomenal job. Oh, I'm so proud of my local boys. I mean, I'm telling you, they did a very, very good job. A lot of effort went into this, you know, looking at, at our 26 cast that went out on Thursday night. We, they covered a lot of ground, hunted several different counties, some of the locations well over an hour, hour and a half away, making sure that they had areas where even with the dry conditions, and that's something that, of course, no crew can change is the weather, no matter what. So, you know, the local guys recognize that we're in an area that is really, really rich with game, but the conditions were tough. So these guys pulled out all the stops trying to get to areas where they felt like the dogs could have the greatest chance. And as evidenced by 23 out of our 26 cast having a positive score, I think they did a really good job of that. But, you know, one of the biggest things I know was a major concern, I talked to Corey about this, was they were dead set that we were going to have a finals where we did see a lot of game. And now it sounds like we've got somebody else scored and maybe we've even seen some more game. Alan, tell us, is that the case? That's absolutely the case. You can plus up Sleepy. That's, so that's going to give him a final score of 125. We've got one more dog to score. That's going to be Whitey. And we'll see what he has. So, Alan, they are, they're, like we mentioned earlier, they're vying for opposite sex winner and, and uh, high thorn walker male um, and and uh, there's a thousand dollar difference in the check yeah and, hey I'll, I'll walk for another 10 minutes for a thousand dollars I don't know about you guys a, a lot what I look at it too a lot more of importance as well as potential breedings to that oh, dog yeah. down the road hey Alan do you know how far and, they have um, to go there'll be a lot of uh, potential pup sales and things oh, like yeah. that out of that when the one thing that uh, I, I think, uh, I don't know for sure, and Alan can pull that up, but the number of pups that we got out of Frisky was like probably less than 15 or 16. Um, and that's all you're going to get. But with these males, oh, yeah. you're going to be breeding to them for years to come, and there's just going to be pups and pups and pups out of them. And then, you know, will these guys find one out of their dog that they can bring back at a later time, you know? Yeah. So you brought up a deal. You you made a I don't know if you made a bet or you made a comment or something there when we were watching uh, Texas Walker Ranger the other night. I might <laughs> add that's one of Steve's favorite TV shows, and it might contribute to the fact that his pant size is one size bigger. Um, but you brought up the fact that the average age you was going to predict the average age. You you give me an average age of the dogs that over should win. The, yeah, yeah, and over and under, and. You know, you're you're pretty much spot on again. Uh, yeah, we we was talking about that, and I said uh, if somebody had to hold my head to the grindstone, I'd pretty much to say and give me an average age. I said uh, of the final four uh, that the average age would be above four and a half. Yeah, and and, and she's four today. She'll uh, be five next week. And she'll be five next week, and the other one is five, and the other one is six, and we had one three year old. Yeah. So uh, I just think that um, down here. Um, or, or down here with, you know, with the way it was, I just, I just felt that it was going to take a, a little bit older seasoned hound uh, conditioned to be able to handle these situations because, uh, and, you know, it played out Thursday night uh, very apparently because it seemed like them older dogs was, was able to maintain and k keep their nose clean. Right. You know, um, I believe that going back and looking at the cards, you know, uh, I know I got, uh, uh, and I'm going to uh, uh, pick on Kevin Cable a little bit. Uh, he'll get a kick out of this. But, uh, maybe he said, not. He, he, maybe not. But he had stressed to me that you really had made the point, drove the point home about the minus. And uh, going back at that, I, there was, you know, there was 26 casts that went out. And it was like 17 or 18 of them, the winner was determined by by dogs that could have won the cast if they didn't pull a minus. Oh wow. And another dog won the cast. Hmm. Wow. So that tells you in them casts how big that was. A clean slate. A clean slate determined 18 winners. Sure. You know, something like eight it was like 18 winners that it determined. You know, had they not pulled no minus, they it would have been a different cast winner. You know. So when you when you look at that, that really really plays into an older seasoned dog's wheelhouse. 
you know, uh, you know, them, you know, most of them are taken and, you know, they're just, they're more solid. And uh, now that could, cha that could change, uh, that could change depending on the area that you went and that kind of thing. You know, look at the TOC, the Tournament of yeah. Champions this year. Uh, Conor McGregor wins that as what, a two-year-old or yeah, a year right, and a half yeah, old yeah, or whatever right, like that. Yeah. And I probably wouldn't have put that Who picked that dog to win? <laughs> you, you, you did. Truly, yes. Hey, the guy in the middle here is just the odd guy out. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you got to pick before I did. I'm trying to bring him. you guys as level up. I'm expert. I thought I picked Conor McGregor did. to win. I said, yeah. I said the guy in the middle is just out, right? Yeah, that's no. right. No, but I just, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think, again, uh, in the spring at the TOC, uh, conditions was a little bit different, and it favored a little bit more of a younger athletic, you know, hound that would, you know, that could very possibly uh, advance, you know, into that. So now the age of the handlers, you know, where do you think, where do you think this, it, it's obvious to me where this sport's going. Well, um, these guys have walked, <laughs> how many, how far have they walked tonight, Jay Paul? I don't know. I'll tell you what, I really do wish I had a step counter on a couple of these guys I mean, because they, they have walked be more than a long three way. Miles, Down there where they were at in that bottom, it is flat. And, you know, those woods, as you saw, a lot of them, the hunters, the duck hunters in particular, keep them open. I would be willing to bet. Now, I believe Brandon can probably tell us, our camera guy, when they get back. But I'm willing to bet that they log between six and eight miles tonight. And hopefully those miles are just about over with because Alan's given us an update. And it's either going to be about Hawk or about Sleepy. Let's find out. Well, I've never claimed to be a professional mathematician, but 700 yards is what they still got to walk to get to Whitey. <laughs> oh, well, it's not going to be Whitey. Well, he's, 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 <laughs> he's not too far from the truck, so that'll be a good thing. But 700 yards right now. Holy cow. Wow. I did some walking. 700 yards left. So <laughs> here's what's going to go. We're going to keep talking. I'm sorry, guys. Can't help it for a few more minutes. We're going to score Whitey. They're going to be close to the truck. We should actually maybe get some feed. I will check on that in just a second, see if we get a live feed on scoring Whitey. And since they uh, are that close to the trucks, after they score Whitey, we'll throw it to break, and hopefully it'll only be about 20 minutes or so. Yeah, luckily we're only about 20, that. 25 minutes from here. Yeah. You know, you brought up a point, Jay Paul, um, uh, on the youth, or maybe Rick. You had mentioned on the, the the young guys. You know, there's there's three of them guys. I don't know how old Jeremiah is. I'm Lowe not sure. Is, you you but, can pick that again. But no, I'm not yeah. going to pick that. I'm not. I, I already got. I, I already got Mrs. Compton probably wanting to, to run me down, and and I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go down that road. But no, you know, here's this weekend at this World Hunt. It was really kind of a a, a wide variety. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of the young guys showed out, but also on the opposite side of that spectrum, what was really pretty awesome about this is we had several owners that was recognized on Thursday. We wasn't on live feed. Uh, these guys was competing for world titles back in the 70s, and they had dogs. Now, now let that sink in. That's 50-some years ago that they was competing themselves for world titles, and they was actually owners of dogs that they was coming here and either their boys, you know, their sons was handling a dogs or they had a handler, you know, uh, you know, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but you know, uh, you know, a lot of people would remember Ed Bates, would remember Urban right. Sutton, uh, uh, Ron Chapman, and these guys, you know, they're all Jim Ridge was one Jim of them. Ridge was one of them. Yeah. You know, they're all in their 70s, you know, 80. You know, I think Ron was turning 80 uh, this year. And what was really, really awesome about that Why, is so although that we had the young guys competing, you know, them guys is you know still at that age that desire in their that desire to win a world title and go after it is still there oh, and yeah. you know that was just you know that was really really awesome to see a lot of them guys come here and you know hey i tell you uh it's really exciting this sport is really really in good hands you know we have a in in you know for me um you know for me at my age uh, I know my op time of opportunity to compete. At your age, hunts. you're the youngest man at this I, table. I understand that. But, guys, I'm going to Not by much, is but, he? Listen, I want to share this with you. Uh, with the technology that we have today and the resources, uh, these young guys, and I hope you guys that are tuned in on this, Take advantage of the opportunity that you have because a lot of us did not have that opportunity at your guys' age and make good on it because age will creep up on you. You know, it's just as you get older, it just 
the game passes you up quicker than what you think. Oh, my God. Uh, guys, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I've got an update that's going to relieve a whole lot of people. Just heard from Wyatt's mom that Wyatt does have Hawk. Uh, he's recovered him safely. I know that's going to give a lot of people a lot of relief. Sorry to interrupt no, you, No, that's awesome. You're making no, a no, great that's... point, but uh, we're really, really happy to hear that. Uh, Obviously, that's about as good awesome. an outcome as we could possibly have. So for those of you guys that were concerned, all of our dogs are accounted for. All we're waiting is to get a score back from Whitey, and uh, then they'll pour the coffee on the fire and bring the dogs home. So That's right, absolutely. Saturday night, at, uh, I went to the Pennsylvania Zone, and uh, Saturday night I drew Austin Ewing, unfortunately for the rest of the cast. We drew Austin and uh, uh, Randy Smith's lady. And we... We walked the entire cast, just walked from tree to tree to tree. We, we, we didn't have a real big score. I think maybe she had 325 or something like that. She had a tree at the end that was circled that, a, that I am positive a thermal imaging would have found a coon in her the way she operated. But, but the point is, we come off that tree, and me and uh, Alan, uh, that hunts a whip for Gerald. Allison, yep. We come off that tree with, uh, with Austin, and... We were all walking at the same pace, and we were walking up a gentle hill, wide open oak timber. And in two to three minutes, that Austin, at 21 years of age, was probably 60 yards ahead of us. <laughs> and I know that he was probably excited to win the cast as well, but it was probably also his normal gait. Yeah. And I looked up there, and I turned to Alan, and I said, you know, I honestly believe I would give every dime I've got to have that kid's body to have that kid's uh, uh, stamina at this at this time in my life oh, uh, sure. I know I can get the money back but I can't get my my yeah. stamina and my yeah. youth back but it uh, it'll really make you take a hard look at it that and make you realize that hey this is those guys are where we were yeah. 20 years ago 30, 30 years, years ago, ago you know? yeah. and um, to see Kurt out there at 60 I'm telling you and Rickliffs here at 59 yeah you know I uh, I cheer for them old timers, but uh, their gas tank's just running a little bit lower than the rest <laughs> of these kids. You know, but you know, uh, kudos to them guys because oh. you know, you know, uh, it, that fire. It, once that fire is in your stomach to win a world hunt, it, it don't go away. I mean, you know, and 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 you go, you know, you go, you go, and you know, there's years that you compete in it, and then you, there's years that you don't because you just simply don't have you don't have the horsepower. Right, and uh, you know. To, to to be able to enjoy uh, that side of it, and and to see that wide variety of guys, you know, like you said, Kurt's tonight. You know, think about this: Kurt's sixty years old, and uh, Wyatt is twenty three. Yeah. You know, and you know, depending on how uh, depending on how Whitey's tree is scored, uh, he's going to play second. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, well, he could uh, play second. I mean, there's. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there's, you know, depending on how it's scored, you know, he's going to wrap up the highest scoring mail. So I think that, uh, you know, for all of you that are on the fence or contemplating, you know, do I go get qualified uh, next year? I can tell you uh, if, if any of you are on the fence on that, I wish you could have been here this weekend and experienced what we did. Didn't have a Holland and didn't have a horse in the race. But I, I felt like we was part of something really, really special. And uh, if you want to feel what, what that's about, go out and get a dog qualified and come to this hunt next year and enjoy what we've been able to enjoy yeah. because it's truly been a lot of fun. You know, with the uh, new rule changes coming up January 1, it's, it's, gonna, it's just going to improve the game. Um, you know, we mentioned the thermal imaging there a few times this evening. It's also going to cut down on hunt time. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, or add more hunt time to it, I yeah. guess I should say, because, you know, these, these guys, uh, like you said earlier, we, we walk into there and we don't even put a light in the tree. We put our, put our monocular up yeah. there and uh, we find the area we need to look and we look and in a minute or two we've scored and we're on our way. Uh, you know, gone are the days that we'll probably be shining a lot of trees for eight minutes oh, yeah. starting January 1. Yeah. So it, uh, it'll speed the game up a little bit, and, uh, and it's all for the better. I'll yeah. tell you, I'm really— We're actually, um, Alan had just posted, so they just posted they're a couple hundred yards from Whitey's tree, so guys, we are getting close uh, to have, a, you know, to have a, a, an update on that. And like Alan shared earlier, 
uh, you know, they're only they're not very far from the truck. So, hey, this thing is getting close and uh, we're excited. So I'll tell you, they, they're so close to the trucks that a buddy of mine that's down in the area uh, was sit, sitting up on the road listening. And he texted me a few minutes ago and said that he could hear Whitey from the road. Yeah. So, so the, you know, we're less than 300 yards from Whitey and probably less than 100 yards from the road once they get to him and, and back to the truck. So we should have the cast back to us here pretty quickly in just a few minutes. I would hope we'll be ki- giving you a final update on Whitey. And then, like I said, we'll take it to break after that. But don't go away because we'll come back from that at, with our championship presentation. Anyway, go ahead. I cut you off. Jay Paul, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot. Sure. Okay. Obviously, me and Rick have been in this sport for all our life okay and uh, and i know that you just you know just in the past couple years that you know obviously doing the first my fourth event your fourth event or whatever as a person from the outside uh, looking in could you maybe share with uh just with a a person that's watching this that may not know a lot about the sport what's some of the things that you that you've taken away from what have you learned or what have you taken away from uh, this as a as on that side of the spread. I'd love to hear your take on it. So I'm telling you, you know, I'm not totally a novice or completely green to coon hunting because when I was, you know, in, in high school, actually from the time I was a little bitty boy, I can remember my father carrying me literally on his back through the woods coon hunting, but it's something that I haven't done in over 30 years. I'm a dog guy though, and I can tell you this, I've been bit by the bug. I'm, I'm actually looking for a pup right now. It's something that I would really like to get into. The thing that's really struck me about this part of the sport is it's just like any other part of the dog world. You know, if you're a dog lover, whether it's a retriever, a hound, whatever, you're in it for the dog. And and I think the thing that's really impressive to me is how much the sport of coon hunting has changed over the years. When I was a kid, we had 10 dogs in a pen, you know, I can remember mixing up food during the winter when it'd be cold and stuff to make sure they did have have a hot meal at least. But now these guys, uh, you see, you know, just like we have um, here with Kurt, you know, dogs that are living in their house, dogs that travel with them everywhere they go. The sportsmanship that exists out here among the group, uh, you know, the people that are looking to advance all of these breeds, uh, I've been very, very impressed with it. And the other thing that's really impressed me is how the United Kennel Club is making huge strides to bring coon hunting really into the modern area. I mean, this has been a sport, you know, guys have been chasing game with hounds for centuries now. Um, coon hunting has been around for a long time. I've seen the sport really grow, though, over the last several years. When I did the first event a couple of years ago, the first TOC, I couldn't believe how technology had improved, but also how coon hunters were really getting more into it, and the United Kennel Club was working to take this to a whole nother level. So that's kind of been my my takeaway. This coon hunting game that we're in today, it ain't the game that my daddy and my granddaddy played. And uh, it's a whole lot of fun. You know, the scoring system has evolved to really be for give the dog the benefit of the doubt. And I think the scoring system and the rules are evolving to make dang sure that the best dog wins. So I'm impressed and I'm ready to play the game a little bit. You know, to a little bit to add to your, your point on that, to segue into the fact of, again, the 23 hunters that was interviewed on Thursday night, thoroughly impressed the way they handled themselves, the way they come in right. and, and uh, you know, shared, you know, with the, with the events and that kind of thing, through the excitement and that kind of thing. Um, that was truly special. And it kind of goes along with the point that you said. We've seen it displayed here live this weekend. And most of you that watch the live feed on, uh, on Thursday, you know, seen the same thing that we've seen, you know. Sure. What I, uh, <clears throat> and we go back to uh, Tyler, who's raised this dog from a pup, him and his family. And then uh, as we were doing the interviews on Thursday night, we've got one of them made the final four with the sleepy dog. Um, he's got, the, the Jeremiah just started hunting him here in the last 
couple weeks. Yeah, Autumn Oaks, and, which was uh, Labor Day weekend. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we had a very higher percentage of that this weekend than I think I've ever seen before. Um, Kurt put out uh, Bryce Matthews and uh, Jed last night in that late round. And Bryce had hunted that dog maybe six times or seven times. And um, prior to coming, or, or, or including what he'd done down here. And here he made the top five, finishing fifth place. Yeah. But it was just amazing to me at the number of guys that walked up there and said, oh, we just picked this dog up, you know, a little, a few weeks back. Didn't get him qualified. Somebody else somebody got him qualified. Somebody else got him qualified. And I think, some, I think maybe Maynard got sleepy qualified. I'm not sure. But um, it was amazing to me the number of guys that were fresh with their dog and still made the showing that they showed. I, mean, yeah. I look at this hunt, and I'm thinking, I look at this hunt, and, it sh and I feel like it ought to be just the way Tyler and Jenna did it. Yeah. From, you know, have a, have a bond there that uh, is, is unbreakable. Yeah. And, uh, but to see these guys walk up there uh, Thursday night and say that they had that dog a few nights and a few weeks and actually maybe changed hands this weekend, maybe new owners, we had a couple of those. And I'm just thinking, wow, this is, this is part of the evolving part of this game. But it is, but I got to point something out. None of them made it here. Uh, yeah, it, sleepy would be the closest. Yeah, would be the closest. closest. Yeah, but, right. yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. But, but they got they got to a point where you kind of question whether they would have made it there before. You oh, know? And I got to point out another thing that's changed. You asked me something, and this is an observation that um, we haven't talked about on air, but that I've got to make. You know, when I was a kid, uh, my father and my grandfather they competed. I mean, they competed very, very seriously. They trained. Their dogs trained them hard. Uh, you know, obviously, we didn't have the technology. I mean, Dogtra, who's come on board with their GPS technology, that's tremendous. And you want to pay the bills here a little bit. Thank you to the folks at, at Dogtra. The Pathfinder 2 is really a great product. And, you know, the, the GPS and, and the training collars that we have today. But we didn't have a single disqualification that I know of for chasing off, for treeing off game, did we? Well, this weekend? I don't know, I don't know that we did. I, I didn't. I don't know, you know, back then if it, you know, I don't know when that actually was introduced. I don't but, know. But, but here's what my point. When I was, you know, not so long ago, 20, 30 years ago, it was very, very difficult to train a dog to the level where they wouldn't tree a possum, they wouldn't chase a deer. You know, most of them wasn't corrected for it because, you know, tree and a possum was still a win at the end of the night. You know what I mean? Because, you know, they treat game, you know. Yeah, well, that's true, too. But I mean, just where the, the evolution of training these coonhounds, where it's oh. come from to where, you know, we don't I, I didn't, didn't hear a single story. And I talked to several of the guides, you know, yeah. and at the TOCs as well. I mean, we're in an area where those guys are at tonight. There are deer everywhere. There's not a day that I don't drive down there if I'm down there at dusk that I don't see deer. Um, and probably I, I predator hunt down, down there. Oh, I predator hunt down there probably 15 weekends a year, you know, between the deer and the coyotes and the raccoons and the skunks. It's amazing how much game is down there. But the thing that impresses me about the training is we don't hear dogs chasing deer, treeing coon, treeing possums. Yeah. You know, I can't it, remember the last time we scored on a possum in a cast. I, I, oh, man, I I'm not going to say that because the next one I'm in, that's what will happen. But here, to, to your point, Jay Paul, is, uh, you know, that just shows, you know, the training methods, number one. Mm -hmm. But these dogs uh, that are was here this weekend, they're not just a dog. They're an athlete, and they're intelligent. You know, they are here because of – because – they're intelligent and they're athletes, you know, and I think sometimes we get we get away from that, that not, you know, sometimes we overlook the fact of, I mean, think about this, uh, of what it takes for what the things that 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 these hounds have to overcome to compete, you know, not alone. I mean, to break it in perspective, not alone. Do they got to go out and score more points than the rest of them? But they got to block all that other stuff out. And we live in an era in the hunts where, as you've seen tonight, 
no dog was handled on the same tree. So not alone are you going out uh, and, and competing. Uh, once you score this raccoon, you have to forget everything that you did on that one and go search and find a new one. Right. And you know invariably that you're going to take and, and come across a track that you just treat. So they have to discern not to treat that one again because you can't score it twice and block out all the other dogs that are barking around you that are competing for the same thing that you are, and then block out all the other game that's around them. Because you know as well as I do, as they're running through, that they're going to come across that other game, either by sight or, or smell or whatever it may be. And, you know, if a person really stops and thinks, it's amazing. I mean, if you really stop and think about the, the brain, the, just the, the, you know, the level of intelligence that they have, and, and, you know, them knowing what they want to try to do for their, basically their companion, yeah. you know. And so I'm going to say, Ed, you, you asked me the question a while ago. I got it. The other thing that impresses me is exactly what you just said. I mean, I'm a retriever trainer. And I can tell you this, and I'm going to be totally transparent on it. I love this game. I love dogs, period. Yeah, I've been very, very impressed by the level of sophistication in the training because as a retriever trainer in the Super Retriever Series or the Hunting Retriever Club Hunt Test events, Field Trials and Hunt Test, you know, we work really, really hard to train our dogs to run through scent, to, to go through an old fall, which is similar to crossing an old track. You know, we'll have a bird that falls, a dog picks it up, another bird falls beyond that. It's very difficult to train a dog to not honor its nose. And I'm talking about a retriever that really is not a scent hound, they're more of a sight dog. I'm very impressed with the level of sophistication that over the last couple of decades has developed with these hound trainers, the coon hound guys, because I know personally as a dog trainer how tough it is to train a duck dog to ignore scent. I can't imagine how difficult it must be to train a scent hound to ignore scent, to tune everything else out. And I guess, you know, you ask me, Steve, my impressions, that's one of the things that has impressed me the most of all. You know, the evolution to not chasing off game and also to being able to tune the other things out. Because I know personally, you know, it's very, very difficult to teach any dog not to honor his nose. And I'm very impressed with you know, the evolution of the coon hound and the sport. Absolutely. Go ahead. I come in here today and, and watch part of the show, and not enough credit goes to the show people. Um, that They are a big part of the reason why our hounds can move around the oh, way they do. 100%. They, if, if it wasn't for people being concerned about these dogs' confirmation, um, our hounds would not be the athletes that they are today. And um, I, I stood there today and it really hit home as I was watching watching the show and I'm thinking, wow, right there's why um, our dogs can get through the woods as fast as they can um, and travel the amount of, of yardage that they travel. It's because somebody behind in this pedigree has looked at our, our confirmation and said, hey, that's, that's an important part of a, a hunting hound success. And uh, today it, 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 really, it really hit home watching the show because I saw probably 24 dogs go up on the bench. And I'm telling you, they, uh, how those people pick a winner from, from that is beyond me, but um, they, they were all just super looking dogs. And a shout out to the show people that, that, that keep us with dogs that, that have good confirmation. Yeah. yeah. And well, I tell you, I met at least, I met actually a couple of the, the, the show dog people that were here, uh, you know, that haven't been coon hunters that don't coon hunt, but that know and embrace what the breed is all about. And one of the guys, a couple of them said, hey, you know, yeah, I'm breeding and I'm looking to do with my female a breeding to one of the Grand Knight champions here at the World Championship because I want to infuse back into that. We're not breeding these dogs just to be show dogs to look good, but you know, we understand that we want them to perform. And one of them even told me they were going to breed to your dog country, yeah. which I, let me tell you, coming from the retriever side of things, the show dog people and the performance people, they don't cross their dogs very, very often. Well, but, I'll tell you, uh, and that brings up a good point. 
again, that just shows where, and to Rick's point, that just shows where we've come because it was like that for quite a few years here, but you're starting to see that change because here's what we figured out. If you don't have a good gear underneath it, you may have a two two year window to compete and then he's broke down and it's done. Yep. Right. And it's it's the health and that kind of thing. And you know, to, to Rick's point on the show dog side of it, we heard today from Wyatt and we heard today from, from Tyler. So Cheyenne Cummings is obviously had the uh, redneck mafia dog that produced Shaq, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, obviously uh, of the full sister to Shaq is 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 uh Tyler, is Jenna's mom. And you know, he shared the day of the countless nights that he's got to hunt with Cheyenne in in the in the in the relationship that's kind of there or whatever. And you know, it's really awesome to see, you know, Wyatt shared with going up and hunting with Mike Gilbert and and all them guys up there or whatever. You know, big shout out to them guys for handing that part of it, their knowledge and the breeding that they've done, they're handing, these guys are handing that on down to the next generation. <clears throat> and this next generation, like these young guys, are realizing it and they're now taking a hold of it. And guys, that's going to, they don't see it now, but that's going to pay huge dividends down the road oh, no for, for understanding that side of it. Because guys, these dogs was created for a reason, you know, from, from people doing their homework and, 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 and breeding, making the right crosses to, to, get the right, uh, to get the right product that you want. And, and they're handing that on down to the younger generation, those that are reaching out. So if you're a young person, get you a good mentor. You know, get someone that has the knowledge. Don't be afraid to ask questions because here's what I know. Uh, there's, you know, uh, there's three ways that you can learn. You can learn from your mistakes you can learn from others' mistakes, or you get around the most successful people that you know and do what they did, and you'll have the success that they have. And you and don't I, make and these mistakes. Guys, yeah. And these guys are doing that. They're, yep. they're, they're not, they understand <clears throat> that part of it, and they're eliminating a lot of years that we could have eliminated if we would have lived with that philosophy early on. Sure. I'll tell you something, too. We've had, you may have seen, uh, you handed me your phone over there a minute ago. One of the things that it gives us great pride in doing this broadcast and bringing it to you live is, you know, the United Kill Club has made a big commitment to trying to elevate the game. We really appreciate the feedback that we've been receiving from you guys on the live show and, you know, what it's doing for it. We want to keep on doing this. I can tell you, UKC is dedicated to growing this sport, to helping it continue to evolve. Yep. When I said that I was really interested in, in getting a puppy, I wasn't joking about that. You know, I would. I think that we're bringing more people in on that. Uh, Ms. Jennifer Cummings said she could probably, they could probably hook me up with a puppy. <laughs> and it would be an honor, I'm telling you, to, to be a, a part of the Redneck Mafia. You know, so we definitely appreciate all the positive feedback. We're doing our best, I promise you. We're not just up here to hear ourselves talk. No, we <laughs> definitely. We definitely, uh, to, to Jay Paul, I mean, to your point, we, we definitely uh, uh, appreciate the, the positive feedback. And uh, it's our hope uh, that we can share with all the viewers uh, a little bit of a glimpse of what we've been able to experience for many years. Yeah. And, uh, and it's our hope that you can kind of experience that with us because it's a definitely very special. So. No doubt about it. So here's where we're at right now. I believe that Alan is fixing to update us with the final dog scored. We're going to come back after that and, and talk for a minute and then take it to break. Um, Alan, tell us what you've got. So I do have the final update. Whitey's tree did get circled, so his score is going to remain the same. I talked to the field reps at the trucks, and they could see their lights coming. So they're about 25 minutes from here, from the headquarters, and they said it should be about 30 to 35 minutes we should see them back here at headquarters. So that kind of wraps it up as far as the, as the scoring for the hunt. So we show unofficially with Hank's going to be in fourth place as withdrawn uh, 125 for Sleepy, that's going to put him in third place. Uh, second place for Whitey at 150, uh, according to our unofficial scores here, I guess. And uh, Jenna, obviously, with the uh, nice score of 600 plus, and, and what a performance she put on. So congratulations to all these, and we look forward to seeing them when they come back in here. But I'm pretty sure we're going to have some tired uh, contestants and participants coming back in here, I would assume. Yeah, but... 
We're also going to have one very, very excited young man in Tyler Cummins. Can't and wait for it. I can't. I mean, no, I'm, I'm very excited part. to yep. see him uh, come back in here tonight. Congratulate that young man. But congratulate all of our guys, you know, who made it here. Wyatt, Jeremiah, and Kurt also. As you said, it is a huge, huge accomplishment. Well, we're talking about 3,000 dogs that started out right. trying to qualify. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. 500 almost that went to the regionals. Right. To make it to the final four. Yeah. yeah. That is in itself <laughs> something to, to unreal. To put it in perspective, <clears throat> there was roughly 2,996 that would have traded places with you in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they are. You know what I yeah. mean? And uh, so it is. It really is. You know, and, and, and it's a, it's a, it's, you know, not comparing it to the Iditarod, but it is definitely a hunt. That is, it's several nights. You know, you have last weekend uh, that you competed at the zone level. Then you had to jump in a truck and go to a totally different era, area. And most of these guys had to travel to go to a zone. So a lot of these dogs have traveled thousands of miles in a truck. Right. Sure. You know, uh, many hours. So their routine is broken and stuff like that. And then you get here and you got, you know, as we've seen tonight, you got to string together four cast wins three or four cast wins after you had cast wins last weekend consecutively. And, and to give you an idea on, on that, to put that in perspective, I had two different runs with one particular dog, not at a world hunt. I'm just talking hunts in period where I had won more than 10 casts in a row. Other than that, you win three or four on a local level where they're in there sleeping in their own home box, used to the territory and stuff like that. If you string together three or four, you was doing pretty Yeah, you're good. super proud. You're super uh, proud. Yeah. You know, and now, won four in a row. And these guys had to win six in a row, some of them, to, to get to this. The thing about these guys here, um, and we can glance at it, but most of, most of the final four, if not all the final four, are TOC qualified. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that, you know, that, that's, a big, that's a big accomplishment right there. Oh, They're heading to the final uh, next April, yeah. you know. Some more familiar faces yeah. coming hey. back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Shout out to Logan Rose, too, because, you know, with, with Echo, he was in the top 20 or the top 16 of the TOC and made the top 20 of the UKC oh, yeah. world. Yep. Yep. That Guys, is, that's a huge feat. That is an amazing I believe he was the only one. Yeah. yeah. Pro, no. But the most amazing accomplishment of all tonight, to me, was looking at all positive 600 points up there for Jenna, who will be receiving the trophy and the check here in probably about half an hour as the 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion. And with that, guys, we're going to take a break here. Stick with us. Uh, we're going to show a little bit of love to some of our sponsors and give these guys a chance to get back. As Alan said, we expect them back here in just about half an hour. We're going to stick around here. Take a long break, but in about 30 minutes, I'll be right back here with uh, Steve Burkholder and Rick Stretch to present the check and the trophy to our 2022 United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion.
Check out the United Kennel Club online store for all of our magazine subscriptions and UKC merchandise. Go to shop.ukcdogs.com and you'll find all the best gear to support your UKC lifestyle. Snag a new hat, hoodie, or t-shirt and subscribe to our many publications, including our world-leading coonhound publication, Coonhound Bloodlines. We even have research pedigrees and rule books available to purchase. Why wait? Shop now. It's been an absolute unbelievable journey that, and what we do from a, you know, from a small little company to a multi-million dollar corporation. It's pretty cool. We enjoy what we do. We service our customers very well. We come and sit here and repair product for people on the spot where they don't have to mail it and wait to get it back. We just take pride in doing every aspect of the business, not just selling the light, but taking care of the customer as well. The United Kennel Club, when I was growing up in my teens, I started hunting in the uh, in some of their competition hunts. Mainly, me and my dad, we'd just go and enjoy ourselves and do that. And I got a little bit older and ended up becoming a Master of Hounds, been show judge for them. And I've just been involved with them, I've known for years, most of all the guys that have come through and been in the hunting ops portion of it, you know, and always had a close relationship with, with most of them. I mean, business is business, and I understand you gotta do business, but there's nothing wrong with being friends while you're doing business, if you can. Like being a master of hounds, I've worked a lot of hunts for a lot of people. I've worked a lot of major events, black and tan days, different things. Uh, I've judged down here at the Winter Classic. If, if they need help, I'll go there and do it if, if I can, if there's any way I can and never charge a dime. And then giving back to the hunters, you know, the hunters have kept me up for the last 25 years. And uh, I would be absolutely crazy not to give back to the hunters. You don't, you know, you, you don't bite the hand that feeds you, you try to take care of it. You know, you just, you take care of your business that way and the customers will take care of you if you take care of them. Welcome back to the 2022 United Kennel Club Coonhound World Championship. As you guys know, over 3,000 dogs started this journey. Almost 500 went to our zones. 104 made it here to Dyersburg, Tennessee. We narrowed it down from that to the final four. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, we are here back at the headquarters, and we are fixing to present to you our 44th United Kennel Club Coonhound World Champion. Before we do that, let's step over here and we're going to talk a little bit to Trevor and introduce our winner here and Alan Gingrich. Also, we also want to thank all of our sponsors. Really big shout out to the folks at Bright Eyes. You just saw the spot right there. They've been with us for a very, very long time. Appreciate all the support and our partners, Yukonuba and Dogtra, who is the official GPS tracking collar of the Coonhound program here. So without further ado, let's take it to the presentation. Trevor? What's going on, Jay Paul? Man, you guys had a heck of a night, didn't you? Yeah, we had a fun hunt. We, we sure walked our guts out, but, uh, but I, I tell you, all day it was just the most laid back day and it was 
refreshing. All the all the guys are close to their friends, and it really showed. We were all gathered up out here getting ready to go out, and it was just like a bunch of friends about to go hit the woods. And uh, it kind of took the nerves out of the World Championships a little bit, but it was a blast. We had a really good hunt. So give me a little bit of a summary of the hunt, where you went, what went down. Yeah, we were just about uh, 25 minutes down the road to uh, – to a big spot on the edge of a, of a big lake with, with water all in it, big timber. Uh, it's kind of L-shaped there is, is what we've, we heard. We didn't see much of it. We, <laughs> we cut loose in, in the small piece of the L, uh, Jenna and Whitey treed pretty close close by there. We were uh, about 290 yards out of the truck. We were able Eight to get it. in? Yeah, we were able to get a coon on the card, which was always our biggest worry. You know, when you're in a final cast, you want to get at least one coon on the card pretty quick, and then you can worry about the other stuff after that. But uh, unfortunately, Hawk and uh, Sleepy kind of got out of pocket following the levee out of the out of the hard, hardwoods out into uh, to the field, and that kind of that gave them some minus, and it took uh, Hawk completely out of play. I feel I feel bad for Wyatt because I know Hawk's done good all week, and it was just a bad break for him. But uh, we always say in these big hunts like this, it takes breaks. Yeah. And, that, and that was his bad break of the week, and it came at a bad time. Uh, fortunately, Sleepy was able to, to curl around and get treed, but uh, by that time, Jenna had already uh, went over and treated her second cone about a mile away down the, right down the levee. She ran right down the edge, I think, and treated it right off the side. We were able to shine it from the levee, walked back a mile to Sleepy, and he was in a bush. It was a mess. Couldn't get a light in it. Uh, tried, squalled, low light, high light, shook vines, couldn't get nothing to look, had to circle it, unfortunately. Uh, walked to the corner, or, or at that time, Whitey Street, so we sent Whitey, or uh, send Kurt and, and Troy, one of our judges, over to get Whitey. Um, go over at Jenna Street again, go, she's got another coon, and by the time we get back, uh, Sleepy had a coon and Kurt had a circle tree, and that's kind of how it played out. But everything was real smooth. We didn't have any issues in the woods, and that's just a testament to, to good judges, good guides, and a, a good group of handlers. Yeah, but you guys definitely did a good job, man. Thank you for yes, everything. Appreciate the summary of the hunt. Now let's get to uh, what I'm sure Tyler Cummins has really been waiting for. Alan, I'm going to turn okay. it over to you. Well, first of all, congratulations, man. What a hunt that was. Man, and what a fun hunt to watch unfold, yes, you know, and what a performance you put on. But I got to tell you, I've got a check here for $10,000, but your wife has already called, uh, and she gave us your address and everything, so I'm supposed to send that to her, she okay. said. Okay. <laughs> but I do have this right here for you. Got the World Championship trophy. Congratulations. 2022 Perfect. World Championship. Get gone, Jenna. Congratulations. Thanks, Al. <laughs> I'll set that around the front there for you, maybe. All right. Congratulations. Thanks, Alan. Tyler, congratulations, buddy. Uh, just quick few words from you. First of all, how does it feel to be here? Uh, it, it feels pretty amazing. I, I never expected to be in, in this situation. Uh, you know, I couldn't do it with, with the people I got behind me. It's, it's not all me, and it's not all her. Uh, we, we came out with some breaks this week that – it's hard to even explain. I couldn't give it away if I even wanted to. It's kind of a long story and people will hear about it uh, for years to come, I'm sure. I, I wasn't even supposed to be here as, as everybody knows. Um, you know, I, I gotta thank my in-laws, uh, my wife, uh, all my friends, Wyatt. Uh, he, he, he helped me out tonight in the cast. A lot of people don't know. Um, you know, I had a great cast of guys in the finals. I couldn't ask for a better one. I, I wouldn't have been upset if any of them would have won it. Of course, I'm not upset that I did. Uh, but I, I, I couldn't ask for a better, better group of guys. And I, you know, congrats to them completely. Uh, we're excited and, uh, you know, we're, we got a long road ahead of us again. We're going to keep trying to do it, do it one more time. We're going to soak it up here while we can. Sure. A couple of questions before we let you go. First of all, you mentioned that you, you almost weren't even here. It's uh, my understanding that you actually showed up just in time, literally didn't even make it to the headquarters, went straight to the cast in round one in the field. Yeah, so that was, that was at Palmyra at the zones, and, and I wasn't able to get off work to go. It just didn't work out. We had, we had some things happen, and um, my, my boss luckily, uh, you know, I work at a bank, and we were just short-staffed, and my boss luckily uh, was able to let me off work just, just in the right amount of time. I had a lady come in and cover for me, and I got out of there and drove straight to the woods. Uh, my friend Justin Reeves picked the dog up from Jen, Jennifer and Cheyenne. They took her there, and he met me at the spot to where he was guiding her and guiding me, and we were able to turn her loose that Friday night just to give us a chance to hunt Saturday, and uh, 
you know, we didn't do any good Friday night, but it gave us a chance to get in Saturday, and, and it escalated. There's several more things in the in the, the week that happened that I can't explain, but uh, the good Lord is watching over us, and, and we got it done. Man, that's, that's awesome. So take me through the hunt tonight. What was going in, on in your mind and what your strategy was? And by the way, is it correct that Wyatt actually shined that first coon? Yes. Right. Yes. So, you know, I, I just went out there and decided that I wasn't I wasn't going to force anything. Um, I relied on her all week and and I, I know her like the back of my hand. I know what every bark means. Um, you know, she she barked through the minute there. We cut him loose, but I wasn't about to strike under the minute. Uh, right after he said the minute was up, I struck her on the next bark. Whitey opened there soon after. And and I don't really know at that point what happened. Um, we were listening to dogs. They got treed. Uh, I treed for a hundred and a quarter. Whitey was there right in there with me. We got in there and had a coon in a bush. Wyatt found it in no time. Um, you know, they caught uh, Jeremiah and, and Wyatt right after that, and we got recut. I once again struck for a hundred. Uh, Wyatt helped me out. He, he was hearing his dog through the country or what he thought he was, and he, tr- he struck and treated his dog, as you saw in the video, for 15, 100 and a quarter. He took a big chance, but that chance helped me um, keep the eight from catching me. Uh, you know, she's, she, we got out on the edge of a field. She had treated another coon just there on the edge when we got to her. And a lot of people are going to ask, why did you recut? Why did you do that? Um, my reason being is, is I know what Kurt Ehring's packing. Uh, he, was still, he was still in there trailing around, and, and I was scared to death he was going to get into a pocket of coons and uh, treat him like squirrels. So I figured I'd rather be uh, caught with my dog out of pocket or out of hearing than I would be caught with her on the end of my dog lead. So I recut her and depended on her and and um, and she she struck a coon just shortly thereafter and, and got retreated and 40 minutes left I couldn't help but treat her and we went to her and had the third one and sewed it right up so that was our cast I couldn't be more proud of her and and or or everybody else you know congratulations to to everybody and thank you thank you all. Let me tell you, you put on a tremendous show. Very, very gracious young man, super sportsman, as was everybody in your cast. I don't think there could be a more deserving winner or a more emphatic win. 600-plus points, no missteps along the way, no circles, no minus. Went out there, literally led from wire to wire and closed it pretty emphatically with that last coon. So congratulations, Tyler Cummings, Jenna. Guys, there you have it. Uh, We came here, long year to get here. 104 dogs finally made it, but tonight we trimmed it down to one. Our winner, Tyler Cummins and Jenna. Compton. Compton, I am so sorry, Tyler Compton. Tyler Compton and Jenna, the 44th United Kennel Club World Retriever Champion. Folks, I'm J. Paul Jackson for my co-host, Steve Burkholder, Rick Stretch. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next April for the United Kennel Club Tournament of Champions.